grabs my horn to my delight Knows just how to blow it right A virtuoso day or night When she blows that rusty trombone When I pull out my instruments And fiddle by her side Such a sweet accompaniment She grabs me by my pride And she's a big bottom blower I'm a fast place pucker When we do it, she's just a low-down sucker A mouth through the piece, her lips to a bug And she blows that rusty trombone afternoon, I should say. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens, residents, and most importantly, visitors, and welcome back to the Cravenstown Streaming Complex on this Sunday, <laughs> Sunday the 9th of November, December. What the hell? What day? What date? What month is it? Sunday the 9th of December 2018. We are well into Advent. How the devil are you? And yes, I know, I am on rather early today, but it has dawned on me, I generally have the whole of Sunday uh, free to do uh, the stream, and um, I've been getting into some rather, rather poor sleeping habits um, with getting up way too late. Uh, and any, anyhow, I'm, I'm, con- I'm sort of toying with the idea of uh, when I have days free that will likely remain free, for example, a Sunday. Uh, that's not it's going to be very likely to be taken over by new work and new clients and things. Perhaps I can start using them rather than uh, always going on from sort of 7.30, 8pm to midnight like I, I do in the week due to work. So, uh, yeah, I'm just experimenting with that a little bit. So I know that would have caught a few people by surprise. Um, I, I posted a little update of it, but I kind of thought of it today and I thought, well, we'll give it a shot. But it'll be uh, it'll be happening over um, the next few weeks. Uh, I actually intended it to be a bit sooner, um, sort of maybe uh, 1.30, 2.30. So next week I might see how that goes. But I'll make sure there's a good amount of fair warning. But here I am. Here I am. And the... What's been going on? Uh, well, it's been uh, it's been a, a nice couple of days since Thursday when we listed the indie stream and a great deal of success in Darkest Dungeon. The gibbering prophet finally died, uh, which was awesome. Um, he uh, he wiped out he wiped out six uh, four level six characters. My probably my four best level six characters at the time. But we have regrouped, we have retrained, and we have uh, six new MVP people that were uh, good for him. And although it was still a really tough fight, I didn't take one of the party setups that could absolutely cheese it as best I possibly could have done. But I still took a pretty tough party. And although we had about three death door, multiple death door checks, um, death, uh, thankfully no death blows, <clears throat> 
we uh we uh we we strolled out of it with all four of them still alive and a nice new trophy i think five out of eight champion bosses down now uh, and i recovered the one remaining ancestor trinket that i lost from uh the previous debacle up against that git and the ruins is completely done um friday had a very quiet one i tend to on friday i, I don't tend to go out uh, friday and uh saturday uh, both at the same time so I stopped in saved a little bit of money worked on a few bits and pieces and all that and um, yesterday was really fun uh, I had a good friend one of my oldest friends from uh, school and college uh, he um, he popped by to visit uh, about lunchtime and uh, we went to our local pub here and um, just sat in a few pints uh, lovely sort of big hearty not especially healthy lunch and he to his credit he'd found the most random thing to do in Twickenham which is very close to where I am I'm used to having to dash into central London from where I am in London to do sort of anything really of note and uh, Twickenham's about a 10 minute bus ride from where I am and after we went to my local and he got off the train at, at my local station, uh, we'd, he'd found uh, a comedy night, a sort of local comedy night in... And, hey, Sokola, how you doing, resident Sokola? I'll be looking for just want to say hi before I get some stuff done around the house. No problem. I will be... Allow me to provide a fantasy... Uh, well, if you, if you leave the sound on, allow me to provide a fantasy uh, podcast uh, narration with my dulcet tones. And if it's off, just appreciate the lurk support. Just don't forget to mute the tab rather than putting the slider to zero, because otherwise it doesn't count the view. Thank you so much for the lurk support, man. I really, really appreciate seeing it. In fact, I should... So Mr. Sokola is one of the level select people, uh, level select streamers, like I recently became myself. Sokolo. Uh, anyone who's level select streamer is by definition usually pretty good, worth checking out. So uh, as it says there, one of my fine fellow streamers in the level select community is chilling in the Cravenstown streaming complex. Check out Sokola at twitch.tv forward slash Sokola. He is legit. Thank you very much, man. Um, so... The uh, yeah, we we went to this uh, live comedy. It was in a brewery, so it was quite literally a piss up in a brewery, which was rather wonderful. And hey, no worries, bruv, no worries at all. And uh, it was um, it, I, it wasn't like one of those things that you might know, Twick Twickenham and Richmond and all like these parts of Southwest London have always been rather affluent, and um, they're never places that had to go through gentrification, as the term goes. So I was thinking it's a, it's a comedy club in a brewery. Ah, okay, it's probably either a defunct brewery or a very fancy craft brewery that's kind of been modified and has a little function room and and all this that and the other, and uh, it's going to be very very sort of a peak. London middle class couldn't have been more wrong we uh, we got there and it was just this random door like a little industrial warehouse door in in the middle of a back street in the most suburban home counties looking street uh, around the corner in the back alleys of Twickenham and it, it was just a, a brewery it was this rough and ready shed with, with a bunch of, you know, the big tanks, distillery bits for doing the beer. It was the Twickenham Fine Ales Brewery. Uh, they just had all a bunch of empty barrels out and planks put on them for benches, a couple of pallets to act as the stage. No real lighting, except these couple, couple of uplights that made the gig ludicrously dark. Even a couple of the comics made cracks about it. And not a great lot of heating. They had to turn the heater off because the noise it was making uh, could throw off the comedians. So everyone's sitting there in their jackets and scarves. So it was kind of peak alternative London rather than sort of peak London avocado on toast for brunch kind of shit. Uh, or going to the cereal bars and it's it was just the most sort of random little thing uh in, in in a fully functioning brewery that was just you know puddles on the floor and whatever and it was it was great and all all four comics they had on there they, they did about i think 15 20 minutes each with a, a pause uh halfway through uh about uh, for 15 20 minutes itself for a beer so you got you got a sort of good hour and a half and plus and minus bit at the end a good couple of hours it was four quid in each you know, and they had they had discounted beer because it's a brewery. So I mean, it's three fifty a pint, which I know is not cheap, but for London and especially for Twickenham, that's like the cheapest pint in town. So uh, all told, I was it was a really fun evening. Um, got in at a reasonable hour, and then I proceeded to watch uh, a few movies. And um, what did I watch? It's a really good one with Denzel Washington from ages ago, from two thousand and one. Uh, Training Day. I'd never seen it. It was like an Oscar-winning movie. It was 
well, it was Oscar winning. It was really, really good. So, uh, yeah, uh, just been chilling, working on some other bits and pieces, um, following up some stuff regarding uh, Twitch Prime um, and particularly uh, the free games with Twitch, Twitch Prime. Um, I might be doing some playing of those on behalf of and possibly, depending on how a conversation I'm having goes, endorsed by Twitch Prime, which is super cool. But more info on that and more notes and bits will come out and be posted in Cravenstown and on my Twitter and stuff uh, as and when anything from there gets confirmed and uh, finalized and so on but it's quite exciting so you know watch this space anyway with all that said and done um i will get on with today's today's fantasy antics we'll uh, go straight in so what have we we're up to well, Pill- pillars of eternity one we're in um if you don't know the game too well it's got a major expansion that's split into two parts it's it's they're actual full expansions if those of you been gaming on pc a bit longer or may remember those as being uh, something that existed or was a prior term to uh, what is now called dlc and um but back back when you never could download skins and individual little bits and treats it was uh you know, an expansion to a game was like a whole additional campaign and blah, blah, blah. So uh, Pillars being something of a love letter to past PC games uh, era. Well, it's it's that, and it's White March Part 1, and we did that, and White March Part 2. Now, we've just finished the Abbey of the Fallen Moon, which seems to uh, essentially a kind of a major component of it. And uh, we, we discovered what happened to a god who, who died, but not really, like this enormous skeletal body. Uh, let's see, make sure I load the right one. Um, seven days, six hours, yeah. Got, we're almost 170 hours in. This is insane. So I play this once a week, only on the Sunday stream, and I've been playing it since the very first day I started formally streaming with a uh, schedule and everything. Goodness me, 170 hours. So yeah, we've we've cleared out the Abbey of the Fallen Moon. We've um we've we've gained the phylactery. We've stopped. Well, we've stopped. Uh, we we haven't so much stopped an army of giant eyeless sentinels from going and destroying a whole bunch of stuff on behalf of the goddess Ondra. Uh, but she's actually now come on side with us and going, all right, look, if you want to stop this. Big, big, big pile of dialogue um, last week. Short version, she sort of loved Abaddon, who's a god, who's a right, he's, he's a god of um, uh, smiths and construction and protection and so on. Whereas she's essentially a god of death, but a, god of, a goddess, a goddess of death, but a goddess of entropy. So not death in the bad sense, but change and things dying to build new things. And he's all about protecting and um, artisans and maintenance and so on. So they're in a weird way, they're sort of at odds with one another. So uh, she tried to send this big thing to get rid of, um, you know, cycling some society from w- way back in the era had gotten too corrupt and grown too big. But he sort of protected it. She sent a meteor. He smashed it with his hammer and that. Uh, anyway, his um his enormous physical body on Earth, uh, this titan-sized but skeletal body, is uh, here. In fact, if I zoom out, you see this skull right here. That's the skull of Abaddon. But he's a god, so technically he's not really dead because we we have a pact with him in the main game um, as well, and he still functions. He still has a shrine. I don't quite know how it works, but because of like he he doesn't remember dying. He doesn't remember the stuff with Andra, and she doesn't ever want sure him thing. to. Let's. I'm gonna knock the game volume down. I've been listening back to my vods, and I think the it could be a little lower. Get the voice volume. For the dialogue is good, but we'll knock that down to about sixty. Effects to maybe forty-five. Overall master volume twenty-five. Right, hopefully that'll be a a little bit more um, well balanced with uh, with my voice. So we've cleared out this whole map. It's Abbey of the Fallen Moon. We did all of this last week. It's a really nice self-contained thing. So I'll, I'll read the uh, quest text. Trying to remind myself uh, the White March Two. So the Forgotten Army. Um, the White Forge has been restored to. It. So the previous bit we did last week after investigating the fort was find out how to call off the army. So once we'd done all the stuff in the fort and dealt with um, this ritual called the Rising Tide, which would have drowned a bunch of people. So one of the stalwart delegates was a, uh, this is from somewhere uh, previously, was a fanatical worshipper of Ondra who killed herself before she could provide answers. And then I learned from her soul that she came from the Abbey of the Fallen Moon and that the abbot there knows of the army. 
Uh, this is these eyeless sentinels, and is able to call it off from a place he calls a reliquary. If I can reach the room, I may be able to put a stop to the invasion before it begins. And then the abbot also mentioned there's someone called a Tidebringer. And, uh, so we did all of that. We uh, we pretended to be the Tidebringer. Um, we reached the reliquary. We called off the uh, the rising tide ritual that would have drowned all the uh, prior worshippers who slowly go insane as their memories get committed to entropy. And then the new worshippers come and take over. It's this cyclical ritual. And then we now have this new bit for this. Um, reforge Abaddon's hammer. I communed with Andra, who advised me that the eyeless will not relent, these, these sort of indestructible thousands and thousands of giant golems, uh, until everyone with specific knowledge of the White Forge has been killed. So in the pre White Forge Part 1, we reignited the White Forge, which is this forge that produces weapons and uh, refines metal to incredible power. But it's so powerful that mortals are never supposed to have it, and the dwarves that discovered it um, ended up becoming corrupt and going insane by it. Andra tried to sort of bury it and keep it hidden and locked, and we found a way in, so she was kind of pissed off with us. And that's why the eyeless have woken up, because they're trying to wipe out everyone who knows about the White Forge, but now tons of people do because it's gone into the Direwood and everything else, and that means everyone in the Direwood is going to die unless we can destroy the Eyeless. Um, let's say. So, the Eyeless will not relent until everyone with specific knowledge of the White Forge has been killed. That includes a great many people, including me. She believes that if I were to reforge the hammer of their creator, Abaddon, from a piece of the original tool, that it could be used to destroy them. The White Forge will enable me to shape a fragment into a likeness of the original. So we have a fragment of Abaddon's own, like, god-sized hammer. And uh, we have access to the White Forge. So we're going to, like, create a mini version, this sort of, like, mini god hammer that can actually destroy these uh, giant guys. And then Lair of the Eyeless, which is where they are. Andra has said that the Eyeless are gathered together in a fragment of Ioni Bratha that lies in Cairon's scar. There may be a way to stop them if I can reach this place. However, Andra has advised me that I'll need to recreate Abaddon's hammer first in order to be able to summon them to their deaths. So, uh, with a fragment of Abaddon's hammer I retrieve from the Abbey, I have enough metal to make a kith, which is a, a human-sized version of the original. Andra believes this will be adequate to be able to hold sway over the Eyeless. So in both instances, we have that going on. So we need to, uh, well, the Halls of Presence. We need to get back off of uh, the Reliquary, uh, the Veil of Tears, back downstairs and towards the world map. So without further ado, unless we can, can we go in here? I don't think I have done so yet. Ooh. Crucially, almost criminally, as a British person, I'm forgetting about my hot tea, which is not so hot anymore. So we're going to head back. We've got... I'll show you the world map shortly. We've got a Stalwart village. It was them we were originally helping out to... Um, to uh, They were suffering and just dealing with fish and stuff, but now they're the sort of main um, hub for the White Forge. They have their workers in there, they're working away on it, they've reopened their mine, and they're generally prosperous. They're also very grateful to me. So here, here's his ribcage and stuff. This, The actual ob this Abbey of the Fallen Moon, which is dedicated to Andra, has been built... Uh, Andra instructed it to be built as a kind of memorial and testament um, to the respect she had for... Oh! I forgot about this. We never walked up this way the first time around. Uh, these Ondrite Gale Singers, the, the, these people aren't very happy with us. Ondra is now asking us to do a thing, but um, yeah, I'd forgotten that <laughs> that uh, the actual Ondrite worshippers, uh, we, we dodged them on the way in because they thought that they were, uh, they were the people we were waiting for uh, are still here. So with that being said, let's have a quick little bit of early violence. I've got this barbarian character. We'll uh, do a shout. At Let's make sure we're actually in combat. Craven will come down the stairs. Um, grieving Mother, you can... What can you do? Put a pain blocker because the Barbarian is not nearly as good as the fighter. Now we're, we're done. We're, I'm going to bring Adair back into the party. He's much, much better. Once we get back to base. And Aloth... 
Um, do a little expose vulnerability. Actually, you know what? Aloth just come forward as I'm well. Here. Right, our rogue character, the Devil of Karok. What can she do? Uh, well, she can do a lot of things, but I want her to do the old... See, that's a tidal fist. He's a monk. Gale Singer's already injured. Um, who's this one? He's a faith binder. I think that's going to be a priest equivalent. So, Let's do a quick... Actually, there's no point in her running. He'll be running towards as well. Uh, let's do a sap. Good old sap. Those of you familiar with World of Warcraft will hate rogues for doing that back in the day. My warlock suffered tremendously in uh, Alterac Valley against all that nonsense. All right, Manahat is just done her shout, which has left them... Well, whatever it's done. Right, first thing, she needs to... Not uh, Barbara, she needs to go into Frenzy. She suddenly becomes a lot more useful when you do that. Okay, good. Now, Craven... What I'm doing here is pause-based real-time combat. The way you're supposed to do this is by... Uh, it all happens in real-time, but you set up all your moves and what you're trying to do in the pause menu. And despondent blows will make them hit a bit weaker with my priest. And the grieving mother. I think she's put the pain block up already, yep. So she needs to build a little more focus. Oh, in fact, she can do soul shock. So everyone standing around the barbarian will get electrocuted. And then she can start building up focus with her bow and arrow. He's casting his uh, exposed vulnerabilities. You can follow that up with Menaha's writhing tentacles right about there. Oh. I thought he was already doing exposed vulnerabilities. That's annoying. Okay. <laughs> I've ended up resetting the casting of it. That's uh, very foolish. Never mind. Okay, and now she's... Now she can go into Frenzy. See, now she's in Frenzy, she basically can't be hurt. I discovered that, that makes her a lot more useful at tanking. And she's got a Savage Defiance. And she can do a Barbaric Yell for fr uh, to Frighten. Or per rest, Barbaric Shout, which does Terrify, which is a more powerful version of Frighten. Uh, frighten, Terrify, Massive. A Terrify massively reduces everyone's accuracy. There we are. Right, and Craven, you can do... You've generated wounds. As a monk, he gets more abilities the more injured he gets. Uh, torments Reach. This one's sapped and stunned, so Devil of Karok. Per encounter, let's give it a, a withering strike. Feign death's a bit pointless. Finishing blow, no. Ooh, a crippling strike in case he starts trying to run away. Hey, Citizen Andy. Good afternoon to you, mate. How you doing? Welcome on in. How is your Sunday? How's your weekend been? What have you been up to? Let's get Devotions of the Faithful. We have Spell Mastery on that because it buffs us and it uh, hurts them. There we go. And he can do a little bit more as well. Let's get some Consecrated Ground. Buff our Endurance. Grieving Mother's got... She's not done Soul Shock yet. No, she hasn't. Tut tut. Excuse me, missus. Soul Shock right there on the Barbarian, like I told you. Just home from work, but work both days. Oof. Well, I do hope you were getting a time and a half on that one, uh, Mr. Andy, sir. And you had a, a decent day's work. It's been mixed at, uh, mixed weather, so hopefully it wasn't pissing on you constantly. Uh, this Tidal Fist is going after our uh, mage here, who... Has he still not done exposed vulnerabilities? That's annoying. Try it now. And Craven. Um, go for the long pain. In case you need to attack from a distance, that's better. And Aloth, now. Now you can throw up some tentacles. Let's get Hentai up on this biatch. Oh, the Ondrite Crescent Ward has been dominated. I wondered where one of them's gone. Someone's obviously got a passive domination ability built into one of their weapons. I can't remember whom. Um, Barb's Condemnation, he's nearly dead. Let's put it on the Crescent Ward, he's not taking too much damage. His Tidal Fist is running around, otherwise unmolested. Raven, would you be so kind as to kick her in the head? Uh, in the meantime, Faithbinder, bloody rogue, 
freaking Devil of Karok. That sap ability has made her a lot less squishy, which is great. And Grieving Mother, now you can start shooting some people. Get your focus back. That works really nicely. That she tried to run away from Craven, and now he's got um, uh, the long pain. He can use his his hand to hand abilities from distance, which is just brilliant. Okay, because once that Crescent Wards becomes undominated, the tentacles will wreck him. All right, Manaha, she's got no more frenzy, so. Savage Defiance doesn't need the Heart of Fury. That'll work. Right there. And you two attack him. If you can get to him, that is. She can't. Boom. Done. And that's how we do it. Nice selection. Oh, exceptional. Wow. They all dropped exceptional gear. That's still a bit below what I'm generally aiming for in terms of quality at this point, because my party's quite high level. I think level 17 is out of 20, so let's just check. Character menu. Oh, and she's only 15, 15, 16. Oh, so 15 and 16. But yeah, we're generally at this point looking for super, superb level uh, gear. But we're quite sure high thing. level for this area. I don't think we're going to start encountering superb stuff until we get back to the uh, the main game. Or there might be some superb drops in the area we're going to next. Oh, there's... Ah, yes, of course. We pretty much bypassed all these patrols and stuff uh, in a friendly manner. So let's have a, a somewhat more interesting and exciting exit strategy, shall we? Hello. I'm surprised these guys are still up because we let all the old crazy ones out because they were supposedly no more harm to anyone. <laughs> Beg to differ. Frenzy. And Devil of Karok. Tell you what. She can do the old flipperoo against Archer Face here and then sap him. Grieving Mother. Pain block on our tank. Aloth once again exposed vulnerability. There's only two. This won't take very long at all, but... Where, where possible. One shall not auto-attack our way through all of this. Okay. She didn't flip quite as far as I expected, so run over there and sap the archer. Now, Manaha. Ha ha ha. Start pummeling the toss out of this guy. And do a heart of fury on him. Craven as well. This He will not last long. Uh, the rest of you shoot the mine gazer. Oh! Durant's got psychic backlash for a second. That's annoying. Okay, and... You know what? Just wand him to death. And Durant, you could even go and melee him. My mind feels <laughs> Boom. Done. It's getting some of the uh, auto attacks, or not auto attacks, but regular attacks from um, characters I'd otherwise keep in the back row. Durant has got this mace, Night Shroud, it's soulbound. And I have to melee with it. I've got to cause the blinded affliction 13 times, 12 out of 13, and then it will... Soulbound weapons level up of their own right. Um, it only binds with a rogue or a priest, and I don't tend to use a rogue regularly in the party, so uh, it's rather, rather fun for him. <clears throat> Uh -huh. On we go. Oh, dearie me. Bear with me a second, folks. My mouse, mouse's batteries are ever so slightly critical, according to a recent alert from my computer. Thankfully, I have a cable and a port. I shall rectify this momentarily. Oh, in other good news as well, uh, when I say goodish news and touch wood and all that, the some of you may know I've been having some dreadful internet issues ever since I switched over to a new ISP to have a business line to my office here, uh, so I wasn't sharing internet with anyone else in my shared house. And I switched to TalkTalk Talk and was instantly regretting it on almost every factor. 
However, they did send an engineer over finally on Friday. Something I didn't... I forgot to mention in the warm-up. And, um, yeah, he, he had a little look and uh, apparently there was an extra, a whole extra uh, splitter connected that wasn't being used. It apparently, Although it wouldn't be making too much difference directly, it could generate extra noise on the line. And um, that's problematic. Uh, so it's been removed and it does seem more stable since then and a the new router has made things a little better as well as so hopefully combined things will behave as they should and there won't be any more outages like there was right after Twitch London which had a rather terrible effect on my initial impression by the people who came by to visit after the fact and not that I'm still bitter about that or anything. Um... <laughs> So here we are, the Abbey of the Fallen Moon. Iron Flail was part of White March Part Two, and we uh, we came and we learned about the Abbey from coming here. Durgan's Battery is what we opened up in Part One has been modified. Long Watch Falls and Starwalk Village and Russet Wood are both from Part One. Starwalk Village is for both parts. Whitestone Hollow is a new area. Anyway, we I think we can jump straight to the Foundry now, which is really cool. So that's where we need to go to go and forge the hammer. I don't think we have a great many outstanding tasks or additional quests for White March Part 2. If we do, we'll, um, I'll try and be efficient with the travel. We'll go to uh, the Direwood if something else takes us there and wrap up a bunch as we go. Hmm. A Dana Fergus to hear of the Saints Wars arrived for your strong. Okay, I've got a stronghold notification. That means because you own, I've got a fort, uh, a rather good one at this point. It's fully leveled up. So, a prestigious visitor. This happens from time to time. Uh, has arrived at my stronghold as I'm the Lord of Cadnua. Uh, Odena Fiergist, a hero of the Saints' War, has arrived in the stronghold. She has asked for an audience with you. A hero of the Saints' War. See, that's actually quite interesting. Now this is good. I haven't had to run all the way through the floors of the White Mart. Uh, the yeah, Durgan's battery. I can come straight to the forge. It's a rather fun boss fight here. This enormous snake spitting lava. Let's have a look at what we needed to do. I think it's just bring the, um, in both cases, reforge Abaddon's hammer, recreate Abaddon's hammer. So both of them have got this convergent quest doodad. So let's take yes. our main chap. Absolutely. Eye-watering heat wasps from the wafts wasps wafts from the mouth of the white forge. There we are. Knew I was shrinking. Okay, but ah yes, yeah, sorry. What am I doing? I don't go and talk straight to the mouth of the spit. The actual forge bit is here. Right, we'll drop a little quick save in there and pop. Right. Incredible heat ripples upward from the White Forge and laps against your exposed skin. That's what water tends to do. The fragment of Abaddon's hammer grows warm in your hands, as if in recognition. It is only a fraction of the size of the original, but there is metal enough to create a hammer fit for a person of your size to wield. In this forge, the fragment could be shaped anew. Right. Let's recreate Abaddon's hammer. You call to mind every memory you have witnessed of the Great Hammer. The image is coalesque and takes shape in your mind's eye. You know every curve, every engraving. Even as a shapeless lump of metal, you can see the fragment for what it is meant to become. The fragment is slow to heat, even in the White Forge, and quick to cool as you work it against the anvil. Sweat drizzles down your body and puddles at your feet. Jesus, it's a lot of sweat. Your, arms gr your arm grows sore with each swing of your forge hammer until you can barely lift it. Minutes turn into hours. As Abaddon's hammer begins to take shape, the ring of your own hammer against it takes on a familiar tone, one that you have heard in your dreams. With each strike, an image flashes in your mind. It is hazy at first, but it gains detail as the hammer begins to resemble the original. Every time... The image becomes a frozen landscape centred around a crater lake. Eyeless patrol its frozen surface in droves, and this can only be the place Andra described. Cairon's Scar. The eyeless pause here and there when you strike and look up, 
as though hearing the echo on the wind. In the distance, as more details appear, you can see other landmarks. Stalwart, Durgan's Battery, and you understand where the lake lies in the White March, where you must take the hammer. Finally, with the careful etching of the last detail with your chisel, the hammer is completed. No sooner do you make the final mark than you feel a pure, radiant energy pulsing from within it like a mechanical heartbeat. There is an indescribable beauty to the shape and the weighting and the design. It feels as if this is the realization of the metal's purpose. You take up the hammer and its power rushes over you in waves and it shakes your body so hard you nearly drop to your knees. The tremor passes, but the surge of power remains. The hair on your arm stands on end. In your hands is a faithful recreation of a divine instrument. Damn. Whoa. Careful with the weapons of the gods, Watcher. They seldom come without strings. Classic bit of Durant's. Jeez. We, we have a god hammer. Grand adventure added. The quest expires in two days. Whoa. We've even got a little group I've from the enough. Ogres. Darien. Oh dear. The sounds of an argument reach you from the stairs. Darien marches into the room, arms crossed, while Wengra bounds along behind him. This threatens all of us now. Matron Berrigan. Ah yes. I had a very interesting choice in White March Part 1 whether to leave her alive um, and her tribe because they supposedly attacked Stalwart or to sort of butcher them all and carry on. Leaving her alive... Um, allowed her that she was willing to send a contingent to help defend my keep against a rival lord and now she's here again so the choices you make in this game really matter anyway Matron Berrigan lumbers after Darian and Wengra flanked by two stout ogres Wengra sees you and points enthusiastically see Darian he'll tell you we can stop him <laughs> tension crackles in the air Darian whirls and cuts Wenger off with a chopping motion. If he's seen them, he knows better. What's going on here? Something killed a whole crew of hunters out in the wood. Tore them apart like dolls, insects. Despite his steady posture, his eyes flit and flicker like flies, and his upper lip shines with sweat. Matron Berrigan. Berrigan mutters something to her escort, and they snort in agitation. I told ya! All we gotta do is get him in range of these cannons and then we blast him! She brings her hands together in a loud clap. Wengra is the best kind of pyromaniac loony, I swear. We don't even know what they are. He shuts his eyes and breathes loudly through his nose. <laughs> well, I do. Everyone turns to look at you. Oh, we've got some options here, as always. Option one, they're known as the Eyeless. Too, but what they are isn't important. What matters is that they'll destroy us all, and more, if they aren't stopped. Three, they're the playthings of foolish and irresponsible gods. Four, and if you want to live, you'll shut up and listen to me from now on. Five, the gods sent them as punishment for your bickering. Uh, that's pretty easy. Um, option one or two. Uh, and to be honest, that whole attitude of I don't buy into the whole need to know basis I'm just going to just say it. they're known as the eyeless the destruction my dreams warned me of Berrigan's gaze is distant with horror oh dear I forgot yeah she's um she's a, a shaman she can see these things as well it might have been the wrong thing to say they're the eyeless <laughs> seemed like a perfectly innocent but yeah I really should have realised that suddenly she rounds on Wenger and Darian and your greed and recklessness have brought them on us all! She rolls her shoulders back and bares her teeth at the two villagers. Rage hangs around her like a musk. Darian and Wengra each take a step back and square off against the ogres. <laughs> They're like twice your size and a pun ten times your muscle mass. You burning our village didn't help matters none. 
Wengra's feral grimace exposes needle sharp teeth. Oh dear, this is escalating. It wasn't my clan that attacked you. Matron Berrigan, her nostrils flare. No difference. One ogre stinks as bad as the next. All right, calm down, everyone. None of that matters now. That's not going to work. Two, Berrigan's right. You wanted something you didn't understand. It's brought trouble. Three, your interest never aligned with Stal. What's Berrigan? I doubt that's changed. Four, enough. You're all idiots arguing over ancient history at a time like this. Five, Berrigan, did you come all this way out here just to say I told you so? Six, you may be right, Berrigan, but this isn't helping. Perhaps you should go. If I pick the wrong thing, we're going to end up with the ogres. Um, basically turning against us. It's a tense situation. I don't want to lose them at this point. But I'm having a feeling my normal benevolent diplomatic and dare I say softly, softly approach is not going to cut it here. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure Wengra and Darien aren't going to turn on me. I mean, I basically saved the village. Calm down, everyone. None of that matters now. It's not... No, no way. Um, I'd like to say it. I'd like to believe it was the case, but it's just not going to work. I don't think. It is technically true that you wanted something you didn't understand and it's brought trouble. They, they, they were like... They were just assumed that white, the White Forge was going to like bring them prosperity and this, that and the other. And in fact, it's had all these things on it and it was lost and closed down for a reason. Hey, Exy, thank you so much for the lurk support, man. And good to see you. Good to see you. In, in, enjoy the fantasy podcast and narration. Um, anything that insults... Well, I don't know. There could be a way to sort of catch Berrigan off guard. Like, your, your interests are never aligned with stalwarts. I doubt that's changed. Or something, Berrigan, did you come all this way out here just to say I told you so? You should probably be like, no, I came all this way to see what you said and now, and then they get hostile. I don't want to kick her away. I might... I don't know. I might take the aggressive stance. My instinct goes it's going to inflame things, but... The thing is, she is right. You wanted something you didn't understand and it's brought trouble. I mean, I can't really talk. I, I opened up for the thing for them and, and played my part in doing it. Yeah, it's, it's non-typical, but for once I'm going to sort of say against the village. Then you aren't innocent in this either. Darian Scars, you aren't innocent in this either. And I'm like, no, perhaps. I, I willingly admit that. Yeah, I'm not. I, I helped you open it. I didn't know any better. I was just like, okay, there'll be loot. I can do it. This, that, and the other. Darian and Wengra stare at you in mingled surprise and respect. After a pause, Berrigan steps forward. Now, there you go. There you go. I normally always wanted to be on side and keep everyone happy, but I was like, no. Straight up. And I acknowledge my own responsibility. That was a... All right. Let's, well, let's see what she has to say. After a pause, Berrigan steps forward. I came to offer my clan's help. See if I if I had said any of the stuff negative to her, um, I might not have gotten that response. The others gawk at her. The White March has been our home for centuries. We'll defend it alongside you. Yoga's flanking her grunt near ascent. Well, I'm going to be diplomatic on that one. Your aid will be would be welcome. She presents an ancient banded horn horn in both of her calloused hands, holding it out to you. Sound it anywhere in the White March, and three of my best warriors will be at your side. Your battles become ours. Oh, holy crap. We've got summon three giant ogre uh, piece of equipment. That's very cool. End dialogue. All right, goodness me. I was panicking there for a second, but we got through that okay. Like, no, I like I like her. She's, she's actually proven a really worthwhile ally. But I want to check out this bloody <laughs> god hammer. What's your plan for dealing with them exactly? Um... 
I've stuck with the whole let them know where they are. I, I could say let me worry about that. Now I'm torn because I, I don't want... I don't want any of the villagers getting hurt. I could say the islands are hidden at Kaler on Scar. I'll face them there. Or two, let me worry about that. Because I could end up getting some help from the village uh, if I say where it is, or they go, oh, well, I want to go alongside you, but I'd rather they not die. I'll say, let me worry about that. <clears throat> An awkward silence follows. Wengra clears her throat noisily. You know, those heavy cannons you fixed might come in handy. She grins, a mischievous twinkle in her eye. Darian starts to groan as she holds up both hands. <laughs> Hear me out. Karen Scar should be just hey, how did you know where they were? You just point out your target and I'll do the rest. If those things are on the move, we don't have much time. All right, apparently they knew it was in Karen Scar, even though I didn't tell them. If you're really going to stop them, take this. It's the best of the ore we've pulled from Stalwart's mines. Okay. It's not much, but it's good enough to make the old Pargrun and Smiths proud. Huh. <laughs> Clearly the need to know basis there um, <clears throat> wasn't the right choice. Uh, I just didn't want them to get hurt. You may call upon the aid of Crag Ogres by using Berrigan's Battle Horn in Kaeron Scar. You may call upon the cannons of Durgan Battery by using their heavy cannon blast ability in Kaeron Scar. Uh, Craven was granted a heavy cannon blast. That's very cool. Never seen anything like it. Uh, battle horn. And oh, Durgan Iron Ingot added to the stash. I bet that hammer could crack a dragon skull in one very well. Well, I'm sure as hell not taking the Barbarian and um, Squishy McGrogue face. Let me have a little look in my inventory at this stuff. So, okay. Right. Craven's got Abaddon's Hammer. Soulbound, two, Warhammer, two-handed. Oh, Properties Legendary. It's my first legendary weapon. Plus four might. Have I got any other might? But oh, actually, if you have um, a stat bonus on a weapon, it's different to having it on your armor. I don't think it gets suppressed. That being the case, I've got to switch over to. Right, well, I don't need this flask of war paint right now. I'll get Berrigan's battle horn. Holy crap! It's oh, it's, it's once per rest. I can only use it in Kaeron Scar. I was going to say, oh, I get three Crag Ogres for the rest of the game. That's so cool. Um, Craven's not much cop with two-handed, but it's a god hammer. I want to read what this is about. Plus four my legend. Plus fifteen accuracy and fifty-five percent damage. Slow, strong interrupt. Twenty-five to thirty-five crush damage. Well, that's actually going to be about 37 to 50 odd because of the bonus damage. Despite being... Uh, oh, buying this item to unlock the next level. Despite being topped by a mere fragment of Abaddon's original hammer, this weapon now sized for kith hands is still an instrument of awesome destructive force. The face is of the great hammer still bear the tool marks of the, their creator. Not even the fires of White Forge could erase Abaddon's work. I don't know if Craven's got two-handed because he's always... Um, he started off with a staff. See, for a monk, his might stat is now mental. <laughs> it's like crazy high. Uh, da -da -da -da. Abilities and talents. Yeah, body control. Oh, heavy cannon blast. Second skin, wound binding. Yeah, I never focused on giving him um, weapon perks, really. Right, let's have a think. St. Weigelt's Cudgel. 18 to 27, 17 to 24. Well, I've got to put his other soulbound weapon on for now. Gonna bind this to him. It's it it's a plot thing. 
Uh, or... I don't know. Who's going to be better rocking a... A monk with a two-handed hammer? I'd, it strikes me much more as a paladin's weapon, but uh, Palagin has already got, like, an amazing paladin-specific two-handed sword. This would truly be better for a, a, a warrior um, or a fighter. I want to bind it and see what it gets. What are some of the other weapon options? 15 to 22, 18 to 27, see 14 to 20. See, this is only exceptional. As a soul-bound weapon, it's not all that great, but it will get better. 15 to 22 versus what, 14 to 20. And Wendwalker, 23 to 33 versus 25 to 35. Okay, well that's definitely better. Hmm. Yeah, screw it. I'm going to bind Craven Soul. He made it. Holy crap. That got a lot better. Grants destroy Eyeless on critical hit. 10 accuracy against Eyeless. 50% damage against Eyeless. Grants one Ring of the Ancient Forge. One per encounter. Whoa. An AoE stun once per encounter. Grants Abaddon's Labor once per encounter. Foe target 45 to 60 crush damage with a 4 meter push effect. That's ridiculous. That's per encounter. God damn. Alright. That's rather cool. <laughs> That's very, very cool. Might take off the, um, what's it, potion of regeneration for now. And put the wall paint one back on. A nice little extra boost in case we need it. In case these eyeless are tougher than I originally gave them credit for. Just steadfast. One handed and a dagger. The unlabored blade. She's an interesting character. I like bringing her back in. I'm half tempted to sort of leave her with the gear she's got on in case we get like more soulbound stuff later. See, this mace is crap. Maybe I can give him um, something better. What was that? Burning Lash Vessel. 17 to 24, 18 to 27, 22. 15 to 20 food versus like 10 to 15. That's got Prayer Against Treachery as a spell bind, which is a really nice spell bind. But I'm going to take that off for now and give him. I'll give him Craven's other one for now. Raven Wing. Yeah, 17 to 25. That's a major, major upgrade. And it's carrying, yeah, damaging three. Coordinating, burn damage, accuracy against vessel, which is against the undead, is sort of priest law specific. Okay. Not all that specifically good for a priest, but it goes pretty well. It's pretty cool. Also, we've got this Durgan's Steel. Um. Tell me. See, the White Forge, refined Durgan Iron Ingot. This Iron Ingot has been refined. It could barely be used to create Durgan Steel. Alright. You successfully crafted a refined Iron Ingot. Oh, we need another regular Iron Ingot. And what does that do?
going to see. Um, has that gone straight into the stash? E items. So we got Durgan Iron Ingot and now a, a one Durgan Iron Ingot. Where's the refined Iron Ingot gone? Um, let's organise them by item type. Sigil of the Shield, Durgan Iron Ingot, Durgan Iron Ingot. Where's it at? Hmm. Yeah, re one refined Durgan Iron Ingot got added to the stash. So where? Where exactly in the stash did that go? Bithrak crystal, it's not showing up. Alright, let me see about enchanting. I mean, I almost certainly can't enchant... Yeah, you can't enchant soulbound weapons. But this one, this a Amaranet is superb. So let's have a look at the White Forge. See, Durgan refined weapon. Ah! Okay, so those iron ingots are actually both refined Durgan iron ingots. That's how you have to forge them. So we can now do two uh, bonuses yeah. on the weapons. But I'm going to save those for non-soulbound legendaries. Absolutely no point doing it on weapons that I will eventually replace. So we have this in hand. Let's take a quick look at where this is in the journal. Uh, travel to Kadron Scar. Reach Kadron Scar. Why have they got two quests? The phylacteries promised. Explore the wilds to the southwest of Stalwart. Prior to Stalwart, scout travel through the bog on the edge of Irgland Fath, southwest of the White March. I expect I'll find our employer thereabouts. Dream and memory, the long hunt. Browns and Durants. I should take care of the long hunt with uh, Sagani. These cliffs I saw in a vision. I'll do that some other time. Tasks, Bleak Oath. The Paladins were dealt with. Colonel will be ranked. I'll go back to Stalwart. Bounty, Magrans, Faithful. Searing Falls. No, not as Long Watch Falls. And then Songs of the Wild. Okay, so we've only got one. We've got one back in Stalwart. One to the southwest. The Phylacteries Promise. And then we can get straight on. So take care of a couple of quick side quests. Um, Leave. Oh, no. I want to go straight to... I'm not going straight to Kairon Sky. I want to go to the Great Hall. We'll... We will go via Kairon Scar. We will, we will... We will side quest our way to Kairon Scar. So hopefully when we wrap up the big grand finale of the White March, there isn't too much outstanding business once it's all done and dealt with. So this is back in the Great Hall now. Which is vastly different from when I was uh, coming through and exploring the place originally. That's right, we already emptied everything. But since restocked, all these places were trapped and uh, full of traps on these panels and whatnot. And treasuries. So the batteries, parapets, battery gate. That's where we want to be. Okay. Fast forward, we'll peg it through. There's all these statues to Abaddon as well. I think I only first heard of him when I came here to White March, but he's one of the major gods in the game. In the Twin Elms, these giant Twin Elm trees in Eirglan Fath in the Direwood map. Um, well, you commune with... I, I ended up managing to get an achievement for getting the favour of all of the available gods, the, the ones who aren't completely aligned against me and my interests. Uh, against me and my quests, rather. And yeah, Abaddon's pretty cool. Um, he, he's a very sort of Nordic slash, you know, gr a Greek sort of hero. He's big beard, white haired helmeted. He's, he's got a bit of a Thor vibe going on. So obviously he's kind of a bit of a boss, a bit of a badass. Okay. Now let's have a little gander at the map. So we're, we're now back out at Durgan's. This is Durgan's battery region itself. 
I'm tempted, you know, just to swing by briefly to Galvino's cabin and also see what that bloody mess over there is. Because we still have the um, the Devil of Karok with us. So Abbey of the Fallen Moon, Long Watch Falls, Starwalk Village. And there's Kairon's Scar. We can jump straight there if we want. Yes, yeah, so these wilds to the southwest, this Malgric Fen or Malgric Ian. And we did the North Wheel, did the Temple of Hylia. She's another one of the goddesses. We killed the Sky Dragon there. There's no other new areas except for Margaret Ian. But we'll we'll jump back to Stal. Well, I've got to actually get to the edge so I can go into the world map first. I'm going to very swiftly hop on by to Galvino's cabin while we still have the Devil of Karok with us. Because I'm just curious to see what's going to happen. Like, what sort of lore... Uh, bits and pieces will emerge. <laughs> this, this is a very hammer and this is a very bash ready party. I've got uh, a priest rocking a um, uh, an enormous spiked mace. And what the hell happened here? A tr in the trampled bloody slush around his top of wagon, you spy tracks leading back south along the path. Yeah, we'd done all this before. Just hadn't seen it in a while. And, um, oh, uh, we need to be down here. That's the overlook. So, yeah, we've got, we've got our barbarian who's currently walk, rocking a pretty solid-looking spiked bronze warhammer. Craven, our um, monk and erstwhile hero, is uh, rocking a hammer built for an actual god. And our pri yeah, and a priest has got two maces as well. <laughs> Yeah, so Galvino, he's um, uh, Anamancer slash Automaton, a genius engineer, a bit of a checkered history. He was with the ancient history of Stalwart with the mayor before the... So two mayors back. Um, he, uh, the devil of Karok, when she was still a human, was um, put in his lab and her body transferred. And the thing she struggles with the most, living with, is actually the fact that she literally can't feel anything. She's got all the awareness and senses and everything else of being a human and what it's supposed to be like. But And she goes to bed, she goes to sleep, she's got all these wires for muscles and sinews and oil for blood. But, um, yeah, she can't feel anything. And it's like, turn someone who's already had a bit of a hard life. I mean, she's kind of cynical and psychotic, but that's because her village was in the way it was on the wrong side of uh something with the war between uh, the war of the gods uh and wadewin's legacy and like her family got butchered in front of her so she tracked down everyone responsible and that ended up kind of getting her treated as a mass murderer so testing grounds galvino's study i can't remember if he's in here because he, it won't show up it all stays with this fog around it Ah, now then, we never disarmed these. I'm just gonna, if we can, we get some free traps. That's settled. All right, your answer's better at it now. That's settled. Oh my god, some stuff we didn't even loot. The constructs. Yeah, we'll nip straight over to Galvino's study. It's a well-protected place. Oh, he's got quite a nice banquet out, doesn't he? That's if the fella's still here. He is. <laughs> Your right. thoughts must flow deeply indeed. Uh, right here. Yeah, that little robotic voice is her. Hey, fella. So you wonder still. Perhaps you've also seen these strange sudden avalanches, or these tracks in the snow too big for any ogre. Um, it makes me glad for this basement workshop. I have news about Grinder. Yes? Does the sniveling cur hide in his horn? Or has he been exiled to a place even more frigid and foul? Um, ah, yes, uh, he had an ongoing thing about him. 
I decided not to shame him about being a, a drug-addled freak, but I did learn he murdered his sister. This is a follow-up to a quest where I was like, I'm not going to say anything. Because his sister found out he's a drug addict. Diverus! The man is even more of a wretch than I thought! His face glows with macabre delight. What now? Surely the villagers string him up with his own fishing line. <laughs> uh, ah, shit. I decided not to shame him. Particle. I should have known better than to ask a milksop. Fair enough. Go. I need to collect myself. The devil has not scorched you yet, eh? Perfetto. Oh, you still talk to me. That's uncommon. As must the gods themselves. So, questions about the devil of Karok. The golem says nothing, but her essence smoulders. Resentment rises from her in shimmering waves. Enough about Something her. Let's else? Just... Never mind. Oof. Yeah, Lead maybe coming way. coming from her was uh, coming here wasn't the wisest idea. He didn't need to know any of that, uh, and I didn't need to piss off the devil of Karok, which I probably did. She was telling. Oh, you know what? That was. I wouldn't normally do that, but it was utterly unnecessary. That was a bit of a pointless conversation. I was purely curious to see what would happen if we uh, spoke there. So this is going to be one of those rare occasions where I'm like, you know what, no, I just wanted to know for completion's sake what was going on, but I'm not all that keen to have ever actually spoken to him. There's nothing to be gained there, but it's like, all right, if you come back and talk to him instead of talking to the Devil of Karok, um, who lets you know herself what the issues are, she gets really pissed off. And if he finds out, because I had some actually pretty valid reasons not to end up turning in the uh, former, the still current head of the fishing thing for uh, okay. his um, drug addict issues. He actually ended up having quite a sympathetic story. Uh, and Galvino's got a sympathetic story for being so angry, but he is a bit of a bastard. Well, he's more than a bit of a bastard. So, yeah, forgive me for that one. It's one of, I think, currently only... Third time I've done a reload after a, a law decision where I've just wanted to find out how something goes. But yes, otherwise, those of you who've been following this week by week will know that I uh, tend to stick to my decisions for better or ill. So we'll head down, we're going to head to that swamp, that Eerglanfath swamp, just back in the Direwood, and uh, take care of this outstanding quest that's related. No, sorry, we're going to get to Stalwarts. I get to Stalwart first. Um, leave this guy here capturing and kidnapping random uh, bandits and murderers, which is what he makes his constructs from. He's got a bit of a vigilante thing going on in that regard. And um, so we'll uh, go and um, let the guy know that well, we have a bit of a problem. So this quest that we got the hand in, in the Stalwart Tavern, uh, the end result, the 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 fellow in the tavern who we're going to speak to, in Stalwart, is uh, had a land dispute with another family over um, over in here. In fact, in Whitestone Hollow, and essentially, let's just jump straight to here. Essentially, he ended up getting tricked into hiring the Bleak Walker Paladins, who are an order of paladins, because there's many different orders of paladins. They're an order of paladins who are particularly psychotic. They, they like any excuse to um, sort of commit pretty horrific violence under the auspice of, you know, having holy vows. But they still have their principles. They never leave a contract unfinished or um, so on. So he ended up... He, he just wanted to sort of scare these people with them, but they ended up killing them brutally, and they started hunting down the family's son, who lived in the Direford, Direwood. Uh, we, we got there first and managed to stop the son being killed, but then you have the conversation with him as he like Luke gets, becomes crazy angry and wants to go after this guy in the tavern. Um, we did our best to convince him, like, no, but it was a typical, typical bloody pillars of eternity thing. You go, no, 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 violence isn't the answer. And he goes, oh, I'm so angry. And it, it, that made it worse rather than just going, stop being a stupid bastard. If you try, I'll, I'll stop you. 
so we've now got to let this fella know, like, yeah, um, you got pissed, did something you regret, and now you've got to, you know, own the consequences. <laughs> He'll probably see it like, oh, I should have ended up just letting the paladins kill the whole lot of them. It's... If if we'd picked the right words, if we'd if we'd found the uh, if we'd found the correct sort of way to calm the sun down, this would have all been resolved. So the only way we're going to get any sort of decent resolution out of this is if we uh, pick the right. Yeah, here's Kern. If we pick the right things. Well, I have a feeling no matter what, it's probably too late. He's going to be really angry and upset. He'll have to flee. But let's find out. I'm here. Um, is there any news? Have you found them? Is there any news? Have you found them? I found the Bleak Walkers. You did? What happened? I've dealt with the Bleak Walkers. Eska is alive. You, you did it! Bless you. I can't ever make any of it right, but I'll try for the rest of my days. Oh, dear. Oh, dearie me. <laughs> oh, um, so there's some more. Oh. Here, take this and thank you for sparing me a final stain upon my soul. Sure. Um, no, no further questions. God forget. All right. I figured we might have to say um, that you know Eska is coming for you and he's furiously angry, but in a rare turn of events, the game has left us completely off the hook for that end result. I think stopping the Bleak Walker Paladins was enough. So that's something. That is something. So we're going to head now. <laughs> a little bit more loading screen action. We're going to head towards the Direwood and this entirely new area. We'll uh, get ourselves to the edge of town, back towards the Dyer. your own father? Not I. That was Isselmere. Yeah, but you're the same person. Oh, I love this dialogue. Flying cocksfeathers to that! I see your point. <laughs> yes, Aloth has an awakened soul. He has, um... The soul of a, a rough and ready, very hearty, cheeky dwarf woman, whereas he is a noble. Um, he is a, an aristocratic elf. So, uh, and wacky hijinks from that really unlikely duo do become incurred. What I will have to do as well is um, take a little detour via my... Stronghold, actually, because we we need to change the party back to uh, the one we should have, as we don't need the Barbarian, and I think with the Devil of Karok, we've done her story as well now. So we're going to head to the Direwood. So we're going to... In fact, Cadnua is not too far away, so we're going to jump to Cadnua. It'll take us a day to reach there, but we'll also um, change our party over. Uh, Re-equip a few people, bring back in the uh, the, the folks we want um, to have our strongest setup going forward into uh, Kron. Um, we'll uh, see our prestigious visitor because this is a hero of the. Uh... See now we can do this, but ah, before before I do, before I do. Before I do, let's have a quick whip through the inventory. So, Manahar's never coming back now. Um, Cat's Claw. Cat's Claw's good. So is Justice. Right. So we're basically going to sort of strip her of her gear and put her in semi-retirement. She, she, She's kind of come to the end of her story. Her horrible memory. We picked the right thing. She can't remember it. She's good. It's kind of affected every aspect of her life. So, as she won't be going back in the party again, she can keep her armor. Serral's ring. Boots of stability. 
Guillotine Girdle of Constitution. Gaunt's Pledge is actually not that great. Gauntlets of the Puissant Melee. Cloak of Protection. Broad Belt of Power. He carries many scars. And then Craven carry the last one. So most of the... Oh, I'll put it in the Devil of Karok, but we'll deal with, we'll uh, we'll get rid of um, Manahar first. Oh, and goodness. Okay, the Adragan, that can go in there, that can go in there. We're not really going to use the Forgotten Tear of the Beloved again, actually. Resolve plus three helm, stag helm. Stag helm was not actually that great. Tell you what, I'll stick all this stuff on Aloth for now. He's the, uh... What about her? Because she's coming out, Potion of Barring's Death's Door, all of this stuff can go back in the stash. The Unlabored Blade and Steadfast, exceptional. Will we lose all the bonuses if we remove it? That's the thing. Anyway, let's get Manahar out of the party. So dismiss her and bring Idair back in. That's better, right. Because Adair's a goddamn boss. And we'll put him at the whoops. We'll put him back at the front. Hope you're not expecting much. Now Adair, he's got St. Edwin's Redeemer, and he's rocking this sheathed in autumn one-hander. And a soul bound. I'm thinking it's steadfast. It's not leveled up very much. Sever binding. It's exceptional. What's what's he rocking? Sheathed in autumn. Autumn. Yeah, it's like superb. She can keep shame or glory. She's already rocking two soulbound items. The unlabored blade. We've made a lot of progress with that one. What's the stats on Steadfast? 16 to 23. What's that on that? 19 to 27. So Sheathed in Autumn hits a bit harder. And Purgatory is really good as well. But this thing will level up more. Plus 5 will, plus 1 resolve. Yeah, we'll sever the binding of that one. Didn't really get very far with it. And let's give her... 23, 16 to 24. I'll leave the unlabored blade. What's this other... She's got another dagger here. 14 to 20, drawn in spring. Accurate, wounding and superb. 25 damage over time, dots, accuracy. That's very rogue specific. Fast. Yeah. We have no other better person for that than her. So that's quite cool. She's rocking two daggers. I'll leave... Daggers just... They suit a rogue. They suit a rogue. And she can carry the sort of secondary, fine and exceptional um, named swords. Right. In the meantime, Adair... Sheathed in Autumn and Purgatory are awesome if you wanted to dual wield swords, but for your sword and shield, you are going to be fully soul bounded up. Uh, 
that's better. So he gets a bit of bonus damage with it. 17. Yeah, he's still pretty good with it. Tempered Helm. Now, gear-wise, everything he was wearing was already sort of good. Justice belongs to Palagina. Um, Gods and Thunner is pretty cool. That Warhammer can go there. Uh, Cat's Claw, 16 to 23. Craven need a sword? Not really. Craven's not a sword wielder. Need 23, 16 to cent, 24 resolution. Honestly, she can keep her cat's claw as a backup and the poison. She can keep the hats. Dexterity, confusing, resolved. That's very much for a rogue. Tax collector's mantle, stealthy. Spellbind, Escape, and Smoke Cloud. That's completely rogue specific. Ring of Unshackling and Ring of Thorns. Dexterity and Reflex. That's all for her. Properties Juggernaut. Move speed when in endurance below. 21 endurance below. So that's actually, that waste is potentially really good for Adair. So what can we give her instead? Pierce bonus slash um, DR bonus. Yeah, a pierce and slash damage reduction bonus is very kind of rogue specific and I'm not going to miss it. Gland, Fathom, Stalking Boots, Sneak Attack bonus. Right, everything else is totally geared for herself. And inward looking chimes. Right, we just need to find a temporary home for this other stuff. He carries many scars. What's a dare got on his waist at the moment? Oh wait, Soulbound Belt. Yeah, we'll be keeping that on. Uh, and then Juggernaut. Craven's supposed to get hit quite a bit. What's he rocking? Properties Clarity. Oh no, that's wicked. That's really, really good. It interrupts move speed when your endurance gets a little bit low. What's Durant's wearing? Minor Spellbind Knockdown. Tell you what, he tends to get hit more than I'd like. Speeding up his move speed and his ability to do interrupts is potentially interesting. Broad belt of power, might and resolve plus two each. And go in the stash. Gauntlets of puissant melee, what's he wearing on his hands? Um, deflection, nine. Braces of deflection. 10% melee damage, what's Craven got on his hands? Morning gloves. Might switch those up at some point soon. He's got. Mind, major Spellbind, Recall Agony, Spell Holding, Overwhelming Wave. Oh, Grant's Overwhelming Wave when hit by critical hit. That's great for a tank. Cloak of Protection. What do you got on? Spell Defense Bonus. Plus 10 defense against spells. That's really good. Now this armor, he carries many scars. DR14, DR16, both at the same recovery speed. Defiant, Regeneration, and Fine. Whereas that one's exceptional. Pierce proof, might plus two. Overwhelming wave, minor spell bite as well. Um, dancing bolts. Cumbersome. Uh, minus one move speed. We've already got overwhelming wave. Plus two. We can put we can put the damage reduction and might on it. See, 50% armor damage reduction when under 25% health. That almost never happens to him. One endurance per three seconds is good. We'll stick that in the stash. It's all right, but it's not so great. Um, Justice. Really good two It's a solid two-handed sword. It's got a slaying of kith, which you can't enchant. Uh, Gorn's Pledge is actually pretty shit. Get rid of that. Garrod's Chorus, plus three Might. That'll get suppressed by um, other stuff. 
Yeah, might plus two is on there. Might plus two be suppressed there. Put that with a dare for now. Who previously had the dragon in their gear? Let me just go into the pets and whatnot quest item. No, it's not that. So it's uh, what I'm trying to find there is um, when I took it off off of Manaha. It was a little dragon brooch. The um, it summons a dragon when you have it. Really good against tough bosses where you can summon additional things. Just for goodness sake, where the hell it went. <laughs> See, there's our ingots. Oh, goodness. We might have to bring... Uh, Serral's Ring of Resolve plus two is... Meh, it's fine. Eoten Constitution can go in and... Boots of Stability. Right, and uh, Vengeata Rugia is amazing armor, but it's entirely rogue specific, and she can't wear it because her body is her armor. So that'll just have to be that. Might have to just get. Um, we'll dismiss the devil. So. Bring her in. I just want to make sure. Looks like we've uh, forgotten to. Yeah. <laughs> Knew it. Potion of power, infused with vital essence. I left everything in a quick item slot, so that was foolish. Is this the ivory worm figurine? I wanted that back. Right. And then lastly, we dismiss her and let's get Palagina back. That's our proper party. That's our proper party. Awesome. I'm ready. Third rank, there we go. Now Palagina, welcome back, my dear. Looking like a boss. She's got her soulbound stuff. Blade of the Endless Path. She's got two amazing two-handed swords. Niden's Finger. Siegebreaker Gauntlets. Yeah. Constitution 3. Ring of Protection. Girdle of Meg Folk Might. Now, she's already got her figurine. So, who gave one up? You've got a figurine. You've got a figurine. We've already got an ebony spider figurine somewhere. Yeah, obsidian lamp. You've got an ebony spider. It's a bit meh. Craven, you can have um, a dragon. You can summon a dragon. And let's give you... Berath's Kiss. Ooh, nasty poison. That's cool. Let's give you an additional one. An inward-looking chimes... Ah, right, yeah, they were good for a rogue. Invisible, immune to engagement, untargetable, breaks engagement. That's also very, very good for a priest. I'll have, um... <coughs> oh, God! Hoy, Craven, how's your day going? It's going grand. Good afternoon, Daniel Sir. Good afternoon, Citizen Darkens. Thank you very much for the 75 biddies. We're just rearranging the party before we go to uh, the latter part of White March Part 2. On a little bit earlier today as I'm experimenting with some uh, earlier time slots potentially for uh, Sundays from here on out. Um, explanation for which is in the warm-up if you want to watch the VOD back. And how are you both doing? Thanks for popping up and hanging out and saying hi. Really appreciate you being here. Um, Black Sanctuary. But yeah, my weekend's been great. I've had a quiet Friday. I had a brilliant Saturday. I was out to a comedy club. Right, that Warhammer. That can stay there. All of that can stay... with Idair. And Craven, he doesn't need those potions right now. Gauntlet's Puessant Melee can stay there. Um, Animance's Boots... Okay, we really need to pay to unlock more of the quick item slots, I think, for our next... Oh, and she can carry more stuff. Um, potion of Major Recovery or Potion of Iron Skin? Take a Potion of Iron Skin. My last game of gaming today for the uh, last... For the oh, do you mean the last of the next two weeks? Yeah. Uh, how come, Daniel? I'm doing good, been playing Smash Ultimate, still have a bunch of characters unlocked. Yes, I have a feeling that sort of flavour of the month for quite a few people. Um, how is Smash Brothers Ultimate? Is it everything you hoped it would be? 
Oh, this chair sucks balls. Okay, or oh, you know what? Perhaps actually rather than carrying yet more potions, she can get rid of that fireball scroll. And then that'll free up a permanent space. Right, and Adair, you're giving you a new sword and stuff, rings-wise, I think... Yeah, I think we're pretty much good now. We've got all our best gear, weapons, and... <laughs> we're so loaded up with stuff again. Very, very full party inventory. Ah. Hey. Right, so we have one little quest we could, uh... Grand Adventure. It's rewards two average items and a major item. Let's assign... Well, let's assign a Devil of Karok out to that. Actually, no, you know what? No, I will not send, um one of the two white march people in case we need to bring them back in and one of the three actually because Zahu has one as well let's send our druid out or oh, in fact Kana I, I'm done with him and I'm never having him back in the party because he sucks so we'll send him out and we've got uh, this prestigious visitor who's leaving in seven days we'll go and deal with that business we'll go and un, uh, get our latest uh, items and um, whatnot from the main hall Sell off a bunch of our crap. We'll get our best rested bonus by resting in our own um, manor house. Smash... Uh, oh, three exams soon. You need to lock in. Ah, okay. So it's, 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 it's hoods on, no games. Nose very much to the grindstone. Studying and um, cramming and all that good stuff. I understand. Darkens. Uh, Smash needs a real story. <laughs> My understanding is the real story is you clearly want to have all the characters we've ever had in it in one enormous brawl, and that's the story. And, you know, it prints money. <laughs> that's 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 my assumption, but I, I imagine, yeah, people... The, uh, I've only played a little bit of Smash uh, in the past. And there's Odina Fear Guest, right? Well, we'll deal with you shortly. Got a moment? I'd appreciate a chance to talk. I absolutely do, but first things first... All my cool um, free stuff that the place generates for me. Quest items and reagents and whatnot. Uh, all of that can go in the stash. We haven't done an additional little quest in a while. There we go. Right. We can craft lots of things. Godspeed. General goods merchant. Uh, show me your wares. Show me your ass. It's all garbage. He never sells any um, superb level gear. It's all exceptional and fine. It's like, come on, my party's level 16. Start selling superb stuff. Anyhow, grumble, grumble. Um, arrange everything by item type. So, we're going to have to start selling a few bits and pieces. I probably should have just done this in the order we picked it up. Fine, great sword. Because I don't like selling the gold stuff. It actually doesn't sell for very much money, and it's all cool things we picked up on quests and are named in that. But I'd rather sell all the stuff that's non-specific and exceptional. Nets me tons of treasure. Exceptional poleaxe, quarterstaff, rod. Got your rod right here. Exceptional wand. Oh, what was that? There was a one name down there. Yeah, red reed wand. Actually, what on earth? Where did that go? Guess into the party's um, inventory. Well, the spirit mode is supposed to be the story. It starts good, but there's no story there. Oh, that's a shame. See, yeah, I know Smash actually does have... It's got some kind of cool... Oh, God! Ah, King of the Impossible! He's for every one of us! Stand for every one of us! Ah, He's saving the body and everybody! Oh, Daniel! Mr. Awesome Daniel, sir, you are now not just legit, you are Craven's Town legit. First of all, enjoy your legit emoji. 
all over Twitch. Whenever you hear someone use the phrase legit or do something legit or just is legit, you now have the one place on Twitch where you can get legit as an emoji. You've got it here. Enjoy it everywhere. And folks, can we hit that legit? Hit that legit. If you're around and chilling, Perv Darkens, thank you so much. Welcome, Daniel, to the ranks of the citizenry. Second... Second of all, enjoy... Oh, and it plays very nicely with other emotes. You can put it in front of anything like GG, Hype, Love Hearts, all the ones everyone else has, and put legit in front of it, and it gives them extra emphasis. So you get very good value on your emotes here. And wave your Craven's Town, Town Flag, loud and proud every time you chat, and the longer you're with us, the more it will level up. That you get a, a flag banner as a testament to your citizenry. As a follower... As well as a sub, aka um, a resident, as well as a citizen, you'll be entered into the next monthly giveaway. We just had the last prize draw uh, on Thursday, but once a month, a citizens only uh, competition for to win a free game happens every month. We spin the wheel, everyone gets an equal chance, whether their citizenship was gifted on a visa or they got it themselves, it's all equal as long as you are a resident, as long as you are a follower. Uh, fourth, should you choose to, there's no obligation. I think you, you already are. Um, but uh, if you're on the Cravenstown Discord, and you, which is the full Cravenstown, of course, this is just the show, this is just the front end, the streaming complex, and you have your Twitch integrated with your Discord, you will automatically be assigned uh, within the next hour the Citizen's role, and you'll have access to Citizen's Towers which is a citizens chat only section and also the citizens treasury and uh, that's where I sometimes post codes for uh, free things uh, usually stuff for games and very occasionally a free game on a first come first serve basis and last by no means least my undying appreciation and gratitude and especially as you're, you're, you're here time and time and time again I, I really appreciate the, the frequency you come by and support the show and of course to darken so now seven seven gifted subs in the channel that's so kind of you thank you so much darkens for gifting citizenship to daniel a very very deserving recipient and welcome once again daniel to the ranks of the citizenry brown pants by sub that's i get more startled now by that bloody alert than the um the, the uh, troll cheer i'm gonna have to modify and put some variations on the 75 bit cheer to uh, so it starts getting me a bit again i'm growing a bit immune to it but the sub one still <laughs> that's when i'm especially on story sunday where i'm all about the immersion i'm really getting into the immersion it makes me jump out my skin a little bit Oh goodness me! Right, let's sell some of these. Uh, this monk outfit and these robes. I might keep one monk outfit because they look kind of cool. Exceptional scale armor, breastplates, and regular scale armor. Fairly well. Sandals. See, all the boots and all the gloves you get by default are like pretty much in all enchanted at this point. So I. Um, I'm going to keep that Paladin Helm and the Ondrite Tidal Fist, at least one copy of them, because they're just cool. And these capes, un unenchanted capes, psh, for sure. And all the rest of that is uh, non-sellable goods or stuff we don't really want to give away. Oh, except for the traps. I never use traps. They're kind of pointless and shit. Uh, the main thing you get for disarming them is the fact you can sell them for quite good money. I'm sure in harder difficulties they suddenly sort of come into their own and are super useful if you're on um, something like a Path of Iron or whatever. That's 21,000 copper pans. Thank you very much indeed. Righty ho, um, and what I will do is purchase some camping supplies from you, sir. Do you have any? Just the one. I left like four free camping supplies uh, back at that temple. 75 copper, who gives a shit? Okay. Right, that's that dealt with. Now then, let's say hello to our prestigious visitor. A, De uh, a Dana fire guest. My lord, I don't wish to trouble you, but I could use your help in a pers I could use your help in a personal matter. Oh, she's a she's a um a veteran of the Wadewin the war the Wadewin's war. So go on then, let's hear it. You call your allies together and motion for the petitioner to step forward. Oh, this is cool. Now now I get to sort of lord it up. Here's me sitting on my enchanted throne. The 
this is harder to say than I thought it would be. My name is Adena. I fought in the Saints' War, same as most of my kin. I followed orders, no more. But between one thing and another, I guess I made a reputation for myself. Um, okay. They call me a hero. Every street I walk down, I get handshakes and comments. The dozens, they act like I'm some figurehead for their sch uh, schemes. Well, that's the dozens kind of suck. The things I've done, I don't get much sleep. The last thing I need is all this attention. All I want is some peace. Please, you're the only one I can turn to. Well, that is a sympathetic story. Um, options. Sounds like you could use some rest. Two, you shouldn't hide from your past. Three, perhaps one of my companions here can help you. Or four, I cannot help you with this at the moment. Well, it's a, quite a sympathetic story. Um... She doesn't get much sleep, so, um, perhaps one of my companions here can help you. Yeah, how do you mean? Oh, we've got two options. Adair's been through the war, I'm sure he has some good advice, or Mana has a good listener. She could help take you take some of this off your shoulders. Well, she could in the past, but I kind of erased that memory by her request. Uh, Adair's been through the war, I'm sure he has some good advice. Let's see, Adair. Oh, crap! Oh, fuck. I didn't realise that would... Adair just got removed from the, part from the party for five bloody days. That was our main tank. We... Right. Uh, that I didn't realise was coming. Um, I might reload that. Uh, we gain one prestige. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I had the choice of her or Manaha, and I, I thought it was just going to be a dialogue bit that I could read and carry on with. Thank goodness we quick save right before we talked to her. Every time we've ever talked to them, it's either been we've sent out a party member to help on a quest, uh, protect them. I've never, ever, ever seen that where so-and-so is now stuck for X number of days. Or at least normally you get a warning. Like if they're in your party, if they're actually in your initial six that are in-game, it'll go, this will remove this party member for five days. Do you want to continue? <laughs> okay, shit. <laughs> Live, no, 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 not on that, that, because that's completely going to st stitch up uh, me being actually able to do anything in the game itself. No, that's um, something that's the story and the dialogue, absolutely sure. This is um, essentially a kind of meaningless a bonus little bit of content with um, randomly generated NPCs. This is irrelevant. Right, let's hear it. I'm just going to get, because I've got two options there, Manaha or um, thing. It'll have exactly the same result. You get one prestige for giving over um, a member of your, your party. Right. Uh, perhaps one of my companions can help. Manaha's a good listener. It's identical. Identical. I've seen a few battles myself. It's hard for folk who haven't to know what it's really like. Manaha will be busy for five days. Your stronghold has gained one prestige. That's it. It's completely interchangeable. I'm not giving up the person we need to go and do the main quest. <laughs> That was legit shitty indeed, Daniel. Uh, it should have it should have given me some warning. Yes, that I think that this will help. Thank you, Lord Craven. You don't know what this means to me. I know it means one prestige to me, so thanks. All right. <laughs> See, that's what I want. After after all that faffing around to get a dare, yeah, no. It's, I'll I'll live with choices that affect the story. I will happily um, reset stuff that just interrupts things irritatingly absolute silliness absolute nonsense that aside it is quite cool it is quite cool that you can do this thing and that's not just a quest based thing it's like all right you uh you you give away someone i mean ideally i didn't want manaha to be unavailable but like the devil of karok she's um she's done her thing she she's got no more ghosts in her past 
Right, resting bonus, how are we doing? Rest. That was random. The game just randomly tabbed out without me pressing anything. That's strange. We're going to get our reset our craft shop resting bonus and then we'll head over to the marsh now that everyone's good to go. Oops. There's uh, the resting bonuses here. This is now the single best place to rest in the whole game. You, you can get different resting bonuses for every last part, uh, every possible stat. Um, and they last for through like three rests, so you can camp on the road. And uh, I do, I do sometimes wish there wasn't quite so many loading screens in the game, but it's not too, it's not too bad. Early in the game, it like it takes no time at all because there's like hardly anything happened. But now it's got to sort of remember all the stats and bits and pieces. But we'll we'll be we'll be done with all the um, back and forth through rooms and buildings soon. And then we will go, we will take care of the marsh. There we are. This is what I mean. This is this is my uh, my own Lord's rest place, and you get look at Bright Hollow, all these different stats, and they last through three, three uh, camping, um, three subsequent rests. So plus two mechanics. You know what? I normally take the plus three dexterity, uh, but. Actually, I don't think we'll need... No, in case we come across some some high-level treasure chests and traps and stuff, I'll take the Artificer's Hall bonus just to, to buff um, Durance because he's not as good as uh, the Devil of Karok. So we're going to take the Mechanics bonus. It's not all that useful, but I'd rather not come across some um, locked doors and bits and pieces that we were one stat off being unable to get through. So our dexterity is not as high as it used to be, but anyone who has to take a dexterity check, Craven's main stat is dexterity. And when you have to do um, skill checks in conversations, it's always based off, or, or, or interactions, it's usually based off of your main character's own stats. So it's not the worst thing in the world. I think Cra Craven's rocking like... Yeah, his dexterity is already like 18, so it's like he's really nimble. I've never seen a stat check above 18. Yes, yeah, so, sorry, Dark, of course you asked earlier what I've been up to at the weekend. It was uh, a comedy club in a brewery in Twickenham. Very randomly, uh, this southwestern, southwestern uh, London town that's um, ostensibly the home of English rugby. It's uh, Twickenham Stadium is where our uh, national rugby team plays, uh, and it's 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 a real lovely um, place actually. It's a very nice sort of town that's sort of been enveloped by the ever-growing mass of London many years ago. Uh, anyhow, it wasn't sort of a gentrified, you know, former brewery, all very fancy red brick and posh and cleaned and scrubbed. It was just a fully functioning... Okay, we're all good, we're all set. Let's get over to Marek Fen. Bam. Uh, it was all, uh, it was just a sort of brewery in a shed, you know, just a, a warehouse. You wouldn't walk through this door. Oh, that artwork's really cool. You wouldn't walk through this door unless you knew it was there. And they just had benches on barrels and a stage made out of a couple of pallets with some lights sort of strapped to it. Heat had to be turned off because it was making too much noise. So everyone's sitting on these benches with their, their beers because the brewery has its own little makeshift bar that was built up in it opposite the staff room. And um, yeah, we uh, we got a couple of hours of good local stand-up comedy and everyone in it was uh, really, really good. Quest updated the phylactery's promise. So yeah, I met up with a friend for lunch. We had the whole afternoon and evening out having beers and getting snacks. I got in about 11. It was brilliant. Um, in Stalwart, a violent scout was brought down by the town guards, but not before she was observed demanding information as to my whereabouts. So seek out your enemy. I have reached the boggy expanse of wilderness that matches the area I saw in the scout's memory. It is a desolate place and hardly seems like the site for an outpost. Yeah, it was awesome. It was something so different as well. I mean, I, I like a good bit of standout. 
st um, stand-up comedy and going to local stand-up bits. I don't get to do it very often, Die Cat. And uh, yeah, this wasn't a sort of, it was all done fancy. It was rather than being, as I say, peak London, it was sort of peak alternative London. It was able to be, do it really on the cheap, which was very cool. Uh, the, the cheapest p uh, pints in, in town. And uh, oh, we've got quite a lot to uncover here in Malgric Ian or Malgric Glen. I'll turn on fast mode while we're sneaking. Apparently we can't walk down to that little gub. I guess the boggy ground is... It's very sort of like mystical, haunted. It's reminding me of that movie Willow. You know, that, like that 80s one, is it, with Val Kilmer and all the little people? A uh, sort of very 80s approach to... Uh, what the hell? Hello there, friendly little or non-hostile sprite. What's this? Gaps between the stones reveal a hollow space lined with bird's nests. That's interesting. What is that thing? It's like a will-o'-the-wisp. We have a wee hut there. Hurler, okay, she's non-hostile and she's a named NPC. So quite likely. And her, if that's her home or her little carriage, it's been stuck there for a while. Blazing cart, what am I supposed to do now? I don't know, uh, t tow it with a horse and maybe not through a bog. Well, look at that. Six massively well-equipped adventurers just, like, rocked up. Hi. Damn him, that! She turns towards you and promptly jumps in surprise. Blazes! Where'd you come from? Haven't seen another soul on the road for a day at least. Thinking the same thing about the ball of light. Yeah, very Will of the Wispy, wasn't it? Uh, let's see. Need a hand? One, two, not much of a road. Three, none of your business. Or four, what are you doing out here? Just passing through. We're trying. We're headed to Stalwart with some goods for trade. We were following the lamps. One wrong push and the cart goes headlong into the muck. All I need is for Benno to come stomping right on back. We're late enough as it is. Last thing I need is his damn tantrums. Tan tantrums? Tantrums. Well, what happened? Well, she already said we're headed to Stalwart. What happened with Benno? What didn't happen? He's a spiteful crab most days, but out here he's been downright intolerable. He's got a real sour f he got real sour face when the cart tipped over. Decided to storm off in a huff. Now I'm stuck here waiting for him. Word of advice, if you ever find yourself in the trading business, keep it in the family. Um <laughs> Try and find him. I'd appreciate it. You bring that stubborn goat back to me back and I'll set aside some coin for you. Okay. Little task bog down, okay, so a little little thing on the side. Flame and sound. We'll keep to ourselves. That'll be self-contained within this region, so that's all fine and dandy. All right, we can't cross the river here or uh, this stagnant whatever. Obvious signs of life and ritual habitation. You've got this little hut built for the birds. Now this concentric ring of. Um, things. I guess we could cross here. Yeah, we can. Let's, uh, I'm going to do my usual sweep bit and, and check out the top half first. Okay, another sort of... Looks like some form of fort. There's a body inside it. And it's well flooded. We'll check that out later. Does it appear on the map as anything? Not yet. Where's that bloody Will-o'-the-Wisp again? All right, uh, lesser peat sucker ooze, a new kind of uh, primordial doodad. We'll come and approach them shortly. Whoa, that's a big old ball of slime. Greater peat sucker ooze. Lovely. Pilgrim's crown. Oh, it's a sunken head. Well, this place clearly has some sort of significance to somebody once upon a time. I mean, sure, it's desolate now, but... And what's that? A bog bat. Alright, we'll give that... Okay, we're starting to, uh... Track things down. Oh, hello. Right, I think it's about time we all unstealthed. 
Uh, where did Adair end up? Right, Palagina. Welcome back. Durance. Pop. Adair forward. Craven forward. Oh, goodness me. Bog Lurker and our oh, giant dank. Dank spores with the dank memes. Right. Let's get charging. Charge the Bog Lurker. Smash the bat on the way. Grieving Mother. Um, I think a domination wouldn't be too too far out of the. Let's Puppet Master. Puppet Master. Um, this one. That Bog Bat. Palagina. Straight in Flames of Devotion on this wee shite. Aloth. Exposed vulnerabilities to start with. Around about there. And Durant's come forward as well. Excellent. Right, she's... Oh, he, someone's already lit him on fire. That one's getting targeted. Okay, where do we stand? Bog Loka. Let's knock him on his ass. Next for Durant's. It's got to be... Devotions of the Faithful. That'll go down very nicely indeed. Right there. Oh dear. Craven Craven's been confused for ten seconds. That's that's not cool. How dare you? Uh despondent blows on all of this lot. Aloth, some tentacles would be in order. Let's stick them there. Grieving Mother, she's still got 25. Um, Phantom Foes. That'll affect Craven as well, but alright, fine. Uh, Palagina, that thing's... Oh, it's not dying as quickly as I thought. Put a Sworn Enemy on it. Because these things could be tougher. I've been, I've been face rolling so much of this stuff that... Uh, a knockdown didn't take on the Bog Lurker. Let's get some vigorous defense. There we are. Right, that even things up. And Craven's back to normal. He's flanked and frightened. Oh, he's still confused for 2.7 seconds. Right, Palagina dealt with the first one with Sworn Enemy quite nicely. We successfully dominated the bog bat for like 20 odd seconds tell you what palagina come and take on a giant dank spore right now um, grieving mother start shooting this one durant's consecrated ground's a good bet right about now and it dares making a little bit of progress against the big lads acolytes radiance let's top everyone off Okay, Craven's no longer confused. Let's have him shock damage reduction. That won't do. Let's see if we can help. For, actually, no, what? Screw it. Let's take on that bat. Adair can handle the first one. All right, and flames. Oh, we've already used flames devotion. Um, sacred immolation. I should have used that when we were around all our allies. We should have come to this guy last. Never mind. Palagina can take it. Oh, do you, oh. Goodness me, Alos actually uh, getting knocked around a little bit. Arcane Veil. Vale. I've got to start remembering to use that. Use your second wind. Uh, Durance, use your Holy Radiance. In fact, come forward a little more and use it. And Grieving Mother. How oh, your focus is up to loads. Disintegration. See if you can disintegrate the Bog Lurker. <laughs> Right, now do Holy Radiance. Okay, that tops everyone off quite nicely. And that is Palagina summoning the stuff with her super sword. I like the idea of Paladin's best weapon is like summoning random undeads. <laughs> it's something twisted about the lore side of that. Okay, now Aloth, you're good again. So Arcane Assault. And it dare. That's working quite well. 
start shooting that bat. Uh, Miss Grieving Mother, get your focus back. Uh, that one's still... Wow, dominated for another 8 seconds. Durant's whale on that one. Level up your weapons. D Aloth. What's causing him so much bloody... Um, damage? Uh, endurance damage, I'm not sure. Right, perhaps we can sneak in another knockdown on the bog lurker. Just stop some incoming damage. Aloth starts shooting this one now. Uh, Durant's whale on this one. Okay, that one's down. Um, Craven, come and do a pummel over here. And Grieving Mother, shoot that one. Palagina, have you got any tricks left? Yeah, do a quick Sacred Immolation. Speed things up. Let's put one more knockdown on him while we got it there. We can't fight back. Actually, come and help on the bog bat. And you do your second wind, and you shoot him, you shoot him, you shoot him. Your aim could use some improvement. I don't know why you're saying your aim could use some improvement. We're literally, that's you doing your sacred immolation, you I lunatic. Did. Hey. Thanks, spores, and... Bog bat, we're dropping bat's ears, of course. Awaken root. We don't get too many of those, that's not so bad. Alright, so that's cleared that out quite nicely. Fast mode, they sneak back on. Well, I, I see, see much. much. Is that what you think, is it? Oh, we can't walk any further down there. We can get this um, golden celery, that's the one. Huh? What's caused a pause this time? Enemy spotted wraith? Ooh, we got some weird bog like spectral undead on the other side. Alright, so there's more doom and gloom around the corner. But what's down here? Okay, there's the pet sucker ooze. I don't think he. For some reason, he probably can't see us over the river uh, because that's how the game's barriers work. And we discovered an ancient tower. So here's that ancient tower. It's actually our first landmark on the map. Okay, one wraith, two wraith. I was going to say red wraith, blue wraith, not so much. I wonder if they're tough at all, right? We're going to unstealth a lot of us. <laughs> uh, immune to a few things, that's fine. Do into the fray. You come and beat him up. Hell, Palagina, come round the, s the back. You start shooting him, you start shooting him. Hey. Right, now Palagina do sworn enemy. Hell, Durant's come round the back as well. <laughs> That was especially non-threatening. I thought it was going to be like a whole mob of them or something. One poor lonely little wraith. Jokes. Burned lady. Oh, let's take fast mode off. Hey. Laying low. Oh, sorry, turn it back on, but we had scouting mode off. That's what I meant. Hmm. Just quickly cover our ground. We'll go at the top here, see if there's any little pickups or whatnot. Be nice and thorough. Ah, one more wraith. Okay. Uh, why is a dare stuck at the back? Never mind. Craven, go pummel. Palagina. Oh no, that's a grieving mother. Just do your prestigitators and missiles. Palagina, do sworn enemy. Nidare run in and I guess that's Durant's. Boom. Bang. <laughs> hey. 
Our party's quite tough now. I'm going to scout again because every so often you have to be stealth or scouted to... Uh, as large as these mushrooms are, you can see far vaster forms dotting the swamp behind the tree line. Okay, cool. Uh, sometimes when you're stealthed or scouting, it'll bring up a so-and-so has discovered something, and it'll be in purple rather than in red, as red is generally for actively hostile stuff. Aloth's taken a lot of damage already. Let's patch him up with a bit of field triage. Yep. There we are. I should give him some hit points back. There we are, he's pretty much right as rain. Or close enough. I understand. Hey. I shall be discreet. Okay, I think we've got to go around the top of this to find a way in. Aha! And this is another bog bat. Fine. You guys aren't going to be alone. Dare can actually a dare run to that one and Craven run to this one. Panagina come forward. Let's see what we're up against. Oh, Bog Guardian. I wonder if she's going to be uh, similar to um, an Adragan and cast Petrify and other stuff. So we can open up with a 55, uh, with a 5. What can we do for 5 right away? Detonate. Saved that for low endurance. Borrowed instinct. I'm going to do borrowed instincts on the Bog Guardian. Make her a lot weaker. Durant's obviously open up with interdiction. And um, Aloth will open up with exposed vulnerabilities. Craven will open up with a pummel. A dare going to charge the Guardian and she's more of a threat. I've got some moon spiders in the background. Okay, and we've got a bog lurker as well. Let's do sworn enemy on him. He's the toughest. And then primordial fire and have uh we'll have palagina yeah we'll have palagina go on the bog lurker and craven carry on doing what you're doing it's waited dazed it's weakened by the way where's this crazy ability of uh oh it's in here oh ring of the ancient forge one per encounter the ring of abaddon tower is powerful enough to interrupt enemies uh, around a wielder and leave them stunned right let's have craven run in here and do a little more. Grieving Mother. She's only got five left. Prestigitator's missile is in this general direction. Uh, Durant's Devotions of the Faithful. Right there. Alright, now... Because I didn't know that was there. We've got Abaddon's Labour. So we've got Ring of the Ancient Forge once per encounter. That's an interrupt and a stun. And Abaddon's Labour... Crush damage to enemies and pushing them back. I'm going to do that Ring of the Ancient Forge. That is so cool. Whoa, look at that. Oh, my. Multiple bog lurkers. Okay, this just got a little bit interesting. Um, Despondent Blows. Let's put it on the three bog lurkers. Aloth. Come forward. Cast some... Tentacles there if you can. Grieving mother, you need to get some focus on because some AoE stuff right about now. I'll tell you actually what. Mind blades, recall agony. We'll do we'll do phantom foes. Flanking having everything feel like it's flanked is a good nice nice bonus. A dare. That Bog Guardian's still up, so let's knock her down. She's got Borrowed Instinct for 33 odd seconds, that's very cool. I've got to do, as it's per encounter, that Abaddon's Labour. We could nail bunches of them. Oh my word, that's so cool. That just pushed loads of them back, right? Palagina's kicking ass. 
taking names. Go towards this bog lurker. That's the one you're supposed to be up against. He's got a sworn enemy, so you'll carve through him. Um, that bog guardian's still... Oh, she's prone. Okay, cool. Um, that thing's stunned for a bunch of seconds. She's still casting... Have they got phantom foes on them yet? Hey, Citizen Ordelian, mate. How you doing? Good, uh, good evening to you as well. How's your weekend been, mate? I won't have to move around too much because I want them all to come running back towards the tentacles that Aloth's about to cast. Alright, Craven's got minor fatigue. That's fine. Just going to wait, have him wait for a second. That's better. Tell you what, Grieving Mother, you shoot... You run around to here and shoot this one. Build up some focus on it. Craven can now... Right, those tentacles are going to be kept busy. He can run in. That lesser peat sucker ooze. Let's go and give that some grief. Bogbat's nearly dead through pure AoE. Durant's... Um, you know what? Durant's can be... Uh, Aloth... No, that'll paralyze and start sickening us. He can't do any of his dangerous AoE stuff, really. Yeah, now it's going to cook too many people if he does a fire doodad. Arcane Assault. That'll work all right. There's a... Oh, God, there's a whole ton of them queued up. Oh, we really could do with uh, a nice... Uh, a big old chain AoE down there. If we can just get our Palagina... Um, out of the way. The tentacles just have to soak it. Enjoy yesterday? Yeah, yeah, I did. It was awesome, man. And good thanks. Housework, Christmas things. Oh, speaking of Christmas things, the joys. Absolutely. Absolutely. Speaking of Christmas things, yeah, I, um... I, uh, I got myself an advent calendar today. There was, um... In the little Tesco Metro, there was one going for uh, a pound, like, reduced to clear. It was a Mars... The Mars advent calendar. The Mars chocolate one. I was like, for a quid? Well, brilliant. I mean, obviously I'm going to disown my mum for not buying me one this year. <laughs> but, uh... Alright, Tentacle. Let's put Barb's of Condemnation on that one. And he's used up all his spell mastery stuff. Alright, Aloth. I think that's Palagina summoning... Oh no, it's a small rain blight. Uh, what can we do? But let's see what's about to pop up. Oh, they've summoned fresh ones, have they? Very well. Let's get... I don't want to cook any of us lot by mistake. Yeah, that's going to hit it dead. How is that thing not dead yet, right? Durant's going to bash it in the face. You know, we normally buy ours a couple of days into December for that reason. See, and my, my attitude is also a bonus. I get to eat nine chocolates in one day today, which is uh, A-OK -okay with me. <laughs> that's what Christmas is all about. Damn it, this thing's really holding out, considering it's got a sworn enemy and Palagina's wailing on it. All right, she can do sacred immolation as she's in a very good spot to do it. Craven's got his ludicrous god hammer on. Um, Lord's authority, one per stronghold turn. May as well, because it'll be another stronghold turn by the time we get to the scar. It's your AO... Why, whenever they get hurt, they keep banging on that like they're getting hurt by ally. It's her own AoE. She does her own AoE that hurts her slightly. It's like, oh, your aim needs some improvement. You set yourself on fire, you idiot. Right, I'm just having... I'm just, the bog bat, I just, just keep having the grieving mother shoot it because it's mainly building focus. It's doing so little damage that the bog bat's not paying attention, so she's being left alone. Um, all right, Durant's, tell you what, Durant's just run over here and bang on the lesser peat sucker ooze. Craven, why is it taking you so long? I may start using some per rest abilities, because otherwise this fight's going to take forever, and it doesn't need to. Another arcane assault. Let's throw one right there. Have him run forward. The tentacles are going to run out soon. That bog guardian's finally near death, and then Adair's freed up. Because he's not tanking anything very much right now. Put it on its ass. Palagina's still kicking ass. Because she's nails. Right, now then. I'm going to run Aloth forward. Well, actually not forward, but get him in a suitably flanky position. 
They're all just standing there. I love it. They're just waiting their turn. Maybe these are very British villains. They're all queued up. Right, they're going to pay attention to him from this point on, but let's set them all on fire. That's a very effective use of Cone of Flame. <laughs> right, that one, I think at this point... Uh... Palagina, oh, she's still on that one. Adair could pull that one forward. Grieving Mother's on 70 focus, which is awesome. Adair run to there. Oh, he's been hobbled. That won't do. <laughs> and at this point, Adair charge these bastards. Aloth, um... I think, are they immune to being sickened? No, none of them are. Right, let's see Pete Sakaroos can get paralysed. Right, Craven's done with his one. He should probably help out Durance though. Durance is not a melee very much. He should go over there. Who's up against this one? Right, Palagina's is still taking that one on. That's good. That one's badly injured. Nice. Right, he's still casting. Good, and they're now focused on Adair. As soon as he finishes casting that Sickness ability, you run back. Um, and in fact, summon some skeletons there to deal with that bat who's going largely unmolested. Alright, she's got 107 focus. I've never seen anything like that. By linking his or her mind, those by nearby allies. Right, we're going to just run forward. Have her run forward there now that she's nails. Um, Durant's come to here. An off tank. What's left on that one? That one's nearly dead. And Craven come forward to about there. Right, Durant's come behind and off tank that one that Palagina's on. She's built up loads of threat on it. And uh, Adair's up against this one, so you target the same one as Adair so he doesn't turn round. You keep running forward to here. Now, do your ludicrous ability. Defensive mind web. By linking his or her mind with those of nearby allies, the caster creates a series of defensive links between them. All allies in the mind web use the best defense of anyone in the web. Okay, she needs to come forward more. Because we want Adair's defense in that little link. Defensive mind web. <laughs> nice. Alright, that bog bat's near death. We'll send one skeleton in that general direction. Aloth. Start wanding it. Level up your soulbound wand. Palagina, um, lay on hands. On yourself. It dares endurance is ludicrously low. What's going on there? Uh, take a second wind on yourself there, mate. That's it. And let's get... We've done Consecrated Ground. Let's get Holy Radiance. Buff everybody a bit. And that bat wasn't getting hit. Right, that's a lot better. Now Adair can also do Vigorous Defense. As he's tanking everything quite well. Craven just smashing into them with a hammer. And she's still got 25 odd. Uh, you start shooting him. Okay, she's now got 30. So let's do soul ignition. He's nearly dead. Barely injured, barely injured. Soul ignition on that one. Um, skeletons... Oh, that, somehow that one's ended up dominated. So the skeleton can run forward and deal with, help deal with this one. And Aloth, you can warn this fellow as well. Oh, we've summoned a white. Oh, Palagina has finally. And another revenant, which will make short work of these Egypts. And a gull. This, lesser peat sucker ooze. Oh, that's what keeps hitting you there. Right, you hit the lesser peat sucker ooze. We haven't lost anybody. Aloth. That one doesn't want to go down easy at all. Christ. So, Aloth, go over there. Uh, no, just talking about ads that keep disappearing. That's what's, what's up. 
Craven, sever the soul. We'll definitely rest once before the end of this, so sod it. Let's start unloading some bigger stuff. Come on. Where's it gone? Ah, watch your abilities. Yes, they're under here. That one's injured. That one's barely injured. You go and hit him. Grieving Mother, what are you doing? 20. Uh, where's Spark the Souls of the Righteous? Or no. Soul Shock. We'll put that on, yeah, right here on Adair as well. I mean, this one's just surrounded and he's still not getting hurt. Halligine is all out of tricks to deal with him. Oh, finally, he died. All right, good. Right, Durant's round onto this one and all you random little ads onto that one. Halligine are onto him as well. Finally, and that skeleton round onto here. And Anoth onto here. Huh? You? Oh god, I thought it was... That one just stood there like near death the entire time. You know what? Over there. You, Egypt, onto him. It is still... Oh god, knock one of them down. Knock him down. Uh, Durant's come around to here. Flank him. Craven onto him. Durant's... We've got any scrolls we can use up. Why is he not carrying any scrolls? Alright, Cypher Face. I know you've got a few. Any of any use? Scroll of Boiling Spray? Not so much. Oh, Blessing. I didn't realise she had one Blessing per encounter. That's amazing. Alright, we'll use that. Palagina towards him and Alor this way. Who's fighting whom? Right, Alos over there. Grieving Mother. Sure, Grieving Mother's got another 50, right? We're going to do a detonate and blow this one up. Okay, did she actually do her detonate? She did somehow. We're going to do Soul Ignition again. Try and finish him off. Right, those lot are finally done over there. Christ, can we come and deal with this guy? And why is it there getting so hurt? He's normally immortal. Unbending, no, that's fine, right. Put your final knockdown on this one. That's better. Palagina, help out here. And Aloth here. He's used his second wind already. Do you acolyte's radiance? That's better. And she's got a lay on hand, so let's do that on him. Come on. Bloody hell, that was a hell of a marathon. Good scrap, though. There we are, finally. Night Shroud. <laughs> Night Shroud leveled up. So, we've caused the Blinded Affliction 13 times. It has now gained 50 defense against Blinded and Dazed attacks, which is awesome. Dazed especially, uh, for a priest. And next one is to kill 13 humans with Night Shroud, or kill 65 enemies. And we've got a new bit of quest text for... Mm, Soulbound uh, text for it. So, it was a uh, shadows ooze, ooze and pool around you, filling your mind with memories of furtive expeditions, clandestine meetings, and the traffic of secrets. You hear the whispers of the men and women who snuck, struck, and survived by power of this weapon. Here's a new bit. An apprentice smith of the Pargrun was cleaning out the forge room when he saw something glowing on the slag heap, or in the slag heap. He told his master about it, but the older smith waved him off, assuring the young man that it was merely a hot stone. Undeterred, the apprentice took the glowing stone before carting the rest of the slag away. He kept it in his pocket for the next several days, but the strange glow didn't abate. He snuck into the smithy at night to begin working on the piece, yet he couldn't bring himself to hammer the glowing ore into a blade. Instead, he fashioned a mace. Ah. That's, you're getting now the history of the thing very well.
Uh, hopefully that was a reasonably solid amount of XP. Because they're not going to drop much in terms of kit. We have this poor sap. A corpse. Fine morning star. Hunter's mail. Fine. Corrosion regen. Major spell by draining touch. 20% of damage over time converted to healing over time. Wow, that's really good. Um, grants draining touch one per rest. What does draining touch do? Drains 30 to corrode damage as endurance. It's not too bad. It began as nothing more than an accident. A die wooden hunter on an expedition stepped on the tail of a sleeping Stelgar, which is essentially a giant tiger, and the animal would have torn him in torn him torn into him except one of its teeth became lodged in the hunter's mail affording him an opportunity to slay the beast a tooth he left in the mail as kind of a, the tooth he left in the mail as kind of a trophy other expeditions would gain him new trophies teeth or bones which he would sew into the armor's links as a point of pride the hunter himself was eventually slain by a group of fangs who found him walking out of an Engwithen ruin with a bag full of things they did not feel were his but they kept up his tradition, sewing one of the hunter's teeth into the mail. Jesus. Over the years, they added to the collection until the wearer was killed. The mail would change hands from time to time in this way, when the owner was slain by a beast or someone with a grudge. But without fail, each new owner would add his trophies to the mail. And the armour is now a fearsome pastiche of the remains of beasts and people alike. Christ. Um, I mean, it's not actually all that great, but it's got some interesting stats on it. Uh, boiling spray. She got that already. No, there's Aloth rocking it. That scroll of confusion. She's. I know she's got one of those. Ah, that's where boiling spray went. Durant has it. Stick that in the stash. Right, why is, he, why is he not rocking? A potion of major regeneration can come out for the time being. And let's put in some quick things. What does Stag's Horn even do? Hmm. Put Boiling Spray in there because it's quite powerful. Right, let's loot the remainder. Let's get the uh, oh bog guardian and a bog bat very well, and this is a oh we missed one somehow. Now what have we here? Interestingly, uh, prayer against treachery. Do we have any copies of that already? Not sure. Put it in hers and restore critical endurance. Those are both good. What's in here? Whoa! You notice movement amidst the mud and debris. Uh, inside one of the broken crates, a young bat flaps feebly, pinned in place by a fallen plank. Oh, we just killed all its parents. <laughs> um, pick it up. You gently lift the plank out of the way and pick up the young bat. It squeaks once, but seems otherwise content to peer out of the world from the relative safety of your hand. You've gained an item, Bog Battling. We have a new pet! We have a new pet! It dares so happy we have a new pet! And I'm quite chuffed as well. Oh, marvellous. Oh, excellent. Well, this is worth the trip. Um, Where's it gone? Bog Battling. Right, you... You get to go. Right, we're going to take the war pup out for the time being. So our other dogs. We've got a black hound as well and a bog battling. At this point, I could literally fill pretty much all of Craven's inventory with the additional pets. I had to take some out because he was just running out of space. Um, yes, now quickly, quick items. Boiling spray. Uh, that was it. That was where the other scroll of confusion was. And that was prayer against treachery. And she's got a boiling spray as well. Now let's just give that to Durance. Freeze up a slot for her. And we'll do we put a critical endurance there so that we're not entirely reliant on him for critical endurance. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, that was rather... Oh, brilliant. There's a little pet right there. That's awesome. 
Love it when we get a pet. Ah, oh, it's so cool as well. It's just flapping along. Oh, and some skein bone. Thank you very much. How much of the map have we done so far? Okay, we've still got a lot to do. Like a shitload to do. Oh, good job we're getting this little side quest out of the way now. They shall see nothing while and I what are these reports? Um, yeah, that's fine. Turn on fast mode. Okay, so let's have a hunt around. What is this big well thing? We can't seem to cross here. Ah, signs of habitation, civilization, possibly gland fathoms. Right, can we do anything with this ancient tower? Aside from... It's, no, it's just there as a landmark, really. Right, well, let's cross the bridge. Aha, uh -huh, a lesser ooze, eh? Oh, we're getting a jump on these big lads. Right, let's make sure we're sort of in formation-ish. What I mean by that is it dares at the front. There we are. Whoop. Okay, we're in combat. So, Adair goes up against the fat lad. Um, and Craven can come this way, as can Palagina. Aloth, let's just... Ex can we expose vulnerable... Oh, we can get most of them anyway with it. That's great. Uh, where's Durant's? He can almost certainly get all of them with interdiction. Yep. They're going to stay where they are and not move. So let's try not to clip a dare with it. And a grieving mother. 55. Let's do ringleader. Get to there. Oh, excellent. That's confused most of them. Right. Craven can just go and bash that lot. And... Durant's come forward to about here. Now Palagina, she can... Right, Adair, you, you really should be against this one. Um, she needs to come round side so it's flanked of a man. And look at him. All, all his brothers, all his friends are turned against him. Right. Um, and sworn enemy. Make short work of him. Next. Devotions of the Faithful as we've stunned a lot of them, pretty much. Aloth, stick some tentacles there. And Grieving Mother, she's got five, so shoot this little fecker. There's, oh, I think that must have been a big pile of psychic backlash. Uh, into the fray, just make sure it keeps focused on you. Dead. You get round to here. Uh, actually, you hit that one, and I'll hit that one, and you soul ignite this one. Craven pummel it. Your thoughts must be deeply indeed. I shall end. There we are. And then he's about to wake back up. Bam. Easy. Easy. Oh, we had a couple more. That's exactly what I was going for. Oh, good. Hey, when Steens is maxed out. Cause a dominated affliction 15 times. All soul bound upgrades are complete. So it's fast, has an average interrupt. 20% raw damage. 10% chance to cast dominate on a hit or critical hit, which is really good. I actually need to use make sure he uses his wand more often, because it's basically like every single time he's doing it, it's like, oh, random domination. Grants Gref's authority once per encounter. 22 to 32 crush damage. His success was stunned to six seconds. Okay, that's awesome. Plus three resolve. And it's accurate. So 21, but accurate six enchantment. So 30% extra damage, 21. That's really good. Okay, let's read the rest of the blurb. I haven't actually read most of this. 
Okay, so, um, Gaiad Heywin Steens, the blue stone scepter is remarkable in that it's been shaped from a single sapphire. Its only other component is its grip made of silver bands. Ina Gaiad, the most famous scepter in Adir and poss- perhaps all of Eora, is held jointly by Mequin and Fjerconning as a symbol of royal authority. And it's said to carry the souls of early chieftains in its Adra head. Though traditionally thought of as a sim- as symbolic, there have been a few notable times in history when it was put to, p- to practical use. In one such instance, Mequin Elia and I, uh, Mequin Elia the First, had her claim to the throne challenged by an older half sister claiming to be a legitimate heir. Elia invited her to court so that people might hear her words with their own ears and judge for themselves. The woman spoke at length and showed a number of sworn documents to those present at court. Elia summoned her to the throne and told her that if the chieftains of Ina Gaiad judged her worthy, the Mequin would abdicate. The woman approached um the woman that approached Elia was told to bow her head to receive the kiss of Ina Gaiad. She did so and was quickly felled by a barrage of savage blows from the Mequin. It was the last time her authority was challenged during her reign. Jesus. In attendance in court that night was Tyric III, a Gref Palatine. So impressed was Tyric at the many uses of Ina Gaiad as a symbol of authority and just a makeshift club, all right, that he had an artisan craft as him a scepter of his own. He was careful to request that it differ completely in appearance from Ina Gaiad, lest he draw the attention and ire of the Mequin. Though Gaiad Huena's stains does not contain the souls of the Gref's bloodline, it does tend to project the authority of, its, of the wielder as the original owner intended. And the dragon's more shield held by Adair. Oh, also fully upgraded. Uh, that's quite cool because it's superb, so I'll hang on to that for a while. 12 deflection, minus 4 accuracy, plus 1 enemies engaged. So he can tank up to 4. Uh, 25% chance to cast Taste of the Hunt on hit or critical hit. Which is target 30 raw damage over 10 seconds. And then you get 100 of that back as endurance, which is awesome. Plus 12 shield deflection because it's superb. It has a passive fear aura. Dragon's Breath once per rest, which I'll have to remember is there, and Grant's Bash, which I never seem to remember to use. Oh my word. Okay. The shield was traditionally passed between dragon hunters to honour exceptional feats and kills. Receiving the dragon's more shield is one of the highest honours among dragon hunters. We've hunted th- uh, two dragons so far. And over the years... It's been the object of countless bets, soured friendships, lifelong apprenticeships, and violent deaths. Renetta the Scarred received a shield when she was still young for an especially brave or foolish battle against a stone dragon. How do you kill a a stone dragon? She lost one of her eyes and all of her teeth. Ah! But she defeated the beast and received a shield on what many expected would be her deathbed. However, Renetta recovered and lived a long life to the consternation of many... She ceased hunting dragons and took to training pupils, of which she had many. All were eager to learn from the steward of the dragon's moor shield, and many hoped she might pass it on to them. Yet her contemporaries grumbled that she should pass it on if she had given up the hunt, and they complained that no hunter should profit financially from the shield. Renetta eventually bestowed it on another hunter, but by that time she was a very wealthy woman. The twins, Marid and Devna, hunted dragons for many years together. They became successful, yet it was handsome Marid that their peers and admirers loved best. Devna was sharp-tongued and plain, and though her skill with a spear was undeniable, she always lived in her brother's shadow. They had fought and hunted together for almost 20 years when the dragon's moor shield passed to Marad. Devna congratulated her brother and accepted his honour as gracefully as she could. After all, the shield had always had a single steward, but some saw resentment in her, in her simmering in her eyes. Others said her reflexes slowed and her aim faltered. Whispers circulated that she was past her prime. Within a year of Maran's receiving the shield, he perished beneath the claws of a sand dragon. Devna survived and retrieved the shield, but many blamed her failing skills for her dashing brother's death. Others suspected that she killed him in a fit of jealousy. Whatever the case, she quickly passed the shield to her successor and lived the remainder of her days as a recluse. Oh, that's really harsh. It's rather tragic. Oh. Lirat the swineherd never wanted to be a dragon hunter, but when his village drew the attention of a particularly nasty crag dragon, he was chosen to deal with it. Armed with his uncle's rusty sword and a single dose of heathbrush bush poison, just in case, he set out to find the beast. The dragon was not hard to find. Lirat could hear its snores from half a mile away and smell it from further still. He followed a trail of bones to a cave where the beast lay sleeping, surrounded by the bodies of dead and dying pigs. 
As Lyra entered the cave, one of the wounded swine squealed. This woke the dragon, which swallowed the pig whole. Only then did the beast notice Lyra, and in its surprise it choked on the pig. Lyra nearly died of fright as he watched the dragon writhing and convulse, but the dying pig had lodged itself firmly in the dragon's unfortunately long throat, and within minutes the monster was dead. Despite his protest, fair enough he owned up, Lyrat was hailed as a hero. As word of, his, word of his deed spread, and as the supposed size of his dragon grew, he attracted the attention of Turan the Bull, who passed the shield to the young swineherd. Lyrat enjoyed a year of feasts and fates, but when, circulations, when questions circulated about his next conquest, he passed the shield to another hunter. <laughs> That's cool. I love that that's got the history of the bearers okay. of it. And now, well, now you have a proper um, dragon hunter. Adair has uh, been present as we kill both dragons we've taken on so far. Of course. Very cool. Very cool indeed. All right. We need to find a way out. We need to cross over and round. I think the level design layout of this map is kind of encouraging us to sort of go in an anti-clockwise motion and the areas I've been able to uncover seem to uh, indicate that. Doesn't seem to be much else here. That's wicked, we got like th uh, three or I think at least a good three maxed out soulbound items now. Hello Ditto Bunny! Long time no see here in the Cravenstown streaming complex. Absolute pleasure to see you. I am well. I've had a nice weekend. Caught up with one of my oldest friends, a mutual friend of Mr. Redwood, in fact, uh, who unfortunately couldn't join us. He's still rather under the weather. But I yeah, had a, a great night last night at um, a comedy club after an afternoon and evening out with my mate at the pub and so on. And how are you doing? It is really good to see you. Right, well, this lot uh, are never on their Todd. Oh, uh, it's a, a few bats, not a problem. Um, Adair charged that way. Craven just... Hey. Okay, um, hopefully that didn't wipe out anyone else's endurance. Uh, it's just a few mob of bats. We now have this little pet bat, so he's kind of watching us like butcher all of the rest of his kin, who seem to be a species native only to this area, so we are doing some rapid mass extinction. And how was your weekend, ditto? How have you been? What have you been up to? How have you been keeping? Let's pummel um, Durant. I think it's high time you actually opened up with some of your abilities. Ba bing and Grieving Mother come forward as well. <clears throat> we don't need to constantly auto attack now that his um, weapon's fully leveled up, but let's look at some of the stuff we can do with it. See that Gref's authority once per encounter. Accurate melee attack that does crash, crush, crash slash damage bypasses some damage reduction can stun the target. Nice. Go on then. Let's actually no. Wait a minute. Before we do that, let's actually do his magic stuff, like expose vulnerabilities. <laughs> that might help. And a grieving mother. Yeah, it's all this cool stuff in the background now. Blessing once per encounter. Call for divine favor that increased accuracy and damage of allies in AOE effects. Yeah. Jeez, Louise. Got to start to remember to use some of this stuff, the per encounter stuff. Now we're getting quite high level. We're definitely doing that um, interrupt and stun. Boom. With this giant god hammer. Uh, I'm well planning for Christmas already. I'm hosting this year. Oh, cool. So are you having sort of all the family, the extended family, uh, in-laws, cousins and everything? You're, do you're doing the whole shebang? That's very cool. Obviously, that's going to get keeping you busy. I would love to do something like that one day. If I have a, a sort of big family um, later on in life, hopefully uh, be able to kind of do that grand hosting thing because it's, it's busy and it's stressful, but at the same time on the day when you're doing it, it's kind of really nice to do. I like to think... That one's badly injured. Palagin has nearly got him right. Aloth, what can you do next? Tentacles. Um, actually, it's not really worth it. Throw us paralyze that one with some sickness. Let's get down with the sickness. Uh, and Adair's taking his sweet time to get through this thing. I still need to do a lot of Christmas planning. I've got myself an advent calendar and a couple of cards um, for for friends and fam uh, for family. I've managed to get one present for like one person. And I really need to think up a few more. Okay, so Durant can come in here. He can do... 
Despondent Blows is almost not worth it. Let's do Holy Radiance. The Grieving Mother. She got so much focus. What's he on? So any on low endurance. Alright, Craven start wailing on this one instead. That's it. And she can do detonate on the other one. Kablamo on that bog bat. Now Palagina can cheese it forward to the deal with this wee bastard. And Aloth. Don't need the tentacles. Arcane Assault throws some support. Uh, Durant, keep leveling up your mace there, sir. Nicely done. I wish you no. You're not getting. I shall end this. <laughs> that one's paralyzed for so long. Palagina's just like poke, 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 dying. Uh, oh, so I'm doing some investigating. I was gifted a sub to Scizars, but I've never seen her stream. So I'm not sure who gifted it, but I saw you in chat on a video of hers. So I come here first to see what I can figure out. Well, yeah, um, I know Sarah. Uh, I've met her a few times. She's a great stream, absolutely lovely. And um, I, I try and watch her from time to time. She's often on a lot of times that cross over with other people I see in my own stuff. But what it can be the case is that you've either... What has happened is that you may have been... Considering you follow Redweird, due, due to when he goes on in the day, he's dropped her a raid the other the other day or the other week. I think it was last week. He raided her. Because he, he's met her now as well, um, since I did, uh, when we both went to Twitch London Winter. And she actually popped by and dropped him a follow. And I think um, he raided her. You may have been in the raid, but you might have been AFK. And uh, while you were AFK, you were automatically put into the raid. And then um, what's been going on recently, she's been doing a lot of Christmas themed... Hey, you! I need help! Uh, Christmas themed... Uh, oh, let's just do that. Christmas themed stream stuff. And she's got a really awesome, like, loyal follow base that have been doing uh, a lot of sub trains. She, she was opening up new emoji slots and, like, got an additional 200 subs in a bunch of sub trains from gifted subs. And they were anonymous ones in blocks, like 10... Uh, five at a time, ten at a time, and so on. So quite possibly you were in amongst that uh, unknowingly amongst a raid, and when the gifted subs come out in blocks, they randomly pick people. So my 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 hypothesis is that you were in Redweird's raid, you ended up in Scissor's channel in the middle of a sub train, and you got randomly selected amongst a gifted sub that went out to a block of people at the same time, and you got it for a month. So enjoy all those owls, because she's awesome. And we've got this fellow over here who seems to be a little bit stuck. So let's just quick save and he's, well, not so much stuck, he's clearly caught by an enchantment of some description. I'm here. All hey. right, well, we'll unstealth ourselves. I'm here. I mean, what happens, we'll talk to him. Benno. Oh, this is the chap we're looking for. No wonder he stormed off in a huff after the caravan got stuck, but now he's stuck at this altar. Uh, this man is half obscured by the riot of lights and sigils, um, or sigils emerging from the mud around him. He brings up an arm to shield his eyes, peering out at you. Benno. Oh, that's very interesting. He, you see, it's got brackets godlike after Benno's name. That's because I'm, um, my character's a godlike, and he's thinking that this kind of stuff he might have offended because godlikes have their own sort of little uh, rituals and things. So that's really nice that they acknowledged it. Well, that's probably likely. I did my, my, my find my phone dead after Red Stream. I forgot I had it on. Fair enough. It, it seems like the most likely thing because um, if you, uh, you're obviously you 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 you're on to Redweird Stream quite a bit. Um, and I remember seeing that, like, because I know Sis and Sarah, she's she, um, followed me and I've followed her since uh, Twitch London Summer. And um, now, she, now she knows Red better as well. Yeah, because I, I know that you see you, you're in there quite a bit. And um, yeah, I, I, but almost certainly you must have been in the raid then. Well, there you go. Lucky gifted sub. Uh, ah, shit. 
Look, I, I didn't mean to trespass or any of that. I just, he trails off squinting past the lights. Thanks, I knew you'd be helpful. Oh, well, thank you, Ditto Bunny. I appreciate you uh, assuming that. Wait, you're, you're no cultist. You're too clean. Um, are you Benno? What? Yeah, that's me. How did... Wait, did the hurler send you? Ha! Ah, I knew she wouldn't be entirely useless. Oh, you changed your fucking... Ch you do realise you're still trapped in a concentric ring of light, so maybe don't go off about your, your travelling partner who's not trapped in a concentric ring of lights because she's clearly smarter than you. Look, help me out. I've been stuck here for ages. This thing's some kind of wall. It's got to be some kind of spell, right? I don't know the first thing about magic. He presses his palms against what's to, what seems to be thin air to demonstrate. Well, our, our uh, main character's not a wizard, so we can't do anything that. Uh, two, I'll have a look around. Three, let me ask you something first. Four, not my problem. Five, you can rot here for all I care. <laughs> Craven the wise. I'm, <laughs> I'm far from it. I'll, I'll take a honorary detective Craven for the rest of the day. <laughs> um, let me ask you something first, because you're being a bit of a dick. What, what do you want to know? I'm stuck. Captive audience for your questions, I guess. Uh, do you feel any strange effects? No. Nope. Well, there's this whispering, I guess. I thought it was just more of those wizard types. He ships, he shifts uncomfortably, and that's all the questions I had. Good, great. Now, can you help me out? I'll have a look around. Great, thank you for this. You won't regret it. Why do I get the feeling I might? All right, task updated. Bogged down. Find a way to free Benno. It looks like Benno's fallen awry of a magical trap of some kind. He seems to think it has something to do with the locals. I may be able to find more clues nearby. You and Reg do a Fallout 76 stream together, like simultaneous streaming and play it together. Perhaps I'm I'm um plenty of people are doing Fallout seventy six. I'm not all that right. uh interested in it myself, I must admit. I mean I love the Fallout games, I love the Fallout series, but um it, it's fine to watch. I don't I'm not all I'm a bit afraid of getting into any MMO of something I really like so that uh, I don't end up being trapped by it. I don't own a copy of the game at the moment either and it's quite expensive to buy right now. But I will absolutely bear that in mind. I will before long. Uh, once I've finished up Darksiders 2, finally on the Catharsis stream, I do all the collectible malarkey and then um, I can do that rather than uh, flitting back to Borderlands 2. The next uh, story, the me next main Catharsis game of, of Mellow Out Mondays, as I'm thinking of rebranding it, uh, the next one of these sort of violent e action games, I'm going to be continuing Fallout New Vegas. I had a save from that from forever ago, and I'd made some progress, and it's like, it's the best of the modern Fallout games. So if you're into Fallout, I'll be doing some of that. I'll have to wait and see what my finances look like in the new year to see if I can afford Fallout 76. I would like to do some more co-op stuff. I'll, I'll make it... For, I, I did one a long time ago with um, Flemmer and then a few people from the audience. And a couple of folks have suggested some community streams. I, uh, I want to make sure they stay as a special thing, though. I, I can't roll them into being like a weekly um, community event. But every so often, I'd quite like to start doing um, stuff that everyone can take part in. The, the marble games are proving quite popular. Uh, what's this Sinking Ruin? Let me go into fast mode. I think I can turn off stealth for now, right there. I didn't realise that was a a named thingy. We hadn't been to this little corner yet. Aha! There's a body in the muck. How do we get in there, though? Beneath the water's murky surface lie worn engravings and ancient stones buried in the silt. Yeah, I agree. It's not that great compared to the other fallouts. I th I'm hoping it'll be one that grows in, because at the moment it seems to be sort of lacking, from what I can tell, because I haven't played it, I'm just going on what other people have said and what I've seen on other streams. It seems to be kind of lacking much of a lot to do. Um, a lot of the stuff that's staples of the Fallout lore. Oh, Durant has discovered something because we're scouted. Purple, like I mentioned earlier. Um, secret highlighted things. An enemy spotted bog cult acolyte. Oh, right. This would be that name. Oh, nice. It's just bonus treasure. Well, she can have that scroll and the other things can go in the stash. That's cool. That's very cool. There's another thing down there and a named thing there. 
Let's just whip that over into her quick slots. That's two scrolls of restore critical endurance. That's helpful. But yeah, I definitely want to get back into um, Fallout New Vegas. As that, that was actually done by these guys. I didn't realise at the time it was done by Obsidian. Um, so you know the story is just going to be wicked. Ah, and there's the way up into the sunken ruin. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll do this bit with the ruin first and see what we get. Oh, there's more bog cult assassin. All right. But they're just generally patrolling. Can we get round them? Apparently not. <laughs> Hello. Hey, don't stab the priest, you bastard. Right, Adair. Why can't you do into the fray already? Right. Durant's back away. Adair hit him. Craven come round on this one. Grieving Mother shoot at him. Aloth. Bow's vulnerabilities on both of them. Palagina. Onto him. That's better. What is he? Ah, uh, he's a rogue essentially, so he's going to be squishy. Oh, uh, they're both rogues. Okay, let's do a stunning blow. Palagina. Sworn enemy. Grieving mother. Let's. I'll just hang on. Interdiction. Let's get them nice and weakened and softened up. <laughs> Is a dare going to actually hit anybody? That would be kind of great. Right, that one's stunned and injured. Let's do detonate on him. Kablamo. What? And... On to you. Get wrecked. Perhaps rest is in order. Why? What's the matter? Nope, you're all super rock solid and completely fine. Oh, we, we found an egg. Hooray. <laughs> Some random bloody item to uncover. Alright. Fast mode. Actually, no. Fast mode back on. Sneak. I shall listen for them. Eyes open. Oh, and we've got um, a doodad over here, some dire cap. Let's go and explore these ruins. How do we get down into the water so we can check out that body? I, I, nothing I like more than the... Ah, here we go. Prodding a, a good dead body. Right. Aha! Um, these sinking walls are coated in grime and vegetation. Age and, age and muck have pried the stones apart. Thick vines are coiled all about the lower section of the wall, bristling with thorns. But there is a section just here where the vines are less dense. Let's see. I can aim for a clear spot and jump down. Hack away some of the vines. Climb down or use a rope for assistance. Well, I'll use a rope. I think I've got some in my backpack. Oh, idiot. Of course, Durant's fell, moron. The climb starts well enough, but a short way down, a slick stone fouls Durant's grip, sending them plummeting to the ground. With a sharp cry, Durant lands in an ungainly heap atop a mass of thorny brambles. You know what? Good. He's a dick. You find yourself before a large, rounded chamber flooded with water. Ah, that's okay, because his dexterity wasn't all that hot. What's he got there? He's got a, a wrenched knee. Uh, okay, that's pretty much the equivalent of getting knocked down and getting back up again. Nice and quiet. I get knocked down, but I get up again. You're never going to keep me down. Uh -huh. Well, firstly, let's see what Corpus what Corpus Face has to offer. Ooh. Aquan Giamas, a unique two-handed morning star. Speed slow. Superb. Spell chance, spell steal, and wounding. Whoa. That's got some fat stats on it. 25% chance to cast Spell Steal on hit or critical hit. And steal an 8th level wizard spell. Um, oh, steal foe target. Steal s 3 spells of level 5 or lower for 60 seconds. Damn. This morning star appears to be of anguish and make and likely owes its long survival to having been protected against the elements in a peat bog. 
Few Engwithen weapons have been found in any kind of usable condition since Direwood and Expeditions began searching their ruins, but this Morning Star is a rare exception. The weapon is composed of a bronze shaft and a head of living Adra. The grip is wound tightly with copper, and the spikes in the head are also fashioned from copper. Wow. And you can enchant it. That thing's... Who's that going to be good for? I mean, problem is it's two-handed. And those are the two people who use two-handed weapons have already got awesome soulbound weapons in those slots. Durant is tooled up, and he's got his soulbound scepter. Um, did you ever play Champions of Norath on PS2? No, I didn't. Um, I, I can't say. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, yeah, I didn't. Unfortunately. Yeah, even Craven's carrying a two-handed Warhammer now. Um. Palagina might have the lore to cast level 5 or lower spells. Oh, that summoned a couple. Ancient Wraith. They're going to be tough. And a Wailing Shade. Right, well, perfect. Palagina can deal with that. <laughs> I think it, I think it's a kind of game I'd like. Oh, you'd like... <laughs> Cool. Well, ditto. Um, put it in, in the Cravenstown streaming complex in Cravenstown. We've got the game suggestion uh, booth. So by all means, put it in there. Uh, if it's one that I can hook up, because I do have a PS2 here. Um, I'll look into that for sure. Right, you grab that. And Craven, take your god hammer and go and bash this one in the head. Okay, there's some mass paralysis going on. That's less than ideal. Uh, we'll expose vulnerabilities on them. Holy shit, they paralyzed a lot of us. Is Durant still paralyzed for only 1.6? That's not so bad. Craven is terrified. Right, we need a prayer against fear. That's right, they're all back up. Right. Um, grieving Mother isn't quite. We won't be able to use the scroll. Just do prayer against fear on all of us. Otherwise, it's going to be a bloody nightmare. There we are. We're all good again. We start hitting stuff again now. Right. Grieving Mother. Prestigitator's missiles. There. Idare. Into the fray. Let's pull her forward. Um, where's Palagina? You come up against this thing. And Durant's... Durant's is getting wailed on. Can he run to here? Barely. <clears throat> Alright, now then. I think he put Sworn Enemy on her, yeah. So one more Flames Devotion, it'll be dead. Ancient Wraith. And Craven's got, um, he can do his Torment's Reach. Grieving Mother, let's, uh, let's blow one of them up if we can. On this one, Aloth. Arcane Assault on the two of them. And then Durant's... Oh, hasn't got anything off yet. Interdiction. Bam. One left. See ya. Perhaps rest is in order. Wasn't so tricky. Right, Palagina, she's still got as a secondary weapon this amazing quest item. Uh, superb, Blade of the Endless Paths, a two-handed S-Stock. It's got bloody... It's superb. It's got shock damage, 25%. 10 accuracy granted to an ally attacking the same target. It's better as a two-handed tanking weapon. 5 damage reduction bypass and 20% attack speed. Whereas this thing, the Aquagimas, they're both superb. 25% chance to can't spell steal on hit or critical hit. 25% damage over time for 5 seconds. Oh, man. That's some really powerful weaponry. See, that thing's already fully leveled up. I'm tempted to, while we're running around doing this, switch... Switch to this for Craven. 
He won't do as much damage, but he'll level up his other one, and we'll just use the hammer later in the Kron's uh, thing once this one's fully maxed out. He's got his sword and shield. See, this thing at St. Edwin's Redeemer be revived during combat five times to unlock the next level. I don't know if it has to be equipped when that happens, but that's not going to happen very much anytime soon. I'm tempted, actually, to give Blade of the Endless Paths to uh, Adair. We'll take off Edwin's Redeemer for now, because up against all this stuff, we're not going to be revived. We'll put it back on um, once he's uh, up against tough enemies that might actually knock him out. And then we'll put... 18 to 26, 22 to 32 is hits really hard as well. 20 to 32. See, that one summons the spirits. That spell steel one's quite cool. <laughs> Look at that thing. That goes so well with her sort of green. What's she wearing here? The soulbound Riona's breastplate. She she looks like an ancient Engwithan bloody warrior. But we'll, we'll leave that one on for now because it summons all those random undead as a bonus. Anywho. Anywho. And I've pulled myself up again. There we go. Okay, we've got everything. How do we get through here? The bricks around these bars have crumbled away over the centuries, forming sizable gaps. A considerable drop awaits you on the other side, but the area below appears to be clear. Stay here a little longer. All right, that's if we just want to jump round and get through. Uh, not really. I want to come back this way, so... Or can we not... Okay. Is that our only way back out? All right then. Here's to be. Climb up. Yeah. All right, good. No, it's not. We can just come back that way. It was a trivial amount of like um, saving time, but saves running around quite so much. Oh, enemy bog cult acolyte over there. Uh huh. Oh, hello. Oh, you're trying to interrupt me. Yeah, good luck with that. Hang on. This is... Uh, they didn't notice their friends over there being brutally murdered. Um, Bogcult Apprentice, right? He's um, a priest or a mage. Bogcult. He's probably a priest and the Acolyte's probably a mage. Welcome to Destination Fucked. Right, well that interrupted him nicely. Actually, no it didn't. Oh Christ, Aloth got absolutely nailed by that beam of frickin' doom. Less of that. Bastards, how dare you. Uh, Durant, do Devotions of the Faithful right there. Grieving Mother. Go and blow up the Acolyte right now. You need to take a second wind. Right, let's knock one of them down. Zoom in a bit. There we are. Who's tired? Slightly interesting start. Exceptional wand. Ooh, Apprentice's Tome. Um... Get that onto Aloth. Infused with Vital Essence again. Nothing he doesn't already know. Which is pretty typical at this point in the game. Uh, oh, this is like an interactive story. Uh, interactive choose your own ending. <laughs> that takes me back to the whole play your own adventure things. I um, I still got copies of my Steve Jackson and Livingston uh, books, Fighting Fantasy. Loved all that stuff. Margarine's fire. Goldberg's been doing uh, quite a lot of um, playable, sort of interactive story stuff. All right, so there's some crates over there, but I want to get to uh, let's speed things up now. This area is clear. Get that blood moss and whatever this is. Looks like a giant slice of cheese. 
Oh, copper owl. 50 copper owls is worth two copper pans. That's, that's a Zimbabwean bloody exchange rate, that. Alright, a couple of useful potions. Not going to sniff at them. Uh, Bog Cult Apprentice. Okay. Let's just check where we are at the map. So there's another bridge back across to that side of things. This is going to end poorly for you, sir. We have a barbarian. He'll literally be a barbarian. And what is he doing? Uh, Eldritch Aim. So... Flagellant's Path. How many wo oh, he needs three wounds for that. We can't inflict them quickly enough. Uh, Palagina. Take him out. Actually, no. Don't spend your um, sworn enemy just yet. Just come forward. Let's see what else we're up against. Alright, nothing. We can interdict them both just. Uh, Aloth, our wizard here. Uh, get some tentacles up over there, just to something a little bit different. And a grieving mother, bam. He's as good as dead. These ones are in for a walloping. Oh, he just did that dragon leap, dude. Oh, our tentacles are all confused. <laughs> That's a perfectly normal sentence in um, Pillars of Eternity. Ah, my tentacles are all confused. Cast a confusion spell on uh, the tentacles we summoned. Why is he... Oh, he's got minor fatigue. Oh, that's why he keeps saying, is anyone tired who's tired? He can't get 100% of his fatigue back. Be cautious. Be constant. Be cautious, be constant. You always say that. Hmm. Okay, we seem to be getting towards some more established kind of whatnots. We cross over. It says look around. We've got to help this guy in the ritual circle, but I guess we'll come back for that. He's not going anywhere. Oh, what's down here? More weird tubular things that are stinking out, pushing out stinking gas. What's this? The plumes of gas ejected by these vents. Ah! Ah! This seems to be the way the cool kids say hi. Yes, they are very cool. As are you, Piney. Thank you very much to the 75 biddies, God. And oh, welcome, Citizen Piney. It's good to see you, man. How you doing? Um, on a little earlier, I've been going since about 4.30. I'm thinking to uh, do earlier Sundays, or at least see how they are, see if they're more or less popular, and so on. How's your weekend been, mate? What have you been up to? And once again, thank you for the shit-causing bitties. Do love the runny bum fudge. Okay, so we have a wee line of cultists here waiting for me to show up, not realising... <laughs> We've got, like, nothing to hide behind, no shelter whatsoever. I'm just stealthing along. Right, so there's that. We'll cross over the bridge on this side. This seems to be the sort of encampment um, where this nemesis is going to be. Now, I have heard talk of a bog dragon. And we are in what is very clearly a bog. If, if there's some dragon action going on here, I'll be... Uh, that would be pretty cool. Alright, we we'll, should be able to get straight past that acolyte, acolyte there. With That one, not so much. And there's a trap. Now right. this I Let's unstealth ourselves and dare to now. Craven back this way. Right, you're already wrecked, so let's try and blow him up. 
Palagina come to here as well to deal with that onrushing assassin. And you two Egypt's back that way. What the hell? What on earth is that? It's a stag made of fire. Weekend is good thus far. Made some hot cross... Oh, wonderful. Hot cross buns. With one of my sons yesterday. Got a, a karate class in. Today, Grandma visited the boy. Oh, that sounds like a wonderful weekend. Family time. Cooking time. Active exercise and self-defense. And getting to be vi visited and spoiled by Grandma. Marvellous. I'm well. I've uh, had a quiet, quiet Friday. And... Um, a very fun sort of comedy evening on uh, Saturday. A friend of mine of, of 20 odd years came by to visit uh, for the afternoon and evening. And uh, we were in the pub for most of that, which was A-OK -okay with me. And uh, yeah, we did that in my local sort of nearby here. Oh, Craven's been stunned. That won't do. So we sat there drinking and then it was a, um, oh dear, grieving mother is being uh, accosted and molested. How big's that stag? Not so tough. Let's do a, will flames of devotion hurt that thing? I have no idea. You come down here. All right, Craven is now unstunned. And yeah, it was it, it was um, in a brewery. It was in uh, Twickenham Fine Ales Brewery. It was this... Uh, and it wasn't sort of like a, like a gentrified or fancied up kind of place. It was just literally a fully functioning brewery, spitting not spitting sawdust, but you know, you know, as rough as you like. Just, um, just, uh, yeah, a place that was like a corrugated iron roof. It had the vats in it. it had, um, and they just had this little thing that they did on the side, which was this sort of comedy uh, bit. Uh, this this group called Brewery Comedy, and they go around and they do it in breweries. Uh, and yeah, they had four pretty decent, um, four pretty decent uh, comics up there. So I had a good laugh. Got back in, got myself some takeout. Uh, circa eleven o'clock. It was uh, it was awesome. I love I love a good night out, and comedy's comedy's always good fun, and it's so cheap. It's like four quid a ticket to go and do uh, all of that jazz. Let's get some devotions of the faithful. Craven, if you want to actually feel like punching anyone, that would be a great shout. What was sworn enemy on this, EJ? Nice attempt to feign death. Who's tired? That's it's good. Me? Yeah, it was great. It really was fun. It was a very fun weekend. And then, yeah, got this afternoon gaming. I'm thinking if, if uh, I can next week, I might even do this if I get up Good. in time, sort of from about one okay. thirty-two in the afternoon. So the latter part is as the uh, American members of Craven's Town are up and about. But yeah, I'm thinking um, with what I've got coming up Sunday evenings, my, my weekday evenings is one thing because I've got to work during the day, but it's nice to be able to sort of do something on an afternoon. And oh, wow. Failed to disarm a trap, even though I've got a, a buff of plus two mechanics already. Alright, we can't really safely go that way just yet then. That's annoying. Actually, you know what? We're looking a bit worse for wear. I think we will camp here at this point. Keep those same bonuses. Hopefully we can clear this area out. And um, well, we've made a lot of progress so far, so I'm going to drop a proper save in rather than a quick save. So the last one was at the very start of the stream. Um, I have a pub date scheduled with my mate for a day during the week of Christmas. No comedy, but lots of beer and chicken wings consumed. Ah, I can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. I'm. Uh, I ended up having a venison burger for lunch yesterday, which was great at my local um, pub. There's really good food. Uh, and we had these triple cooked chips that are just, oh, they're lush. And they're like thick wedges as well. Um, but they also do uh, ribs. 
as a special on the menu and I haven't had a good rack of ribs in a little while so quite keen to get myself there once more before I go because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back home to my mum's place for uh, a week I might st I'll still try and bring my laptop and do some streams but it'll it'll be a bit of a different setup I'll be back on the um, the headset microphone the one that's a bit less good uh, while I do so try and one thing I need to order is a Ethernet to USB-C port because my laptop doesn't actually have an Ethernet port on it amazingly enough bloody Razer gaming laptop and doesn't have uh, something that simple I think the USB uh, the Ethernet ports are too thick uh, for these slim gaming laptops that are all the rage now oh nice we managed to get at that with a scroll of prayer against treachery I think that's for her Blackson, which is a fun drug. It's a Sonreed liquor. And Gold Rot Chew. I just never bother with the various drugs and, and in, enhancements in this game. Okay, can we just de stealth everyone who's still currently hidden? Likewise, Yao. That's, have you got a thing where um, your friends, folks, still piney, still like live around the same local area? So when you, if you go back to see them, or you're having a family thing in the same area, like a lot of your old friends from years ago are suddenly back around a little bit. Because it's always nice when that happens. Right, we can interrupt the apprentice. We've got a uh, another caster, a, what looks to be an acolyte apprentice, two kinds of mage, and then um, a rogue equivalent running in. So you charge that way. You come and meet him. And Craven come this way. Whoa, what the fuck? Right, that bog cult al acolyte has just turned into a... a Stagator? Like a Minotaur, but a giant druid stag. It looks very cool. Bloody hell. Very, very cool, but Christ on a bike. He's uh, looking a tad more formidable than I was quite prepared for. Oh! And they're bringing their mates, right? We've got a, oh, a summoner, right? That's going to be the equivalent of a chanter. Uh, I think we'll have the grieving mother come that way and dominate him. Durant can come forward to here, as can Aloth. Right, as they won't have noticed, they'll be focusing on the melee guys for a while. My wife and I actually live in the town. We both respectively grew up in. Oh, lovely. Getting together during the week of Christmas is more a matter of all us having time off from work and anything else. Yeah, yeah, fair, absolutely. Right, let's um, bollock against the element elements. We don't need that. One per rest. Per rest, that's per encounter. We'll fire that one off in a minute. This one might be a bit uh, bigger. A uh, bit of a longer fight. So let's get Puppet Master on the go and do it on the summoner. Right, Aloth. You can now do exposed vulnerabilities on a shitload of them. Endurance. Oh yes, we can click. I love the range of the AoE of uh, Interdiction. It's so effective. Alright, Nadir. He's up against that apprentice who's already injured. Let's knock him down. Palagina. Let's take on the Acolyte. Because Craven can off tank relatively well. That's sworn enemy on him. Craven, this is good for him because he'll be generating a good amount of wounds. That Bog Cult Assassin, let's uh, kick the acolyte who's transformed and decided to go all melee. Decided to go a bit medieval on our ass. Excellent. We got that one dominated. Next. Um, Prestigitator's missile. We've got a second summoner here. Oh, it didn't take. Damn it. He, sh he shrugged it off. We started attacking uh, too soon, it looks like. Alright, Craven's got 10 wounds on him. Adair really needs to start tanking a bit more. Pull that one. As Craven can now do his uh, dichotomous soul, which is ludicrously good. It requires like 8 wounds. What the hell? Bog Cult Assassin. Oh, you, you want to summon tentacles? We're going to have a tentacle off? 
We're going to make this a hentai fight. Bring it. Let's see if we can do a... Right, Craven really needs to back away from some of that shit. Now, if he can pummel this one and get enough time to cast... Right, Durant's... Uh, Devotions of the Faithful. Let's get it on these Egypts. Pally, the, the tentacles can't move, so let's... um. Let's get him around. Oh, stop running away, you bloody coward. Right, uh, he's trying to get onto Adair, fair enough. See, Adair's currently surrounded. I want to make those tentacles redundant, so... Adair, get around to here. Right, now the tentacles can have a slap fight. That's kind of hilarious, actually. Um, Durant is around there. Where's Palagina gotten to? She's got enough focus again, so let's try for the domination again. Oh, on this one. Right, and that one's stunned for point six. Craven start doing dichotomous soul. There we go. Right. He's now summoned two duplicates of himself. And can do a torment's reach on her. And then you guys can start the fire and ice craven duplicates can go and start interrupting. Um, this one. Right, that time the domination stuck for 23 seconds. Grieving Mother. Uh, another 12. Just keep shooting him back. Right, Almos over there. Durant's. Uh, Palagin is using the wrong weapon. Oh, no, she's not. Hit that one. Uh, Aloth, get away from the tentacles. Same for Durant's right. Despondent blows. Let's soften up these four until they disappear. Damn it, he, how has he shrugged off the domination again? Never mind. Keep shooting that one down. Aloth. Come forward. Whoa, we've got a bog cult barbarian decided to join in. That's rather fun. Cook them with some fire. Craven's doing fine. Except he does need a bit more endurance. Hit your second wind. And again, let's do a Flame's Devotion on that one. Oh, one of the tentacles is paralysed. Adair is dazed, so... That thing's still not down. Let's try and do a knockdown on it. Let's Craven Duplicate can go against the Barbarian. That's better. He's got a bit more endurance. Um, he's used his Lord's thingy. Does this Berrigan's Battle Horn work anywhere? Let's find out. It's supposed to only be in uh, the canyon, but can we summon three bloody ogres? That would be quite funny. Right, that acolyte's near death. Let's get Palagina finishing him off. The dare in the meantime, avoiding the tentacles. Excellent, right, that's them down. Durant's get the hell away from them. Idare. Come round against the barbarian if you can. Palagina, don't waste your time. You come round here. Right, and Craven's freed up as well. Oh, the rogue decided to jump. Yeah, uh, phew, Torment's Reach. That apprentice is badly injured. Palagina, nail the apprentice. That bog cult barbarian's going. Aloth, paralyze the barbarian. Uh, Durant's. Durant's come up the middle. She's got 30. Let's see if we can land another domination. Okay, that one's nearly dead. Right, those two are free. 
Let's put one more knockdown on the mage, and Craven can come round to about here. Right, Aloth, get away from being sickened. Durant, stop getting pulled in against the tentacles. All right, now Durant can do Holy Radiance, keep everyone topped up as our endurance is getting a bit slapped all over the place. And let's summon some skeletons there to flank the Barbarian. Craven's got a shit ton of wounds, so let's do the Long Pain. And then start. Great, that's summoned right. We've got a White on the go. We've got an additional Skeleton on the go. We've got a couple more Skeletons. And we can do Consecrated Ground. And an Arcane Assault. Should nail those guys. Idair in there. Panagina in there. We've got this. Oh, the Skeleton got paralyzed. Breathing Mother. Human Skeleton. Adair, what have you got left? Do into the fray. Pull him onto you. Craven, get around to here. Actually, Durant's get into there. Craven, get around to there. And start wailing on him. And this little white. Little white. Little drummer bastard. Go up against the tentacle. Okay. And then this Bog Cult Summoner. Can't do jack. He's still dominated for another 4.8 seconds, so Adair at the front. Craven on this side. Durant's round the back, and Palagina here. Oh, there we go, and Palagina here. Half a second. And he will go splat. Are they just going to fade away and die any time? How may I help? <laughs> Are the tentacles just going to stay there and keep us stuck in combat? Like, do we actually have to kill them off? Oh, for goodness sake. Shed no blood. I shall deal with this one. My mind feels sharp as steel. That's it. Oh, it's ended, that's brilliant. It's ended up dominating one. They're having a tentacle off. It's like a giant Cthulhu version of a thumb war. <laughs> All right. Deal with this one. Shed no blood. Some hardy tentacles. Yeah, normally they fade away after a certain amount of time. That's it. There we go. Oh, Jesus. That's ridiculous. My tentacles bloody disappear um, after a certain amount of... Okay, deal with 700 damage uh, with the War Club of Mataru. I don't know what added to it next, but cause the weakened affliction 20 times to unlock the next level. So that's leveling up nicely. Um, far from being... Before it fell into Valian hands, this club passed from Mataru to Mataru within the Wahiki tribe. According to the priests of the tribe, the club belonged to a single soul and each wielder was a reincarnation of the same, uh, that same spirit. Far from being typical of Huana traditions, the this marked the bearer of the club as someone expected of great things. It's got some rather cool bonuses on it now. It's very quick as well. The ten percent chance to cast hobble on every hit and now weaken as well. Riona's breastplate. Oh, oh, that's very cool. Look at this. Riona's Breastplate. Rest in the Alpine Dragon's Lair after it has been slain. So to max this thing out, you have to have killed the toughest boss in the entire game, which we've already done. Whoa. Grants Triumph of the Crusaders every encounter when your endurance goes below 50%, which is 200 endurance per kill. That's mental. Because we found this in the Alpine Dragon's Lair. Damn, man. Well, we're going to head back that way and certainly rest up there. Hey. Level it. That's so awesome. Right, we'll grab all this malarkey. And that can all go in the stash. That was a good wee scrap, but we're still oh, face rolling all this. I'm wondering, though, if this is the bog in question. It's the first proper bog we've come across. Oh, some hardy tentacles indeed.
Hmm. Okay, ah, oh, that's a cultist settlement. All right. Is there anything else around here that we've... Uh... <laughs> Jesus. I've, I've come across some impressive sort of cult ruins and whatnot. This does not rank amongst them, or cultist locations and hangouts and secret societies. And they're just like in the middle of the goddamn swamp, li living like a bunch of Louisiana inbreds. My thoughts will be as silent as my feet. Okay, so we can cross that way over or this way over, but we're getting into the last little portion of uh, whatever it is that's bringing us here. Let me let me just remind folks and myself. I've got to find a way to free Benno. Find more clues nearby. We'll have to we'll have to check out around him. Possibly more in the sink I think perhaps in the sinking ruins most likely. Or maybe that little rock circle. Otherwise it might be in this last quarter. But the fact it's a task rather than a full quest and it says clues nearby, I think merits a more thorough search. And what are you? Bog cult barbarian. I think it's high time we show ourselves. Bam. Oh, there's lots. More barbarians and more... Jesus Christ, some of these are really big. Oh, they're Almer, that's why. That's why they're so heavily muscled and ginormous. Right. Palagina and Craven, get up front before you get trapped. Ah, shit. One of them just dashed around us and found the squishies at the back. Okay, um, Adair can tank this one. Craven can come straight around and start hassling the casters, so go and pummel the... Is he an acolyte? I don't know which... I don't know with acolytes, like, which one's a priest and which one's a mage. Um, that one's a mage. He's about to try and turn one of us into a form of the helpless beast. I think Palagain is going to have to do a 180 and help this lot. Right, Durant's... Squish the rest of them. Aloth, likewise. Exposed vulnerabilities on most of them. Ah, you know what? No. Very easy solution to this. Puppet Master. Let's put him on side and bring her that way. Oh, where did he go? Oh, Durant has somehow in invisibled himself. Well, we su certainly successfully dominated her and it seems to have gone away. Right, Adair can do into the fray to make sure this Egypt, this Dragon Leap, doesn't cause us too much grief. What's our Bog Cult Chanter? Uh, Palagina can make short work of him. We've got one pummel on the go. Craven's got no wounds yet. We've got as yet three unmolested casters. Okay, can she get to here? Not easily. You know what? Come back to about there. That one's stunned. Um, 25. She can start... Can she reach this one? Yeah, she can. Start building up focus on that unhassled target. Adair can tank two at the minimum. So you come this way. Uh, that's Palagina will take on this bog cult Al acolyte in the middle of the screen. And Aloth. Now, you've got a whole range of little tricks. You still haven't finished casting... Oh yeah, you have. Exposed vulnerability is already activated. Uh, looks like we're blinded. No, we're terrified. Right. Uh, I know what you can do. You have scrolls. No, you don't have prayer against fear scrolls. Right, that's going to be... We're going to have to do uh, prayer against fear this way. Must be, I think that must be a barbarian's yell doing it. Cast it on that lot. There we are. Hmm. Right. Craven's nearly got that one down. He might... He hasn't got enough wounds to do his um, soul split thingy. The Barbarian is currently dominated for 15.9 seconds. That's rather good. We've got so many little additional uh, domination abilities uh, built into our in our weapons and whatnot now. Let's knock this one down, because he's about to do his enrage. No, he's already got his frenzy up. Shit, that's a problem. Durant, stop trying to fight the barbarian who's fully frenzied. You will fall down faster than a sack of wet shit. But do holy radiance. 
Something powerful just kicked off. I just can't tell what it is. Oh dear. Um, Aloth is looking like he's facing the uh, Barbarian. Adair really needs to do into the fray on him again. And Aloth... You can come round to me. What the frick was that? Alright, we summoned another stag made of fire. They got some rather interesting abilities. Okay, there's a lot of shit going on. I can't tell at all at the moment. <laughs> okay, this is rapidly going insane. Uh, I'm not actually in all that much danger. Right, Durant is over there and he's stunned. Human skeleton we just summoned is somehow just got summoned is a be by Palagina's sword. Palagina here is fine. That one's dead. Uh, Palagina run forward and deal with these frickin' apprentices. Craven likewise go up against this Oc acolyte. Back, you know what? Turn around and deal with that chanter. It dares now over here, but he's tanking a stag and a bog cult barbarian. Let's just get a. Oh, sorry. I'm getting some serious. That that's not frame drops from the stream. That is just the amount of effects and things that are kicking off right this second, are uh, proving a little problematic for my system. <laughs> like. Okay, I've got to figure out who's doing all these AoE stuns that's literally stunning us all, because we're starting to get stun-locked to death, and that's not cool. Okay. He's got his, um... Alright, we've, we've still got our AoE endurance up. Adair's got a flame shield. I forgot how that kicked off. Holy ball sacks. Good job we're a tough party. We'll be getting wrecked by now. Some enormous ice spike things just popped up. Okay, we're zoomed in, Max. Expose vulnerabilities. Um, that Barbarian's nearly dead. We've got another couple who are basically unhurt. This is mental. Um, Al I can't charge through because Aloth and the Grieving Mother are in the way. I don't know how Adair ended up getting swapped. It must have been a rogue. <laughs> It means you can't tank anything. Aloth. Uh, yeah, right, you know what? Enough of this. We need to start bringing out some of the big guns. Some of what We're doing all of this with per encounter abilities only. Console House crushing doom on that barbarian. Grieving Mother has 54. Uh, detonate that barbarian. Right, Durant's is back up. What's he got in his backpack of tricks? Carouse, one per encounter. No. Right, we're going to use a boiling spray at the very least. Let's cook a couple of these bastards. That stag's turning around and kicking Craven in the head. Always fun. Oh, he's actually as yet somewhat unmolested. Do your dichotomous soul trick. There we go. We've got them up at the very least. We're running out of endurance tricks here. Okay, 0.2 seconds stun, but Craven duplicates up. And that stag's injured. That stag is wasting my time. Oh, Aloth's nearly down. Shit. Um, he's stunned for two and a half seconds. Uh, is the grieving mother? Oh, sh oh, she's not stunned. Not enough focus. Huh? Didn't she just trigger it? Alright. Unless someone stole all her focus. I should be... That thing's nearly dead. Um, that's what I want, is her to do a restore critical endurance in this massive insanity. Damn it, there goes Aloth. Okay, this is starting to become a little problematic. I'll have to do a sworn enemy in this direction. Um, that barbarian still... Alright, hit him. 
and you hit him. Grieving mother, uh, still do your scroll. He wasn't fast enough in time. Right, there's fine. Do it there. Okay, she needs to take care of herself. Right, Durance. What have you got left in your trick bag? Oh my god, you got everything. Despondent blows, at the very least, there. Actually, no, that's not... What's more important is, um... You definitely need to cast a, uh... Restore critical endurance as well. And then Palagina needs to do her... Reviving exhortation. I have no idea where Aloth is, but on him... This is insane. Grieving Mother, do your second wind. Where the hell is a dare? A dare, you can do one more charge and nail this Egypt. Okay. Right, that's got everyone in better shape who was in that general region. She's still getting kind of crushed. Right, you just run back. And do you have anything? No, you don't. Blessing, right. Bless that lot. Durant's do... I just told you... No, I didn't. Um, devotions for the faithful. <clears throat> that stag's still not dead. Acolyte. Chanter, Barbarian... They're not going down very easily. You do Vigorous Defense. Halagina... She actually cast that thing, yeah. Aloth's back up, brilliant. Where is he, though? Somewhere rather problematic. Cast Tentacles. You stop going into places that are nailing your endurance, you stupid bitch. Right, shoot the barbarian and build some focus. Um, Durant's again. Consecrated ground. Oh, what the hell. I don't care about the stag. Stunned with the lightning. That's fine. Start interrupting him. Flames devotion. Um, Craven's still alright, it's just his health. Torment's reach. Deal with that acolyte. Aloth, get the hell away from the barbarian. Oh crap, he's stunned. Adair, have we got any into the fray? No, try and knock down on the barbarian. Craven's stunned against the acolyte. Right, Durant's do despondent blows on this lot. <laughs> Ooh, goodness me. Right, he got away. Not a second too frickin' soon. You do your second wind. You can't. Prestigitator's missiles. Who's weak? Badly injured. Do it on them. Right, that one's actually getting hurt now. I dare try again for the knockdown. Oh no, the barbarians are already prone. No, cancel that. What's any of this stuff? Is that Purr Encounter or Purr Rest? Torrent of Flame. Now that's going to cook everyone else. Dragon's Breath, Purr Rest. Firebrand. Oh, that's all on the back end of his weapon. So it's all Purr Rest, Purr Rest. Purr Rest, yeah, fine. I think she'll actually need to use... Um... Let's put... That one's badly injured. That one's injured. That one's injured. Craven, do a force of anguish so he can't stun you again. Should have used it sooner. That's better. Damn it, barbarians found us again. Right, let's try and do an emergency domination. 
Puppet Master on this one and do a quick Grimoire Slam just in case. That's better. Do you have any potions? You don't. Um, Minilotus Concussive Missiles in that general direction would be fine. How long has he dominated for? 24.1, right. Okay, and that one's now running in as well. Um, Adair, can you not hold on to any target? Come and knock this one down. She hasn't got the focus now. Go away. Damn it. Oh, it's the last one left. Okay. Except for, right, we need to have a backup tank coming towards this barbarian. And Craven. Craven, come round to here. We gotta take better care of that. Did Aloth go down again? How? Right. Yes. Do the double on him. There we are, he's nearly dead. And the rest of you just come down this way. How did Alof go down again? Better. Bloody hell, that was... I'm starting to get some challenging fights again. Hello. I don't think we ever actually got that console house crushing doom away. And we're going to rest up anyway, so let's do a quick cleansing fame. Where is it? Um, revive the fallen over there. There we are. So we finished the fight properly with everyone standing. Yes. Jesus Christ, look at that. Bloody health levels and fatigue levels. That was a decent scrap. Hey. Oh. Have to admit, I made a bit of a pig's ear of that one. Um, I didn't take it seriously. I was still trying to do it with, as you saw, 90-95% with per encounter abilities and leaving all my heavy artillery. Um, it was like, ah, it's alright, it's alright, it's easy, it's easy. Doing that usual gamer no claims bonus thing, like, oh, I'll save all my big stuff for something even tougher. It's like, why? So I think at this point, we'll rest again. This is a interestingly difficult area. I think a quick save. Right, that's uh, got rid of everyone's troubles and tribulations. Uh, right, now where to next? Just this little bit of the corner left. We're done with a good chunk of the uh, campsite, right? Stealth and fast mode. Oh, and a trap. And the fire shows me something new. Still not good enough to disarm it, which and that's the only way. Th no, it's not the only way through to that area. Right, we'll come back and do this last corner in a second. Um, let's see what's in this little patch. Uh huh. Oh, now that's going to be one of those um, shortcuts through the thicket. Let's see what it has to say. A wall of thick vines rising from the mud of the bog. They grow on unnatural twining cords, bristling with thorns. There are gaps between the vines. Maneuvering through will take some care and time. Nah. I've had a few of these like vine scenarios that before. Be so let's do it the honest way. We'll bypass that weed trap. And walk along this bridge instead, which will probably take us through a couple more scraps, but whoop de doo, we're fully rested up again. My thoughts will be as silent as my Aha. Uh -huh. Another bog cult assassin. Another bloody trap. Alright. Let's come back this way. Why 
quite why they couldn't line up normally. How may I help? Hey. Uh, de-stealth everybody. Right, right, and let's then. have a dare come and... Hello. Hello. See, I bet they don't trigger their trap. That's bullshit. Oh, it's just a couple of regular assassins. Okay, now we can turn around and nail them. Okay. There you go, right. They're being tanked nicely. Craven and Palagina. Sworn enemy. Pummel. And Flames of Devotion. That sworn enemy really hurts some hard. So anyone actually going to target that one? Let's uh, knock her down and you go back that way, please. Okay, now on to her. Oh, she's not going down as quick as we thought. Right, that's better. Uh, getting past the trap. Um, well, it dares the toughest. So. Uh, that's fine. Oh, that's a pretty harmless trap as it goes. <laughs> Jesus. Hey. Trap infestation of spiders. Oh, that's why it missed him. Infestation of spiders. I guess that's like a hallucinogenic trap of some of description. I don't know. I never notice when I'm sinking on this thing. Okay, let's re stealth and fast mode. Yeah, it's going to be a few more. It's quite, it's quite a sizable cultist compound. What was the actual quest? So that's bogged down. That's, that's a little task within it. But yeah, the phylactery's promise. I've reached a boggy expanse of wilderness that matches the area I saw in the scout's memory. It's a desolate place. Seek out your enemy. A violent scout was brought down by the town guards, but not before she was observed demanding information as to my whereabouts. Okay, and there's at least four more, probably others running in. Um, Alright, he's gone stag boy mode. Charge, see if we can get a couple. He's going to drag and leap. Okay, so that's exposed the others. Right, that dragon leap has landed in amongst the, um... It's left a daze on us. And Alos, okay. Palagina can go put a sworn enemy on this one, and Craven can pummel this one. That's actually worked out quite well, tanking-wise. There's a bog cult assassin flanking him, so I'll put on vigorous defense for now. Right, that's that done. Oh, there's another one prancing forward. Yeah, less of that. What the hell? Oh, fuck, damn it. It dare has been transformed into a helpless little piggy. Damn you! Bloody polymorph, whatever it is. Right, I think at this point then we should open up a domination. Puppet master this Egypt. Uh, Craven. You can actually do force of anguish. And Aloth, maybe get away from the giant barbarian. Palagina, second flames of devotion. Aloth from there, expose vulnerabilities on these two. Excellent, and that one should run off and maybe help. It dares getting the shit beaten out of him. We'll have to go and help out shortly. Right, Devotions of the Faithful, most of the party's here. Let's put it on there. That Devotions of the Faithful just missed fucking everybody. That was really badly handled. 
Uh, whoa, I don't know how that endurance attack hit quite so hard, but it really did. Uh, Craven, take that one on. Durance, do an immediate Holy Radiance. Palagina's okay. Come and help that one out. Grieving Mother, you have... Oh, God damn it! Didn't I give you scroll of critical injury? Oh, she used them all up, didn't she? Um, let's do... Amplified Thrust. Stay being sapped by that thing. Right, and now our dominated one, who's dominated for another 20 seconds, is going after the Bog Cult Apprentice. That helps. Who's this? Arcanist Badrin. Okay, we have a boss, or at least a named NPC. How long is it there stunned for? 0.2. Point right, that nailed him good and hard. And Craven's back up, and that last one's down. Oh shit, Durant's hit the deck though. That's problematic. Alright, Palagina is going to take that one on. Grieving Mother, Prestigitator's Missiles. Um, actually, you know what? Palagina, nah, Craven, come back and take that one on. Palagina, do your reviving exhortation on Mr. Durant's here. And Aloth, come and shoot some tentacles. Right about there, because eventually that one will become undominated and then it's a problem. Right, Adair, you could do with a uh, second wind, actually. Right, and that's Durant's back up. Excellent. He didn't, oh, he didn't get Devotions of the Faithful off. That's a plus. Right, just come forward to about here. Uh, that one's still dominated for another 16.8. That's loads. And Palagina, do lay on hands on yourself. Aloth has Triumphs of the Crusaders going, and he critted with it as well. That's nice. And Craven's covering the ground like a ludicrous animal. Um, all right. Durant's forward to here. Uh, Grieving Mother forward to here. Palagina forward to here. Right, and... Where's he gone? Where's he gone? Durant's to about there. Now he can do Triumph of the Crusaders with a considerably better effect. There we go. That should get all of us. Um, Craven's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Assassin. Let's have him do a Pummel. Try and stun her out. He's doing Rectus Assault. Arcanist is stunned. Let's actually knock him down. We're in much better shape now. Bogkull Acolyte. Apprentice. Oh, the Bogkull Acolyte's been... Do oh, he's still dominated. He's just he's lost his stag form. Okay. Right. Durant can now do Despondent Blows. Um, on them. And Aloth. Uh, I don't know. Arcane Assault that way as well. And Durant's Holy Radiance, let's just top us all off. Oh! Tentacles versus tentacles. The Arcanist did it again. Alright. Kick him in the head. We're going to have to kill those tentacles as we learned the last time. Hmm. Bogcourt Acolyte still being kept busy. Palagina, what are you doing right now? Not helping anybody. Uh, punch him. Punch the apprentice in the face. This mage with the red glowing here. And Aloth. Ba -da -da -da. Let's paralyze these and sicken the others. That's better. Right, that's that one down. Durance may be... Oh, Durance is currently confused, but only for 0.4 seconds. Craven do Torment's Reach on her. 
you move out of range of them. That's better, you move out of range of them. Oh no, those are ours, those are ours, damn it. I did that wrong, I should have... I should have put it on. I should have put the sickness thing on uh, their tentacles. That got very confusing. That was very annoying. Uh, but a bit of... Right, there. Put a knockdown on this cultist. Oh, ah, Bog Cult Acolyte. No. Palagina's got that one. You go and take this one. Aloth, run away from the hurty lady. An arcane assault this slot. Craven's got do your There we go, right. We can put one of dichotomy of spirit on each of them and beat the snot out of them. Um and put despondent blows on them as well. In the meantime, shoot them, shoot them. And goodness thing, that bog cult acolyte's got to die shortly. Finally. Oh. Now oh, the cult is making us work for our supper. And again, we're taking quite a lot of um, health I'm damage in. there. Let's do some field triage on Craven. Oh, of course he got knocked out. What did he get? Bruised ribs. Minus four constitution. That's not great. Hey, Silver Magpie. How you doing? And hello, Sir Square. There always yes. is. There always is. Oh, excellent. Camping supplies and scroll of prayer against imprisonment. Who's carrying that normally? Um, oh, Badrin's Notes. This is a quest item. Not bad. I'm very well, thank you, Magpie. Um, yeah, coming on a little bit earlier with today with this. Well, actually, not by now. This would be about when I normally start. But I've been experimenting from this week and onwards with an earlier start on Sundays. I don't normally have a day to myself to sort of do the stream. A great weekend. Nice, quiet Friday. Caught up on a few things. And as a, a comedy night last night, I just read uh, uh, Badrin's notes and carry on. This weathered piece of parchment holds a series of nearly ineligible notes and what appears to be some kind of diagram. The series of symbols the series of symbols lines the periphery of a crudely drawn circle. One particular set of five symbols has been repeatedly circled. Excellent. That'll be a quest item of some description. And some camping supplies. Marvellous. Addendum added bogged down. Oh right. So this'll be uh I found I found a note on the corpse of a wizard describing some of the symbols around the ritual circle. Perhaps this will help me get Benno out of the trap. Excellent. And really, it said look around locally, regionally. It's on the other side of the map. Um, you're the kindest streamer I ever met. Well, thank you, Sir Square. I know you dropped a follow earlier, and uh, quite a few weeks ago. It's nice to see you coming back and hanging out, man. I appreciate it. And I hope you had a good weekend. And yeah, mine, um, the Saturday night, one of my oldest friends, uh, one of my very, very oldest friends from um, uh, school. I've known him since 1996. Uh, he popped down. He hasn't been able to come by to uh, see me on this side of London for a while, but he had a sort of free evening. We haven't had a chance, him and I, one-on-one. -on -one. And Ross the Kettle, excellent name. Hello to you. Welcome. Thank you for joining the stream. Thank you, everyone. He's popping up old and new friends to say hello. I appreciate it. Um, we uh, it was a he he found a comedy night because I live in West London and um, well Cra Craven's Town is situated it's its own little district within West London obviously and um, he found his comedy night sort of local comedians a, a little bit of local stand up on this thing that tours through breweries of all places and Twickenham has its own little uh, its own little brewery and um, Twickenham Fine Ales. And I was thinking, all right, it's Twickenham, a bit like Richmond. It's got a bit of money. It never had to be gentrified. It was always rather posh. And oh, thank you so much. So are you. Of course, you, you were part of the mighty recent raid from the delightful Dawn Whisper, who came by when I was 
was it earlier in the week? I'm trying to remember what I was playing. Was it Borderlands? Or, uh, 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 Chrono Trigger. It was on Retro Night, wasn't it? And thank you so much for coming by and, and, and hanging out. It's a praise indeed, if, if you do think so. And um, yeah, I, it was. I was expecting it to be like it's going to be a bit peak London, you know. Like, okay, is it going to serve avocado on toast um, and craft ales at like eight quid a bottle and all this kind of stuff? It's going to be red brick and perfectly burnished and polished brewery tanks, you know, fulfilling a stereotype a little bit. Couldn't have been more wrong. We, we, we went to my local pub, had a nice lunch, and just you know, pub throughout the afternoon into the evening. Got to this place. And it was it was just a regular functioning local brewery in this little suburban back street of Twickenham. Um, you wouldn't know it to walk past it. Just had this sort of heavy duty office come sh- industrial shed door, corrugated iron on the inside, empty barrels, benches on the barrels. The stage was two pallets on top of one another. It was a fully functioning, not especially well heated Twickenham brewery, and they were just doing a bit on the side. They had a pub. If you wanted coffee, it was from the staff room. Four quid to go in. Four comedians doing a set as part of this tour. It was awesome. I was, I was out from one in the afternoon to eleven at night, so I came back, you know, okay. fairly well lubricated, <laughs> as uh, the slang goes. And um, yeah, uh, got a great night sort of comedy in, and then just run away. A, a trap pestilent cloud. Wow, he's missed. He's been missed twice by the traps. As uh, the reason I'm not triggering it is because um, Adair's oh. mechanics is not good enough to Adair's. Uh, my best mechanics level, even with a buff of plus two, is not enough to deal hey. with these traps for some reason. Uh, I was. It was. That was it. I remember all you lovely folks coming by and. Um, Oh, powering right. me up, making me feel good. It was wonderful. Dawn's always got like one of the nicest communities. Okay, I'm wondering what this... So I thought the enemy for this quest that we're doing... Uh, well, we found a way to free Benno, so we'll go back and deal with him in a bit. But as Phylactery's promise, I thought the enemy, this miscellaneous enemy in this place, was going to be this named cult leader here. Because, like, why would a Glanfath and Scout? But we've got... The enemy must be in this weird little corner. I have no idea what's coming, but it wasn't that cult leader, whatever it was. Okay, so we shall continue to stealth our way forward. In fact, I'll put on fast mode. Uh... Huh. Oh! It's mandatory. I thought this was just going to be a shortcut. We actually have to fight our way through these thickets by default. It exactly, Silver. It was cozy. It was it was very sort of cozy, but it was it was utterly unpretentious, which was really nice. Um, so go on through. This is going to sting. As you approach the vines, they shudder and pull away from you. Oh, okay. Forming a clear path through which to cross. You pass safely, only to hear rustling behind you as the vines bar passage, curling into a tight knot of thorns and vegetation. Hmm. Bollocks. That that doesn't bow well. I have Monday inset at school. Okay, cool, says Square. What does uh, inset mean? It's not a term I'm familiar with regarding school. Is that like a, a, a special day off or... Um, a, Signing up for uh, activities or uh, yeah, educate me there, sir. Okay, continue. Um, oh, cutscene, cutsceney time. You notice movement up ahead. A robed figure rushes forward, stumbling through the muck. Right, this is curious. We don't, you don't normally get full graphic novelly bits for trivial side quests. He blows a single piercing tone on a signal horn. All right. Tonight we have a new resident here in the Hall of Hominids. Oh, a day off. Marvellous. Oh, Ross the Kettle, thank you very much for the follow. Residency to Cravenstown is granted. Lodgings are being prepared. Please ignore the screams. They are genuinely screams of joy. Um, anyone happens to dissent from that opinion, let your local enforcer know. And folks, can we please give Ross the Kettle a very warm Cravenstown welcome. Welcome to the community and thank you for supporting the channel. The sounds carry through the bog. Echoing off the cloister trees and ruins. Beneath it you hear an ominous rumble. I don't like this. And the murky water to the north begins to bubble and pitch. Alright. A slip. Oh, fuck. Oh, big vinegary balls. It's a dragon. I am not prepared for it. A slick, scaly snout crests the water's surface. It's the only warning you receive before a massive beast rises from the bog in a shower of mud and bog water. Alright, it's a poo dragon. It's a dragon living in a fetid puddle of liquid arse gravy. 
Oh my word, folks, hit that legit, hit that legit. We have an anarchist rave. Welcome on in, welcome on in, Dextro Anarchy and friends. Fellow anarchists, thank you so much for the raid. How you doing? I am Craven, Pure Variety Streamer. Welcome to you, Dextro. You and I are of ain mind, one mind, because you couldn't have picked a better time to raid. I just had a random dragon dropped on me, and dragons in Pillars of Eternity are a big deal. There's not many of them. I'm a little bit concerned. I have heard rumblings, because I've obviously blind playthrough. I have no idea what's coming. It's, but people have been great. No one's given me any spoilers. But I have heard of a bog dragon. I just didn't think it would be some random bastard in the middle of a side quest bog. Uh, did I hear poo dragons? Right. A slick, literally, a slick scaly snout crests the water's surface. It is the only warning you receive before a massive beast rises out from the bog in a shower of mud and bog water. As far as I'm concerned, bog water is the contents of a septic tank. It is untreated sewage. This dragon nests, feeds, and sleeps in liquid shit. In body water. Right. Um, hey, Haverson, welcome on in, man. Good to see you. Resident Haverson, absolute pleasure. How is your stream, Dextro? Catch me up. What were you playing? This is troubling. Uh, <laughs> oh, I love this. You can choose. The dragon shakes vegetation from its horns and then lowers its, he lowers its head to set a keen eye upon you. And we've got option one. One, hold your ground. Two, wave, which I kind of love. Three, brandish your weapons. Four, hold up your hands. Now, I'm generally playing a nice character. His main stats are honest and benevolent to the highest of his character traits. He's got range at this point. Oh, my word. Ah, <laughs> My goodness. Welcome back to the ranks of the citizenry, Haverson 2000. You are once again officially legit. Not just legit, but Cravenstown legit. Enjoy the use once again of your legit emoji all over Twitch. Whenever you hear the phrase legit, when someone does something legit or you think something's just literally legit. And of course, it plays very nicely with other emotes for emphasis. So if someone's got hype, GG, love, nerdler, all that good stuff, you can put legit in front of it and make it extra legit. Second, wave your Cravenstown town flag loud and proud every time you chat and Hammerson you must be uh, you must be not too far off it leveling up and of course as you already know the longer it's with the longer you're with us the more the flag levels up to a testament to your loyalty third as I know you're already part of the community of the create the full Cravenstown the discord because this is just the front end this is just the show this is just the streaming complex that acts as our town gatehouse you will be entered into the monthly giveaway um the next one will be january because we've done december's one for a chance to win a fantastic prize by which i mean a genuinely good free game there's a citizens only prize draw um you will be, oh and uh, if you if you've got your Twitch I think you have on a Discord you're on a Discord you got the Twitch and Discord integrated you'll once again receive your citizens role and you'll be assigned to have access to citizens towers a sub only chat area with the lounge and the citizens treasury where I'll be putting in some codes to some random free treats every now and then on a first come first serve basis and last by no means least not only my undying gratitude and appreciation to you but to Andy Aldrich for 46 gifted subs in the channel, gifted citizenship, you have broken at least two visa stamping craybots on your own, and I am mighty grateful for it. <laughs> Santa Andy at it again. I'm saving something extra special for Christmas Day. Shh. <laughs> Early Christmas presents indeed. Thank you, folks. Thank you for all the support. Thank you, Dextro, so much for bringing over. Because I know anyone who came over from Dextro's raid is going to be an absolutely A-OK -okay, spot-on person. So much love to you. Much love. Did I miss um, when you answered? And Faith G, welcome to the channel. Hello. Thank you for popping up in the chat and saying hi. And I'm good to know that liquid liquid shit is your favourite kind. So you are, when, when there's something in your tummy but it's really brown and runny, diarrhea, diarrhea, you're a fan. Well, that's excellent, isn't it? That's just absolutely marvellous. Oh, Dextro, loving the Rudolph emoji. You want to tell me where you get that one? Right, back to the dragon action. Back to the dragon action. Um, I don't often, like I was saying, I've got a benevolent, nice, generally good character, but every so often I take a different route. Uh, but I don't often get a chance to be a sarcastic jerk because I'm not doing an asshole run through. If I ever play this again, I'm going to play the most diabolical, dungeon keeper esque douchebag imaginable. 
but uh, <laughs> no worries, the square. No worries. Um, it's it's all she takes for me. Um, yeah, no, I have to. I'm, I'm building up to that magpie. Just waving at the dragon. Just hello, because he has no idea what's about to hit him. I'm unprepared for this, but I haven't used up too many of my per rest abilities. So let's. Hey, you smell bad. <laughs> The dragon inclines its head. You think you spy a glint of amusement in its saucer-sized eyes. You notice a small dark shape in the distance. Bearing in mind, dragons usually have ads and little secondary people. Fair enough, he, he, he saw the humour in it. You feel a sudden buffeting gust of wind from above. As the shape grows, a winged silhouette descends swiftly upon the clearing. Alright. Oh, you've got to be fucking joking. As the second dragon comes to a landing, because one's not enough, you take note of the figure atop its back, a woman with sweeping horns garbed in flowing robes. She slides from the dragon's back in one graceful movement. Right, well, I've got to take her seriously, because if she's riding a dragon as opposed to a drake, although this one's clearly not very big, if it's acting as a mount, um, she's no one to be trifled with. Oh, for fuck's sake. There's two of them. King of the Impossible. My goodness, there's dialogue. He's for every one of us. Stand for every one of us. We stand with the body and everybody. Oh, for Silver Magpie, you are officially legit. Not just legit, but Craven's Town legit. Enjoy your legit emoji all over Twitch whenever you hear the phrase legit. Someone does something legit, you think it's legit, or you want to emphasize an emoji you have already, or a general access, or from other channels you're sub to, you want to make it a bit more legit, you now can. Welcome to the ranks of the citizenry. Wave your Craven's Town Town flag loud and proud every time you chat. And folks, as Andy is so brilliantly demonstrating, can we get some legit in chat? As you know, if you're already a citizen, hit that legit, hit that legit. Welcome the delightful Silver Magpie to the ranks of the citizenry. She's lovely. She found me through Dawn, uh, through Dawn Whispers, um, uh, she found me through Dawn Whispers uh, a community and has since become a regular visitor already, which is incredibly kind. Enjoy your Craven's Town Town flag. It levels up more every time you uh, it levels up the longer you are with us. If um, Silver, I don't know if you already are, but if you uh, if you choose to, there is no obligation whatsoever. But should you want to join Craven's Town, the uh, full community, and you have Twitch integrated with your Discord, you will automatically be assigned Citizens role. It's a special sub role, and that will give you access to Citizens Towers with the chat room that's subs only and the treasury for a chance to get first come first served you will be entered into the prize giveaway for january because it's um for all citizens regardless if it's their own sub or if it's a gifted sub and of course my undying gratitude and appreciation and that gets and that's andy's 47th my word another very deserving recipient well chosen andy thank you very much kindly indeed as you continue to break the the, the only person in cravenstown who's uh, got mixed feelings about you mr andy aldrich is the cravenstown visa stamping robot for all the visas he, he has to work overtime on your, your behalf and so three more to 50 goodness me goodness me we we'll have to do something special for you mate and uh oops i did it again yeah i'm, I'm sure that was an accident <laughs> Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Pillows of Eternity. Hey, Blossom! Hello! I like it, Pillows of Eternity. It's like a perpetual pillow fight. Um, I'm sure that's one of the levels of heaven or something. And welcome, Blossom7. Welcome to the stream. Nice to have you. Thank you for supporting it. I do appreciate it. Right, at this point, if anything else comes in, I have to deal with it after because two massive dragons, because one wasn't a bloody enough, two massive dragons have landed and let's fight them. Or do what we have to, because I don't imagine we're getting out of this without a little bit of fisticuffs. So, Lengrath, which is a name I recognise, but I can't remember where from. The Watcher of Cadnua. I expected you to find this eventually. God damn it. King of the Impossible. Blossom seven. Oh my goodness. That's a square. That's quite a good combination of emotes you got going on there. Blossom, blossom, blossom. Welcome to the ranks of the citizenry of Craven's Town. Enjoy your legit emoji. I was planning on being a tourist here, but I get I live here now. Yes, it's a little bit Royston Vasey. You may never leave. 
I kid, I kid. But enjoy your legit emoji. Uh, possibly the only place on Twitch you can actually get one, despite how common the phrase is. But whenever anyone says legit, or you think they're legit, or they've done something legit, or you just want to go, that's legit, you now can all over Twitch. And you can emphasize other emojis with it as well. Legit love, legit hype, legit GG, all that good stuff. Wave your Cravenstown Town flag every time you want to chat. And the longer you're with us, the more it levels up through to bronze, silver, gold, and however long you choose to stay. No obligation ever at all. All. Should you choose to, should you choose to uh, join the full Craven's Town, which is the Discord, you will automatically be assigned the citizen's role within about an hour by the webhook we have, provided your Twitch and your Discord are integrated and have access to Citizen's Tower as a subs only section with the perks therein of the chat room and the treasury, where you can get first come, first serve treats when I get the opportunity to put them in there. Um, provided you are a resident as well as a citizen, which by which I mean a follower as well as a sub, you will be entered into the monthly giveaway because that is for resident citizens. Uh, the giveaway, obviously. I'll try and make sure that doesn't go to just people who randomly get one. Um, but should you want to follow the channel, you don't have to. You still get all the other perks. But should you want to, um, you'll be entered into the January giveaway for a chance to win a fantastic prize. And of course, my undying appreciation and gratitude for you being here, for hanging out, supporting the channel and popping up in chat. It's just a delight to have you and anyone else who comes by and hang out and watch for a while. I'm glad you're enjoying it. And to Asda Andy Aldrich. Um, okay, Sir Square, no problem. See you later. Enjoy your day off from school tomorrow. I hope it's, um, well, I hope it's fun, whether it's productive or not. I hope you uh, enjoy it thoroughly. Uh, question, how do I know if someone is using their Prime sub for this channel? You don't really. Um, uh, people who have Prime just have like their their crown next to them. But the point is Twitch tries to make it so it doesn't ever renew um, because they want people to use it once but then try and do a regular sub from then on in which is why they sort of you can't do a repeating prime sub so don't worry about that too much you think twitch wouldn't allow if they um if they already had one <laughs> all right cool all right take care of yourself sir square it's been a pleasure and uh is it just a crown icon yeah that just means i have twitch prime um uh, and that's all that is. All right. And Andy, thank you once again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are the absolute VIP super fan. I swear. I absolutely swear. Dragon time. Dragon time. Bloody dragon time. God damn it! King of the impossible. He's doing this on purpose. Stroke. No, no dragons for you. <laughs> the dragons are just in the game, like drum, 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 drum. God damn, is he ever gonna fight us or what? Welcome back. Now, as you can see with the bronze flag right there, Dextro, welcome back to the ranks of the Craven's Town citizenry. You already know the drill. Folks, hit that legit, hit that legit. Of, of all the people who really deserve one in, in the recent visit, it's Dexter. She's absolutely lovely, in actual fact. In actual fact, I haven't done this already, and she dropped us a mighty rage. Shout out, Dextro. Should you not be already, do go and give her a follow. Do go and give her a follow. She's uh, very, very lovely. I uh, met her through DGDS, and she's she's generally great. A uh, good streamer, absolute master at Cuphead on difficult. If you want to see how it's done platforming when she's playing it, you're missing a treat if you're not already there. Dextro, welcome back to the ranks of the citizenry. Um, of course, you know that you you are already legit. You're once again officially Craven's Town legit. Use a legit emoji everywhere you see fit when you think legit applies. You have now got your bronze flag. I don't know if you had it already. If you had it already, I can't quite remember. You might be very close to getting your silver one. You will once again have access to Citizen's Towers in Craven's Town and all the perks therein of the lounge and Citizen's Treasury. You'll be entered into the giveaway, of course, for January and my undying gratitude and appreciation. And once again to Andy, thank you so much. It's great when people uh, who've been in before, who've been citizens, have a chance to come back and be uh, once again rolled further into our excellent community. Um... Da, da, da. I thought Dexter already started with the crown item. Yeah, it just means to have Prime. But to be fair, Dexter, she's so lovely. She has actually dropped Twitch Prime sub on here before. Uh, she's been around so much. That she's very much earned some gifted subs in her own right. And now she can put that Prime on another deserving person. So there you go. There you go. Might actually be looking to upgrade to silver at some point. But... Well, there you go. And there's the round 50. Yeah. 
There you go. Ask repeatedly, and it seems sometimes you will receive. Sir Square, welcome to the ranks of the citizenry of Cravenstown. Enjoy your legit emoji. I'm sure all around Twitch you were here legit in the various places you like to hang out and go to, as well as here you now have an emoji response for it. Folks, can we hit that legit? Hit that legit. Welcome, Sir Square, to the ranks of the citizenry. He's been a follower for quite some time. I was going back through when I do my competition bits. I'm like, oh, Sir Square, yeah, he's been here for quite a little while. Don't get to see him very often in the chat, but is he is supporting the channel repeatedly. So a well a well a well deserved recipient, and uh, and there's fifth. That's a good round number, and you, you could you could you could relax for a while, mate. Fifty is is extremely. Thank you, by the way. And of course, uh, square for the first time. Enjoy your Cravenstown town flag and wave it loud and proud every time you chat. That's now there we go. That's a good chunk of legit. That'll be very good uh, if and when you get recruited into the Cravenstown militia, which is what we have when we do a raid. And uh, of course, the longer you're with us, the more that will level up. As a follower and a resident, you'll be entered into, for provided you stay a resident at that time, which is what we call followers, you will uh, be entered into the January giveaway for a chance to win a genuinely good game, um, a fantastic prize. Uh, if you're not already, uh, for those I keep mentioning Cravenstown, if you're not and you don't know what it is, the full Discord is Cravenstown. This is just the show. This is the front end. This is the uh, the streaming complex that acts as our gatehouse. The community, the Discord, is uh, it's a mature place. So if, if if you like kind of being edgy and a bit of an edge lord and like kind of winding up, it's it's not like that. It's very very non toxic. We treat um, our people in there the same we would our real life friends. Uh, we have a small focus on, but a large accommodation of mental health, mental health awareness, and mental illness. Being open about it, discussing it. I talk about what I deal with. Um, other people open up to there is no obligation to do so should you choose to join a discord it is it is one color in the spectrum of what the community is so look at it that way you don't have to join in with that you don't have to do anything to do with it if you're not comfortable with it if you're just like a nice place that's based around the theme of a town um, then that's what Cravenstown is but we do have that as a particular niche of what we do along with the fact that it is run like a town and we have the whole theme and it's a bit gamified in that regard so if your Twitch is integrated with your Discord and you feel like you'd like to join a Discord and that sort of that kind of place sounds up your street, then um, you'll automatically be assigned the citizen's role uh, if you have it integrated. And last by no means least, my undying appreciation and gratitude. Now that depends on how you treat your real life friends. Yes, I, I'm the way I, I do it in a way of like how I treat mine, which is generally pretty well and, and nicely. Uh, when's my stream back on? Well, the schedule is just in the channel panel information below Square. Um, I do normally Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. So Sunday is Story Sunday. Monday is Mellow Out Monday or Catharsis Monday. Uh, and that's sort of your action games to begin with. And then like bloody violent stuff. So I'm doing Borderlands 2 and Darksiders 2 at the moment. And then we wind down with Magic the Gathering Arena for the more chilled out bit. So you get the stress out of your system with the action. And then you can sort of like, ah, uh, and chill with something a bit more slower paced and tactical. Like I'm doing a lot of magic at the moment. Tuesdays is the future past. Um, and that is, I'm finishing off Chrono Trigger on the SNES. And then we'll be moving on to... Um, <laughs> Bet that was Whoopsie yeah. Daisy. Oh, did your fucking finger slip? Thank you so much for the 75 biddies, Andy. I appreciate that very much. And uh, Tuesday, provided I can get it all set up, is going to become VR and retro. I've been promising it for a long time. It's just a case of getting my VR stuff set up here and going, Whoa, Mr. Rift, it's been a little while since I've seen you in the chat. One of the excellent members of DGDS. Absolute pleasure. How you doing? Um, and then on Thursdays is Tryout Thursdays. And that's primarily indie games. I've been doing Darkest Dungeon. I've been doing a Terra Tech stream for a few weeks for Payload Studios. I'm also going to potentially be doing some... Um testing and trying the free games that come out with Twitch Prime every month on behalf of and endorsed by Twitch Prime uh, Twitch, Twitch Prime Twitch Prime uh, but I'm in discussions with uh, Twitch Prime about that so uh, but at the moment we're mainly the main ongoing game we're doing for that is Darkest Dungeons there's something for everybody so and anyway but I'm on next uh, tomorrow for the Catharsis Stream Square so if you've got the day off by all means come by and hang out it'd be, ple be a pleasure to see you and hello hello I'm good how are you I'm very very well alright now if, if all all this generosity is done and taken care of. I uh, I think it's um oh hang on my uh, my my phone stopped showing my stream properly. That was very odd. Uh, right, I'm just gonna have to close that down and start it back up again. That's better. Right, right, right. We're good. Okay, I'm going to do homework. Hey, good for you. That's very responsible. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Absolute pleasure. Take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Righty ho, and uh, yeah, Rift. I'm well. I've had a, a good weekend. We're having a great crack. Uh, we've got Pillars of Eternity on. I'm in the last little bits of it. This will be probably where we finish things up, and we'll do more of the main next final part of um, what I think is going to be the final part. 
from, from how it's progressing of White March 2 next week. But let's finish things up with some dragon action, shall we? Okay, application to studies approved. Excellent. Uh, the Watcher of Cadnir and I expected you'd find us eventually. I'm a little more surprised to find you're still carrying that abomination around. Oh? I imagine Consul Halt is better company without his tongue. Oh, it's Lengrath! She's one of the other Archmages. So there's about five Archmages. These who are, I mean, ludicrously powerful wizards. They have spells that all the other wizards name named after them. Lengrath just displaced staff. There's, there's about five spells in Alice, Al, Aloth's Grimoire that are named after her. And there's about another five named after Consul Hout. Now, we killed Consul Hout. Um, that's why she's saying that abomination skull. It's the only pet you get with stat bonuses. It's really good. Uh, let's see. Who are you? You sent the assassin. I'm getting used to having him around. What should we say? I imagine Consul Howe is better company without his tongue. Um, I know who you are. I can't be bothered talking about Consul Howe, so you, let's cut to the chase. You sent the I assassin? Sent a scout. Her task was to follow you no more. But oh. her death was always a possibility. One she accepted. To be fair, she got stopped in the town. Um, I didn't come anywhere near her, so... I am Lengroth. Uh-huh. Oh, interesting. Now, I have a general rule. If there's ever a skill check... Um, if there's ever a skill check, I take that option in dialogue. So, Law 3. I thought Lengroth was a man. I don't know if that's just an assumption uh, like my... Uh... Locally. Atreus85, thank you very much for the follow. Residency to Craven's Town is granted. We work a 37-hour day here. You will get used to it, or you'll have a psychotic episode, but we will not judge. Grab yourself a beer at the bar and settle in for the remainder of the show. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Uh, let's see. You're not old enough to be Lengrath. Even Consul How had to resort to magic. Oh, that's actually quite interesting. Is this some sort of cult, or you have very impressive friends? That's, that's actually quite funny. No problem at all, folks. We get a, give give Etreus a, a a warm welcome. Uh, welcome to the community. It's uh, it's lovely to have you here. I'm go I'm gonna obey my usual rule though and take uh, the skill check if the options there. So I thought Lengrath was a man. As was my predecessor. He too oh. lives on in me. We are all, you see, Lengrath. No, that makes no bloody sense, you lunatic. Lengrath knew something Consulhot did not. The brevity of life should be embraced, not feared. Uh -huh. Each generation brings with it renewed strength and saves us from stagnation. It's rather funny talking about being saved from stagnation when you're literally in a bog that exists purely through stagnation. When his time came, Lindroth was willing to let go, to leave his memories and body behind. He entrusted the gift of his life force, his vibrant spirit, to a worthy successor. Okay, well, he sounds like less of an insane douche lich than Consul Hout was. Consul Hout clung to his pathetic existence like a leech. True. And there are others like him, who would see all the world serve as kindling, if only their flame can go on burning. I have a feeling this is like fire godlike racism. Consul Hout's knowledge cannot outlive him. She looks at you pointedly. Ah. So, I'm a loose thread. Well, that's why you're after the phylactery to destroy it. Someone else will simply follow in Consul Hout's footsteps. Uh, so basically, the fact that Consul Hout's skull and his shade is still in it, she's like, he's lived far too long and he needs to be destroyed. You can't just destroy knowledge you don't approve of. Anamancer's medal with soul energy all the time. Aren't you doing the same thing? Trying ah, now yeah, I like to uh, I like to call her bluff. So she's basically going, yeah, you need to be loosened up. Aren't you doing the same thing? Transferring souls. Yeah, go on then. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort of like, all right. What do you have to say to that? You misunderstand. Bollocks. A wolf devouring a hare has done nothing outside its nature. One life feeds the next. Yeah, but it doesn't learn Ours everything the, the hare learned. Generations, many minds coming together to strengthen one another. So that's why you're after the phylactery to destroy it. More than that, to ensure it could never be replicated. Right. You yourself could easily have become the latest tool in Consul Hot's efforts to thwart the wheel and place himself beyond the reach of time. Well, if I managed to defeat him, not that easily then, really. He would have used your very essence for fuel. A lesser death than you deserve, I think. But you made it out. Mm-hmm. 
going off to play a few games of my own, so Lurk Mode Engage. No worries. Thank you so much for the Lurk support, Silver Magpie. Feel free to mute the tab if you want to enjoy your game audio, as that will also help preserve the view as opposed to the slider bar. But it's been a pleasure having you here. Enjoy your citizenship. I will catch you soon. Good luck in your games. In truth, I am glad you came. It saves me the effort of chasing you. Um, wait, at least help me understand. Or what if I just gave you the phylactery? No, I don't trust you because you seem to be uh, trying to, you know, kill me. How is it you're working with such creatures? Well, Consul Hart and I weren't exactly friends. And for killing him, at least, I do thank you. But you should not have interfered. Commander Balleran would have brought me the phylactery. All of this could have been avoided. Commander Ballerin and his his brother his his uh the Bannerhood the Banner something, um they weren't all that effective. Consul Hout would have wiped them out. In fact, he was. They were stuck. Uh, why is the file? Uh, why hire? Yeah, why that was it. The torn Bannerman. Why hire the torn Bannerman anyway? Discretion. It would hardly have been ideal to fly in atop Gavanerkos and get the attention of every dragon hunter in the region. Seems like dragon hunters tend to die against dragons. I'd heard the bannermen were competent. It turns out that you're more competent. Uh-huh. You really want to fight me? How is it you're working with such creatures? These two? They're quite young, but already appallingly bright. I'm gonna say, they're a bit smaller than some of the ones we've gone up against. There's no greater aim than to leave behind a lasting legacy. To teach those who will learn. Yeah, I'll riff. This, this game, dialogue choices, this is about as pure CRPG roleplay as it gets, man. I can't recommend it highly enough. Lengroth's teachings are interesting. Uh-huh. Gaffanerkos. We will strengthen our souls as they do. Morgeth Inn will be our home for eons. So that whole thing about life, you know, being replaced and being in a loop and all being decent is completely wasted on you. You want to strengthen your souls and stay here in a bog, being about as stagnant as it's possible to be. All right, well, why is the phylactery so dangerous? Think on it. You must have seen how desperately Kith cling to their lives. What measures they're willing to take to ensure theirs is the consciousness that lingers longest. Uh -huh. The phylactery was to be Consul Holt's great triumph over death. All the evil that Kith have done in search of falsehoods would pale in the face of what they will do for the truth. I'm not sure as everyone is as willing as Consul Hout was to carve up their own skulls. <laughs> That's a fair point. It only takes one. Right. Well, at least help me understand. It's not as if you'll understand for very long. But as you wish. Right. So she's basically, that's told me that she's committed to killing me. I'm a loose end. Um, she, she, so she's not going to sort of let me just go. There's no way out of this without a fight. All right. Do you possess more than Lengras title? What about his memories? His memories, his awareness, those died with him. Fair enough. But his power remains. As a watcher, you must have seen by now that certain spirits possess more strength than others. It's a pity, because you seem a lot more reasonable, but I'm going to have to wipe you out. His knowledge we secure in the usual way. It is my hope that we will someday spread Lindgroth's teachings beyond our numbers. Mm -hmm. Your books are too small to read. Better to learn it in song. Hmm. <laughs> song? No, no singing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. The dragons are arguing. All right. The dragon grinds its jaws. Um, were you and Consul Hout always enemies? Gotta love no, the law. not at all. Oh, he and the original Lingroth were distantly aware of each other, I'm sure, being masters in their field. Uh -huh. I learned of his obsessions too late. Perhaps if we'd been on better terms, I could have convinced him to reconsider. Mm -hmm. Too late in any case. Uh, well, how did you become Lingroth? A great deal of study and a little magic. Once a suitable candidate has been selected, their predecessor gives up his life and essence, and the soul is transferred. You just found another way to live on as a different kind of lich with a different kind of phylactery, you hypocritical cow. I studied for many years and was selected, but at any step I might have turned away, buried myself in common living. 
My choice was to stay. Don't you find that unnatural? Not at all. The energy of souls is a natural force all around us. Every being leaves traces of their passing, even as their essence finds root in new soil. I have a feeling Barath, who's the god sort of in charge of the wheel and the passage of souls, has something a little bit different to say about this. We accept that the cycle exists and that death will come. It is what we leave behind that matters. A life bettered by our efforts. Well, why are you out here? Why? Because it's quiet, out of the way. The local wildlife keeps out the rabble. <laughs> Fair enough. I've never minded being out in the open air. But some of the apprentices found it difficult at first. But a bright young mind that can't survive contact with blood and dirt will fare very poorly in this world. That's true. Well, that's all I wondered about. A curious mind is a gift. Perhaps your soul will retain that quality. I'm not going to give up the phylactery at this point. You just... I, you seem like a hypocrite. If we must fight, so be it. Better luck on the next turn of the wheel, my friend. I'm sure you'll We're be We're not remembered. friends. I've never eaten a watcher before. Uh, I've never killed a bog dragon before. Right. Fuck. Um, I have no food buffs at all, and I'm in combat. Um, I haven't even rested. Bloody... Durance has got minus four constitution. Uh, I wish I could, because I'm going to have to go through a lot of that dialogue again. Right, what have we got? We have Lengrath, an archmage, and two... Two bog dragons. Oh, feckin' bejesus. And we're actually looking a bit worse for wear, health-wise. Right, well, firstly, as we're all the way back here, we're going to get some serious buffs on. As best we can. I'm, I'm so under-prepped for this fight, it's ridiculous. Um, I don't even have the right scrolls in or anything. What does Ethan's Cradle do? Alright, we'll make sure we use some of that. I can do Lord's Authority. I can summon a Berrigan's Battlehorn. We'll do that. Gaining immunity to Charmed and Dominated Afflictions. Yeah, we'll fire that off. Uh, Durant will have to do Prayer Against Fear because all dragons cause terror by, def by default. And that'll wreck our accuracy. Um, Palagina, what can she do? Slow spirits. Wait on that. Clear out. She's got no buffs ready to go. Ah, flask of war paints. May as well. Right, Aloth. Scroll of paralysis. That could be a fun one. Has he got anything he can buff himself with? Torrent of Flame, Dragon's Breath. Oh, Dragon's Breath can't hurt dragons. Right, we may as well get some figurines out. Those who aren't already casting. Craven's doing his Lord's Authority. Uh, Aloth, you can summon um, an Ebony Spider figurine. How is she... Oh, and uh, Blessing, yep. Right, let's see if they head in our general direction. Okay, one cultist. Right, one's on the ground. Uh, two Resulfis is ground-based. This one's flying. They're going to have tail whips, breath attacks, massive um, endurance nailing attacks. Right, we'll send the bugs after the apprentice. Just overwhelm him with um, interrupts and whatnot. Right, Durant, you can also be doing a. Uh, let's see. Won't do Spark the Souls of the Righteous just yet. We need to get some serious uh, Shining Beacon. Triumph of the Crusaders. Not so much. What's this? But... Crowns for the Faithful. Perception, Intellect, and Resolve. That's quite a good one. 
Hands of Weal and Woe. I've got to remember to use that. Symbol of Magran. Watchful Guardian. When an affected ally is knocked unconscious, he or she will immediately be revived and have some endurance healed. Yeah, let's fucking get that on. Oh crap, we're all immune to Watchful Guardian? Are you joking? That was one of my best spells. Okay, enough of this. Right, he's already injured. Uh, Lengrath's going to be the biggest risk, but the dragons are going to hit like trains. I need a dare running in. Craven could possibly off tank her. Um, Grieving Mother. Perhaps we could. Right, we'll put a pain block on a dare. Palagin will have to go forward as well. Right, Alos got invisibility. He needs to run up here. Um, that's fine. They are meant to act as a brief distraction. You go up against that dragon, just hold it in place for a second. Likewise, you go up against Leningrath and you are the little bug. You'll get squished in a heartbeat. Okay, Lord's Authority. What I don't want is them getting nailed by a breath attack. Hmm. Palagina put Sworn Enemy on... Oh, who should fight who? Put Sworn Enemy on Galifanerkos. Right, Grieving Mother. He's got... Alright, Adair's got Pain Block on, that's fine. She needs to start building up some focus, so shoot this hapless little bastard as he'll be the easiest to hit. Next, Durance. Uh, now they're gathered up. Interdiction, all of them. I don't want him getting nailed by anything. Oh, whoa! I don't know what the hell just hit us, but that stung. Like, a lot. Fuck. That's direct breath attacks. Alright, charge him. Where's she gone? She's over there. Uh, Craven charge her. Durance, for the love of God, run up the flank. Actually, no, you know what? Oh, he still hasn't cast his frickin' interdiction yet, you idiot. Do it. Um, oh, Palagina's sickened, that's not great. Yeah, no shit. Alright, Adair next, you need to do unbending. Because he's already taken, he's dropped into yellow health. That a patch of second ground. All right, flames of uh, flames of devotion on Galifanerkos. Craven do a pummel. Try and interrupt Leningrath. Aloth, get your giant Monty Python hammer. The irony of Consul House crushing doom. And do we put it on her? Because she's going to have some crazy spells, but I think we should help out Palagina. She's not nearly as good of a tank. No, let's get Leningrath down first. Right, Grieving Mother. You've got 15. Run forward and help Adair with some synchronization. You. Um, Endurance-wise. Right, you're in range to help most of them. Holy Radiance. Adair's got unbending already done. Put up vigorous defense. Next. Uh, oh, he successfully stunned Lengrath for two seconds. Awesome. Um, torment's reach. Palagina. Oh, sh shit. Take your second wind. She's getting directly slapped by the other dragon. Um, what else? Let's get slow spirits on in a second. Ooh, damn, that hit hard. She barely got her second wind away. Uh, Palagina is getting really nailed. Um, slow spirits on all of them.
Right, Consul House Crushing Doom is doing a good number on her. Is she still... She's not... She's not prone or anything like that. Craven's kind of okay. We could maybe get away with a dichotomous soul. Let's try. Um, and I'm going to double up. We'll do restore... Restore critical endurance. <laughs> Generally about... Ah, oh, damn, it won't hit both of them. Stick it there, though. Okay, she's doing quite well. Uh, focus, let's... She needs more focus. Hit Lengrath. Let's try and get her down. Adair's holding up quite well. For now, let's do a knockdown. How immune are they? Oh, 20 resistant to, to prone. Uh, and will he, yes, he's got it off. Jest. Man, what is... Our health is getting nailed. Is he casting at the moment? No. Just get to there. Right, that's a bit safer from that toxic patch of crap. Actually, just hit Leningrath. She's nearly down. Leningrath's nearly down. Craven Duplicate. Hit there. Oh, Palagin is about to hit the freaking deck, so Durant's just in case to um, revive the Fallen. Because she's definitely going to go down. 36, what can we do with that? Soul Ignition. I think we should focus on Galifanerkos right now and have Idair just try and solo tank Turis Sulphis. No, that's going to hurt anyone else. Um, no, cancel. Cancel. Build up more focus. In fact, do you have... Yeah, you do. Scroll of Confusion, Scroll of Progress, Treachery. Get your Iridescent Scarab figurine out and hitting it as well. We need to do some big spells. Um, DR, Deflection and Concentration. Yes, let's get all of those on. Right, Palagina, you you need to take a freaking potion just in case. Oh god, she actually survived, right. It didn't need to uh, be resurrected, but we had it as a backup. Um, you take a freaking major endurance. Let's get some of our scrolls on, like some big right. We're going to do scroll of Maelstrom, as that hits hard. Right there, Adair is prone, and we've got some scrolls in here as well that can hit quite hard. I oh, know, any confusion, that won't do a great lot of good. Leningrath's nearly dead, and then that frees up Craven. Let's keep shooting at her. Right, Adair is still pretty buffed up. He's alright. He's hopefully alright. <laughs> Palagina, you've got enough room to do lay on hands on yourself, so bloody do it. Craven duplicate. Uh, right, they're frightened, but they're not terrified. Craven yourself. Oh, he's got... Why can't he do anything? He's got five wounds. Right, Durant, you can't go down. Um... Take another potion. I actually got no scrolls. Scroll of no nah, scroll of confusion is just not not helpful. Damn it! I should have tooled her up with some of the better. I should have done a lot of things if I knew this freaking fight was coming. All right, she's got forty-two. Right, her focus levels is life, the universe, and everything. Uh, silent scream. Stunning the target as well as dealing raw damage to all enemies within stands a high chance of causing an interrupt. Brilliant. Let's get that going. Interrupt you. Oh yes! I th oh my crap, we actually killed Leningrath. I am amazed. Craven, right. What's the matter with him? Why can't I do anything with him? Oh, he's got form of the helpless beast, that way. He's currently a small piglet. That's brilliant. Shit. 
That hit hard, right. Palagina. Okay, she's, he's turned around and focusing on... Palagina do a lay on hands on Craven, like, right now. Um, we've got no way to resurrect Durance at the moment. It dares still just soloing. This is why fighters are so nails hard. Um, let's do a quick into the fray. Now, Adra Beetle is really holding his own, actually. Does she have another pet she can summon? No. Take a quick... Oh, no, she's doing her thing. And Duplicate's holding out quite well, as is that one. Aloth, you must have another scroll you can use. Let's try a scroll of paralysis. Are they immune? No, they're not. We can nail them both with a scroll of paralysis. Ah, uh, immune. Oh, ho, 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 it landed. It landed. That dragon is paralyzed for seven point whatever seconds. Right, Craven is no longer form of the helpless beast. Get wrecked, fucker. Uh, is it weakened currently? No. Right, let's get Sever the Soul. Um, Palagina, take a little break from holding the fort and do a reviving exhortation on Durant. We need him back up and full of beans. That paralysis scroll was worth its weight in bloody adamantium. Gref's authority. So we won't do that melee attack. But yeah, let's run the wizard into melee with a the dragon. There's a fucking bright idea. Uh, he's still paralysed. Right, let's get um, a Torment's Reach on the go. <laughs> oh, that one's paralysed as well. Right, there. Nice one, bruv. Uh, what can you do? Dragon's Breath won't do a great lot. Let's do an AoE shock damage while he has the luxury. She's got 14. May as well use this up. You'll uh, use up a little uh, Prestigitator's missiles. Let's get another scroll of Maelstrom on the go. I'm here. Great. That's Durant's back up on full health. Let's get some crowns for the faithful. Or, you know what? Now we're all bunched up. Devotions of the faithful. Because that's going to hurt most of them. And then we'll get despondent blows after that, provided he doesn't get nailed by something. She's very close to getting a tail whip. Has she got that uh, potion? Potion of mirrored image. Take it. Right, Adair do another... Is he no, oh, he's still paralyzed for six more seconds. <laughs> okay, that's us nicely buffed. Oh my word, the first one's near death. Right, next we want... Um, if we actually pull this off, I'm going to be amazed. Uh, crowns for the faithful. Right, she can't be hit very easily now. Aloth, uh, what else can you do scroll-wise, buddy? Let's get another scroll of Maelstrom. Just nail him with every freaking thing going. Right, can we get another figurine in on it? Yes, we can. Ashwood cameo. Ashwood cameo, time for a cameo. Throw it there. Let's let's give uh, Idair some help, as he's been soloing that other dragon. Right, Craven, you can do... Just a pummel. Put a stun on. Right. Ah, excellent. It's a it's a Delamgan primordial. She can do nature's balm. Excellent sunbeam. Yeah, let's. Oh, holy crap! We not only beat the first dragon, we turned it into chum. <laughs> we might pull this off. We genuinely could. In fact, at this point, I think we will. Hard parts. Flagellant's path. Right, Durant's... Uh, you're pretty good. Do despondent blows on this one. And Aloth, another console house crushing doom. Grieving Mother, up to 20. Let's do... not mine blades. Mental binding. 
They're not immune to paralyze. Let's try and re-paralyze it. Oh, get wrecked, bruv. <laughs> Prone is suppressed. It's just been a par it just got paralyzed by that cipher ability for another 11.2 seconds. It's got a comedy hammer. Uh, which you can't currently see. It'll be pounding up and down for another um, 12 seconds. Yeah, this is in the bag. This is in the bag. Uh, let's get a little bit closer. Keep Actually, no, endurance-wise, let's keep the casters back where they should be, right? Barb's a condemnation. Uh, what's this? Wood skin. Let's put it over the two of you. You dare... Just do into the fray, keep it focused on yourself. You just keep shooting it. That hammer that's just going... Bonk! <laughs> that hammer's just hilarious. Uh, deprived the unworthy, snuffs out all active beneficial effects. Perfect target for deprived the unworthy. And Craven, do another sever the soul. Got nothing permanent on the go. It's nearly down. Nearly down. Right. Let's just run in, keep everyone topped off with consecrated ground. And Arcane Assault, just as a little bit of an insult. Ha 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 ha! Oh ho ho shit! Achievement unlocked among the moss and the peat. Oh my god, we actually did it. We had a dragon dropped on us. And we did it. No one mentioned the bog dragon was two bloody dragons. <sighs> yeah, quick saving that. Oh, your stronghold gained 15 prestige. Jesus. That was a legit victory. I killed the alpine dragon once I got tough enough to come back. Because when I first encountered him, he wiped the floor with me. But the alpine dragon is supposedly the toughest enemy in the game. But I was prepared for that fight. I ate all my dragon, uh, all my food, all my buffs. I went in. I figured this would be tougher. Because we were unprepped for it. But nah. Smash them. My right, Durance went down to be fair. He's got a severe words, severe wounds, severe burn, and bruised ribs. Oh my god, I can't believe we pulled that off. And what have we got for our trouble? An exceptional rod. Lengrass Grimoire. Aloth, happy birthday, dude. Uh, Bog Dragon Scale. Once full grown, each dragon takes on the traits of the environment it is claimed as its kingdom, and the change is reflected in every aspect of its form. This particular scale has a strange mossy texture at its surface, but is as solid and hard as steel beneath. The dragon's the scale sheen makes it appear slick, though it is dry to the touch. Drake Talon, Silver Lusk. Yoink. Four bog dragon scales. I'm assuming that can enchant something rather good. Oh, what did this cultist drop? Psh, garbage. Who cares? Hey. <sighs> Damn, man. Right. Leningrath's Grimoire. I sincerely hope and expect to have... Uh, why have I still got the battle music going on? We're not in combat. Alright. See, Leningrath's Grimoire. This is an Archmage's Grimoire. It must have something we don't know in it. Leningrass Mental Shield. Yeah. I think you can only learn that from this Grimoire. Holy crap, there's a load of stuff in there it doesn't know. So level 4. The caster gains immunity to charm, confused, dazed, distracted, dominated, frightened, stunned, and terrified. The shield will negate two attacks from each affliction type. Yep. <laughs> Lengrass Physical Shields, Immunity to Blinded, Paralyzed, Petrified... Oh, wow, those are a bit good. Uh, what's this one? Lengrass Blunt Wisdom. The wizard summons a rod that hurls a ball of magical energy. When the ball arrives at its target, it hovers for a few months before exploding, inflicting terrible raw damage on nearby enemies. That's a bit good. Arcans. 
Wow. What's this? Lengrath's warding staff. Dispel conjures a powerful quarter staff that adds deflection and pushes enemies away with a hobbled. Okay. Yeah, pushes any, everyone away. Okay, that's one we could actually learn normally, but we get for free. And that way well, we don't get for free, but we don't have to level up, spend a level on it. What's this? Lengrath's siphoning image causes the caster to appear visually displaced, increases their deflection and reflex. Many deflection and reflex hits, score attacks that score hits will be converted to grazes. What the hell is this? Lengrath's superior elemental bollock. <laughs> Bulwark. The wizard, yep. Um, that's cool. What's this one with a skull on it? Lengrath's Dread Haze. Fills targets an intense malaise that leaves them sickened and incapable of evaluating their endurance. Whoa. Alright. Well, I think we're going to make some changes here to our Grimoire from level 4 onwards. So we currently have Essential Phantom. Oh, close that. And then Aloth's Grimoire. Right click. Known spells. Did we get one at the 8th level? Yeah, Lengrath's Dread Haze. We're adding that. Wall of Many Colours, Minoletta's Piercing Sigil. I should remember to use that one, but I don't honestly. Freezing Rake. Weakened and Hobbled. That's not so interesting. I'll put in the uh, Bulwark there. Lengrath's Siphoning Image. Killing Bolt. See, the, the console house crushing doom and uh, Tain's chaotic orb is cool. Substantial Phantom. Killing Bolt. Gotta remember that that's there. Lengrath siphoning image. Nah, that's not so interesting. Lengrath's blunt wisdom. We've got arcane reflection. I actually don't use that very much. This summons a uh, a rod. That's kind of cool. Torrent of flame. Call to slumber. Lengrath's safeguard. Yeah, okay, Leningrath spells are all primarily about defense. So for essential phantom flame, what well, flame shield? Meh. Bit crap. The mental shields is really good. The essential phantom I'm never actually using, so I'll put in physical shields. So big missile, the tentacles which I like. Okay, damn man, that's Aloth's a seriously leveled wizard at this point. Right, I wouldn't mind if there was a dragon horde around somewhere nearby. Actually, I suppose there won't be. They flew in. Holy crap, we took on an archmage and two dragons. I mean, that archmage was nowhere near as tough as Cancel How it was. Then again, we're much, much higher level now. Phew. Admis Wart. Let's get to uh, finish looting the last of what's around here. So just the clearing. We're going to have to rescue the poor old boy. We'll do the little task as well. The hell is this way? Oh, that's a way out, is it? Path north. We'll take that bit later. Come on, like some, some bit of armour or a weapon or something, maybe? Maybe? Sorry, let's fast forward a little bit. Save some time. Apparently not. What about this wee copse? Well, you know what, right there? Two dead dragons locked in embrace. Or is it F12? From... There we go. Take that one. Oh, sorry the music's not calming down, folks. That was a bit annoying. How do we actually find our way back out? That's what I want to know. Or can we not? Uh, go on through. Excellent. 
Right, let's head back to uh, the ritual circle. Go and rescue. Yeah, cheese it over the trap. Whatever. <laughs> we can take it. <laughs> Clears out that last trap. Oh, sorry, it's heading back that way. Let's go and deal with this little... After all that, that poor... Just, just want to let the guy know, just so you know, actually freeing you was a massive hassle. Benno, you're back! Get me out of here! At the edge of the ritual circle, scratched into the mud, you notice five familiar characters. Just uh, just like the ones in the note you found. Without knowing what to look for, there'd be no more than furrows in the dirt. You examine the symbols more closely. We won't just stomp them out right away. You crouch down, but you can't see anything inherently interesting about the scratches. What, did you find something? Past the barrier, Benno watches you with rapt interest. A flicker of movement catches your attention. You look up to see that you've gained an audience. Oh dear. What the hell? Tethered spirit. In this dim light, the spirit is nearly invisible. A shimmer of essence that you can barely pick out against the bog. You begin to see more shapes coalescing in the fog. The first raises its hands. Wait, please. Did you trap this man here? What? Who is it? Save me! Benno turns, looking around wildly. Badran called us here, but his spirit slips our grasp. We would continue our work if you all let us. It is all the purpose that remains to us. Uh, no. The betterment of the self, the craft of... Oh, right, I thought you meant, like, trapping this guy. The craft of virtue. This man, Benno, he is pocked through with jealousy, with petty lusts. He thieves from his partner. He abandoned his child. But his essence holds the same brilliant potential of any man. Oh, this is curious. And while your soul, Watcher, is a bright and fierce thing, his is fragmented, weak. Let us mend it. Shape it. How would you do that? As one might carve the rot from an apple, it is painless, freeing. He would feel himself unburdened. I would say it's not really my decision, but it's just asking them to carry on. That said, also they're hostile. Are they lying to me? Because why wouldn't you just do it? What do you want from me, then? Give us time to work upon him, then we shall release him and you may do with him as you please. Alright, do it then. You see the spell barrier ripple and Benno looks up in an excited anticipation. But you sense, too, a sudden cold weight in the air. The gathered spirits shine all the brighter, as if strengthened by your permission. They move towards Benno, and you lose sight of him beneath the whirling lights. Alright, I hope this wasn't a fib. It's strange, I've never felt better. I'm not sure what I was worried about. Okay. I'm gonna go and see if Hurler's alright. I'll meet you by the wagon. Huh. What I love there is they um give you the option to go... Huh, you know what, um, oh, you don't have permission to carve up a man's soul, his flaws are his own. But we let uh, Menaha remove her tortured memory, so wasn't granting them permission so much as like, yeah, alright. It's curious that they brought them up hostile. Oh, there's still, a, in the background, there's the combat music. But it's uh, muted at this point. All right, well, we'll head back to the caravan. We don't, oof. Time is a-thumping. Hello. It says quest completed. Hey, thanks for getting Benno back. He's been telling me how much of a help you were. I owe him my life. He deserves the credit. Yeah, never seen him say a kind word about anyone. Guess you made an impression. You've been a huge help. Here, it's from my personal stock. Figure you deserve this. It, it gave me quest bloody complete. It's a good job to come back and check to get the to get the 2,000 copper. Maybe now we'll actually make this delivery. Um, actually, any chance I could buy some goods off you? Of course. Consider yourself a favoured customer. Oh, well, marvellous. 
Okay, exceptional, exceptional. Have they got anything particularly unique or excellent? Uh, oh, rope and a grappling hook, pry bars, camping supplies, another pry bar, always welcome. Straight into the stash for all of that. But most of the rest of it is very uh, forgettable. All right, sweet. Thank you for me. I have a lot okay. to think about. Yes, you absolutely do, but I'm glad you are. Well, fair enough. Those spirits did actually have a thing. Here's this little Will of the Wisp dude again. What can we. Hello. Oh, no, he, he is okay. a Will of the Wisp. I hadn't actually gotten close to him enough to him to find out, but it was. Oh, speaking of which, we've got a couple of uh, stronghold doodads. Oh, damn, I didn't get a chance to read the uh, the uh, side quest dialogue of who I got assigned to, find out what happened, but never mind. Right, I think we should rest everybody up big time. Okay. That's everyone in a much better state. Um, let's just check the inventory. Uh, oh, why does all that crap get dumped, dumped in there? Why isn't it put into the stash? Back in there you go. Uh, he's pretty tooled already. Oh my goodness, Alos actually freed up some space. Get the magic missiles on. And Lengrath's Grimoire, we've learnt everything from it, so we can stick that in the stash. And what we've got, Scroll of Hailstorm. That requires 8 lore, 8 lore. Scroll of Binding Web. That would be a nice one for a bit of crowd control, we can just try and use that one up. In the meanwhile, goodness, yeah, we, you need some better stuff in there. Scroll of Prayer Against Treachery. I know that one stacks. That one will stack. A quick um, Scroll of Valor. Actually, you know what? We'll use up that Scroll Against Fear. We'll save that for the next dragon if there is more of them. And Durant. Oh, you still need more space. That's just Craven. I have to work on the potions and the general stacks of stuff off stream. It's getting a bit uh, all over the place. Weakened affliction four times. Oh. Oh no, that's still leveling up. The shield's fully leveled up. That one's fully leveled up. How are we doing with this crossbow? Oh, she's not using it at the moment. She's using her Stormcaller bow. Kill five Kith Druids or 25 enemies. 25 enemies are going to happen a lot faster. That one's fully leveled. I have to admit, Durant doesn't get to kill too many enemies. That's going to take quite a while. What's this one we've got here? Mossy Rock. I have to remember to use that summon. I think it's amazing some of the injuries that can be recovered just by camping in the wild. Right, let's get back to the White March before I uh, just check that everything's taken care of. Phylacteries promised to defeat Lengrath. The architect of the siege on Consul Hort's tower is revealed to be an heir of the Archmage Lengrath, inheritor of his name and title. Her death and that of the two dragons she calls allies puts an end to her machinations and secures my own legacy. Um. Alright, we just got three quests of uh, for characters. Songs of the Wild, just a couple of small outstanding ones. Bounty and uh, one from Eirgland Fath. And then it's just the remainder of White March Part 2. So. We actually have to rest in Long Watch Falls in order to level up Palagina's armour. 
And then we have to go to Kayla on Scar, so we'll jump over to Long Watch Falls. Oh, goodness me. And might I add Gracious? I have to admit, I think that was a pretty good place to uh, round things. It's great to have an awesome sort of big boss battle at the end of the stream, to be sure. Right, we'll rest to... Uh, I just realised there's no point camping and I've got to rest in the cave anyway, but, you know. You live and learn. You live and learn. Oh, there were some intense fights today. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. It's been a hell of a hell of an evening this evening. Oh, I just noticed a bit rate was bouncing there. I hope there wasn't too many like frame drops and any bits of buffering for you. Uh, it's starting to go up and down a little bit. Right, so I'll go through today's credits, then um, give you guys the updates of when I'm on next, and then we'll find someone to drop a little bit of love on. So without further ado, as soon as that actually reloads the page. There we are. There are recent events. What are you talking about? Alright, thank you very much to getting things started, Mr. Darkens10,000 for 75 bits, and then gifting a sub, very deserved, to Mr. Awesome Daniel. Uh, gifting citizenship, I should say. Piney Druid for 75 bits. Ross the Kettle for the follow. Thank you very much. Dextro for the delightful raid of eight. And then Andy for five individually gifted citizenships to Haverson, Silver Magpie, Blossom 7, I'm sorry, Haverson 2000, Silver Magpie 93, Blossom 7, Dextro Anarchy and Sir Square. And then Andy for 75 bits and Atreus 85 for the follow. Thank you all very much indeed. It's been uh, it's been wonderful. Um I will be on next tomorrow. So it is Mellow Out Monday, formerly known as Catharsis Monday. And I will be doing either Darksiders 2, if I get enough of the collectible stuff done in my daytime tomorrow to go back to it and finish it up, because we're at the gates of the final part of the game, as far as I can tell, and get blind playthroughs as always. Uh, or more uh, Borderlands 2, uh, for just running around, running and gunning, good fun. Followed by, and that'll be one of those two will be part one, followed by Magic the Gathering Arena, as part two for the chilled card game a bit after the action violence bit. If you want to see more information on the schedule, look in the channel panel information below underneath uh, schedule. Should you choose to, you can follow me at Craven underscore Twitch on uh, Twitter uh, for see my musings, my random postings, my interactions and when I'm going live if uh, you don't want follower notifications and you're not in the Cravenstown Discord. And yes, Cravenstown Discord, as I have mentioned before earlier in the stream that some of you may have heard, that is the full Discord. This is the show. It also acts as the gatehouse and the front end if you want to be in the full town uh, which is a lovely community um, where we treat people on there just like we would our real life friends under the auspice that we treat our real life friends very well um, it's very non-toxic it's very friendly uh, negativity drama and uh, general edginess is not overly tolerated um, but we also have a small focus on and a large accommodation of mental health, mental health awareness and uh, openness about discussing mental illness. You don't have to discuss this if you want to be part of the community. It doesn't have to be why you join or even a part of why you join. But it is uh, one colour in the spectrum of what the community is about. And the other major niche is that we are built around a concept of a town. The whole community sort of runs as a bit of a town theme running through it, hence followers and citizens and councillors and, and all that kind of stuff. Links to both are in the channel panel information below under about Cravenstown and um, should you choose to join I look forward to seeing you in there let's have a little look who's online shall we as I'm sure there's a bunch of yes because now it's earlier on Sunday I'd normally be only been going for about an hour and a bit at this but I'm enjoying doing it earlier on so I got more people to pick from who's doing things I know I haven't had a chance to drop her a raid before and she's absolutely lovely one of my favorite I'm only met her at Twitch uh, London Winter has become uh, she's a very good streamer and she's doing some Heroes of the Storm so 
Just make sure that that's still current. I'll do one more little refresh of the channel. Everyone is still here, especially if you're citizens. You're being recruited into the Cravenstown Militia. Even if you only have a couple of minutes left, I'd be incredibly grateful if you are able to jump on in. If you have a bit more time and you like what you see, do stick around. If you have a couple of minutes, just join in the raid. Brilliant. I'd be so, so grateful. And if you are a citizen and you hit that legit, we're going to go in and spam legit when we land. So to Miss Eloa Wendy playing Heroes of the Storm. If you're able to jump in, I appreciate it. Let's go. Let's go and give her some love. She's having an absolute blast and she's good fun and she's really, really lovely. Excellent. All right. Thanks, folks. I'll see you hopefully most of you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Have a very good evening.